Welcome to Planetside Battle's overview of vehicles, tactics, and infantry classes. I'm Redolent, and in the next few minutes we will explain just what Planetside 2 and Planetside Battles are all about. Planetside 2 is a multiplayer first-person shooter on an unprecedented massive scale. Thousands of players fight over contiguous territory unhindered by loading screens or instances. A never-ending war between three factions occurring across four continents, each 64 square kilometers large about the size of the island of Manhattan. The game offers a scale of combat that is hard to describe to players coming from typical arena shooters. The movements of the hundreds of vehicles and soldiers you see is not a scripted event. They are individual players pitted against each other. There is no matchmaking, no round timers. If your empire is successful in capturing one base, you must move through open ground to the next one and keep up the assault. Planetside Battles was founded to pit the combined strength of each of the game's servers against each other in head-to-head -head matches on a separate competitive server. To date, we have held over 25 such events and watched as the tactics and organization of the players has grown and changed. To help explain some topics specific to Planetside 2, we have compiled brief videos from some of the game's most prolific YouTube video creators. The following will give you an overview of what to expect. Good day there, once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, and for the next couple of minutes we're going to be taking a look at the ground aspect of combined arms in Planet Side 2. Planet Side 2 is a game of massive scale, and therefore the vehicles on the ground play a crucial role in any offensive or defensive situation. The Flash is a go-to vehicle for fast transport and reconnaissance missions, and is a must-have for infiltrators thanks to the ability for it to cloak. The Harasser is a fast attack vehicle designed for small squad transportation and guerrilla warfare to deal with high value targets. Now speaking of high value targets, we have the Sunderer, the backbone of any situation. Its ability to carry a whole squad and to deploy for a forward spawn to be established streamlines any attack or defense, and its supportive vehicle ammo dispenser or automatic repairing upgrades are as important to any armor column as the extra firepower it possesses. The Lightning is the single-seater light tank, which brings high-end firepower on a surprisingly mobile platform, and its Skyguide AA weapon platform is crucial to deter enemy air presence that may be hanging around. And at last, you have the brunt of the vehicle presence, the MBTs. Each Empire comes with its own version of an MBT, hosting different weaponry and designs. The NC get the brutal vanguard that thrives as a siege vehicle, designed to break through enemy lines. The TR get the double barrel prowler designed with an anchor system for long range harassment and accuracy, with the VS using the highly mobile mag rider to flank their opponents. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a brief overview of combined arms in Planet Side 2. I'm Kamikaze78, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you on Araxis. Hello everyone, Justicia here. In this video, I'll quickly introduce the Infiltrator class. The Infiltrator is unique in that, depending on its loadout, it can be played both as Long Range Sniper and in close quarters, excelling at, as its name implies, infiltrating enemy bases. At long range, the infiltrators are the only class to have access to high velocity sniper rifles, capable of taking out enemies in a single headshot over large distances, while in close quarters it has access to powerful SMGs with extreme rates of fire. The most basic ability of the infiltrator is the ability to cloak for a short period of time. Cloaking turns the infiltrator from fully visible to shimmering translucent. The stiller the infiltrator stays, the harder it is to spot. A special kind of cloak is the stalker cloak, that allows the infiltrator to stay cloaked indefinitely when standing still. Infiltrators always have to be extremely wary of enemies using a dark light, which makes cloaked infiltrators glow brightly in their faction colors. While cloaking comes in handy to sneak around unseen, a very useful ability once inside an enemy base is hacking. This allows an infiltrator to flip the ownership of terminals and turrets to turn the enemy's base assets against them. But in infantry battles as well, the infiltrator can prove invaluable because of the information it can provide on enemy movement with its special tools, the recon darts and motion spotters. These tools show enemies within a short radius on the minimap of allies, giving a tactical advantage to their team. 
Offensive tools available to infiltrators are anti-infantry mines that can be used to cover choke points or back doors, and EMP grenades. These special grenades take out the enemy's shields and disorient them, which is very useful in an offensive push to clear a building. Hey there folks, Rel here, and welcome to Planetside 2. In this video, we're going to be giving you a super quick breakdown of the Light Assault Infantry class so that you'll be able to understand their role and identify them in a fight. If you see somebody cruising through the air with the assistance of jump jets, that would be your Light Assault. They're the most mobile infantry class in the game, able to circumvent barriers like walls and buildings, avoid many of the standard infantry choke points, and fight from unexpected angles. Their primary weapons include the SMG and shotgun, which most other classes have access to, and they share access to carbines with the engineer class. Carbines in this game are meant to be close to mid-range weapons, usually sporting a better than average hip fire and rate of fire, but they're penalized when it comes to damage falloff over distance. Light assaults can support their teammates not only by flanking the enemy from those unexpected angles, but also through their tactical grenades in C4. Light Assault is the only class that has access to both smoke grenades and flash grenades, and smoke is useful for providing cover to your allies as they move from one place to the next, as well as forcing enemies out of an entrenched position. Flash grenades will blind nearby enemies upon detonation, which makes them useful for breaching rooms and heavily guarded areas. Lastly, the Light Assault is one of the best classes to make use of C4, which is your remote detonated explosive. C4 is capable of dealing high damage to enemy vehicles and infantry, and thanks to the Light Assault's jump jets, it can be dropped from above onto enemies usually without them even seeing you coming. I hope you enjoyed this brief little introduction to the Light Assault infantry class and their role in Planetside 2. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off. The combined arms game in Planetside 2 is very diverse. In this video I'm taking a look at the air game. A selection of different aircraft fulfill roles from fighter to bomber to troop transport, and from targeting other aircraft in a bid for air superiority to harassing ground targets in order to support friendly advances and defenses. The most basic type of aircraft is the Quick and Nimble Empire Pacific Fighter, or ESF. Each empire has their own version. The VS have the size, the NC the Reaver, and the TR the Mosquito. Each is different, but they all excel at the multi-purpose role of both dogfighting and ground support. The Valkyrie is a maneuverable small troop transporter. It can hold up to six players for quick insertions or extractions. The Liberator is the main gunship of Planetside 2 to be feared both on the ground and in the air, with powerful belly guns wreaking havoc all around. Finally, the Galaxy is the main battle transporter, holding up to 12 players who can man guns on all sides. Always be wary of enemy galaxies hovering over a base. Welcome friends, today I am doing a bite sized overview of the Max Crash for the Server Smash team. So firstly, the Max unit is considered a force multiplier, it has more health, more weaponry and special abilities that regular infantry do not have. A Max Crash utilises these advantages by pulling as many Maxes as possible, sometimes to overcome larger enemy forces or to tip the scale if populations are even. The idea is to concentrate an overwhelming force on a single point to completely overpower the enemies occupying it. 
A good max crush often has a few engineers to heal the maxes and keep them alive as long as possible. A good max crush also has at least one medic to revive any maxes that die, and also any engineers who may be caught in the crossfire. The revive time is much longer on maxes than infantry, so reviving them is always a risk. Usually a max crush is used to overwhelm a point contained within a building or part of a facility. The defensive max crushes usually take form inside spawn rooms, as they are the closest to the points and safe from outside fire due to shielding. The biolab is the most notorious for having max crushes, because there are multiple teleportation rooms with shields where maxes can gather safely. Max crushes are most vulnerable to vehicles, and this is why they take place inside on most occasions. They are also vulnerable to light assault C4 and to some degree rocket fire from heavy assaults. But usually a max crash will be able to overwhelm non-max infantry. Meaning that max crashes are usually countered by enemy max crashes. The max crash isn't shy from public backlash, due partly to the max being the most tanky, most firepower laden, and with charge, the fastest unit. And as mentioned, a general force multiplier. Anyway, I hope this has made the concept of a max crash a little clearer. Thanks to Hyun who helped me capture this footage. Hello everyone, Justicia here. This is a very short look at the importance of holding capture points in Planetside 2. To capture a base, you need to outlast and outlive your enemy. You do this by setting up a perimeter of maxes and heavies supported by engineers and medics. Here you can see a couple of examples of how this looks from both the attacking and defending side. The creed usually is, the more maxes the better. Uh, Alright, three, two, one. Don't worry no, about it. Today. A different tactic is to just get more bodies on the point to make sure it can be secured. This is often a last ditch effort when a base must absolutely be taken. Oh, they just dropped, actually. No, no, so friendly drop, friendly drop. Hey, that's this. So we're on the point, we've got one minute, but the more people the better. They can do a max crash and get it in one horrible sweep. No, they're coming, they're coming, they're crashing. It's worth it. <laughs> Revives are absolutely essential to hold a point. In high pressure situations, this often results in so-called zombies a mass of freshly revived players whose sole purpose is to maintain their hold on the capture point. Keep the revive up, keep the revive up. No! And sometimes desperate measures pay off. Yes! Hello everyone, my name is Far, I'm from Any Elite, and today I'd like to show you a small video about leadership in large scale battles. So, excellent. Okay, I'll then look for more uh, Sundays. Yeah, I want to go to Genesis now. As a platoon leader, I'm looking at the map and I'm trying to decide where do I want to go next. In the south is Moonlight Foundry, I've got one squad of my platoon there from Red October. In the north, uh, we have our three squads from Viv, Mercenaries and Inny Elite, all helping to save Ixtad Water Purification. Where do we go next? Do we go for the Amp Station? Do we try to go for Power Regulation, off slightly to the west? Or do we go for, as we just realized, uh, Genesis Terraforming Plant? Genesis, I see, is roughly 2 to 1 in our favor, but I know the enemy will spawn in and attempt to make a save, but the timer critically is down to about 70%, so there's only 30% left of the base to go, and with about 3-4 minutes left, I realize this is probably the better base to go to apply pressure, because if we can get the large outpost, it'll make a huge difference in the flow of the battle. We've got Sunder Genesis, let's go there. And until they come back to war purification, we want to go to Genesis. That's... No, out. stay at Genesis. That's t it's a two minute marker. Um, they're, they're being kept at Moonlight Foundry, that's fine. So, Mercs, you stay at Ixtab Power Regulation, that's great. Everyone else, we're staying at um, Genesis Terraforming Plant. We'll hold on to this. In fact, we might even want to reinforce it, because this is more valuable than uh, Ixtab Power. As a platoon leader, I'm looking at the map and deciding what can I do best. 
there are three key bases currently under contention. Genesis terraforming plant in the center, which we're trying to get our hands on. Aixta power regulation in the north, which is more of a diversionary attack to try and leech forces away from uh, terraforming. And in the south, we've got Mulek Foundry. But rather than making that free base and just allowing the enemy to take that, I've got one squad of my platoon there holding up as much and as many people of the enemy team as possible. And right now, it's three to one against my one squad at Mullet Foundry. But that's good for us because we are forcing limited players away from Genesis Terraforming. Meaning that in Genesis Terraforming with two minutes to go, it's all working in our favor because even if the numbers are 50-50, it would be more than 50-50 if those numbers from Mullet Foundry were there. Just see what happens. They're rushing now, they're rushing now. Rushing. Okay, Alpha, we only need one person at Charlie. Let's move up. Let's move up, any. Right. Leave one person on the C point. Big crash A point. Holy. Move up, guys. Move up. 30 seconds. Move up. Right, one person stays at C. Any moves up. No spawn. We defend Charlie, but we turn the Bravo point. We can't get the A point, but we defend the Bravo point. Dropping into the fight as a squad leader, not platoon leader, I see that there are too many of my guys on Charlie Point and we need to get to Bravo Point. As we run to Bravo Point, I see that the hostiles far too many red indicators on the minimap and max indicators on the alpha capture point. We simply can't take that, it's just not going to happen. But if we can hold the B point, we can still force the base through, which is why I tell everybody I can get my hands on, get to B, let's defend this building. Just hold the B point, guys. Oh, I see the C. All right, all right. The enemy's at C. Get the C back. Arrow's here as well. They'll help. We need to hold on to B. The main focus for everyone here is B. Arrow is going to get C for us. Copy that, one is moving inside the bow lab. Okay. We need to get B back guys, let's push it. Come on, B, 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 go, go, go. Can you move this? Yes! yes. Happy boys! Right this is Landro on all call. One hour, thirty minutes until end of match. One hour, thirty minutes and oh, the first this bus wave will be... Oh. home jail. Right. Okay, guys, good job on the B. Redeploy. Guys, redeploy, save war, uh, uh, war purification. Let's go. Redeploy, redeploy, redeploy. Success! You've taken the base. Well done. But it's not over yet. There's still an alert going on. There's still a battle going on. Maybe it's a server smash that's still going on. Look on the map. As a platoon leader, what's under threat? We see that the enemy forces, because they have the amp station, are now attacking Ixta power regulation in the north. We've now got ourselves Genesis terraforming plant. Time to redeploy, get out, make the save, stabilize the front line before you make your fresh attack. Congratulations on going to the base, but it's not over. Until next time, guys, so, see you in your axis.
Thank you for watching the Planetside Battles overview of vehicles, tactics, and infantry classes. We hope you got a feel for the scale of combat that takes place in this game, and hope you will stick around for our live coverage of the Guinness World Record attempt, which begins at 21 UTC immediately following this program. Welcome to Planetside Battle's overview of vehicles, tactics, and infantry classes. I'm Redolent, and in the next few minutes we will explain just what Planetside 2 and Planetside Battles are all about. Planetside 2 is a multiplayer first-person shooter on an unprecedented massive scale. Thousands of players fight over contiguous territory unhindered by loading screens or instances. A never-ending war between three factions occurring across four continents, each 64 square kilometers large about the size of the island of Manhattan. The game offers a scale of combat that is hard to describe to players coming from typical arena shooters. The movements of the hundreds of vehicles and soldiers you see is not a scripted event. They are individual players pitted against each other. There is no matchmaking, no round timers. If your empire is successful in capturing one base, you must move through open ground to the next one and keep up the assault. Planetside Battles was founded to pit the combined strength of each of the game's servers against each other in head-to-head -head matches on a separate competitive server. To date, we have held over 25 such events and watched as the tactics and organization of the players has grown and changed. To help explain some topics specific to Planetside 2, we have compiled brief videos from some of the game's most prolific YouTube video creators. The following will give you an overview of what to expect. Good day there, once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, and for the next couple of minutes we're going to be taking a look at the ground aspect of combined arms in Planet Side 2. Planet Side 2 is a game of massive scale, and therefore the vehicles on the ground play a crucial role in any offensive or defensive situation. The Flash is a go-to vehicle for fast transport and reconnaissance missions, and is a must-have for infiltrators thanks to the ability for it to cloak. The Harasser is a fast attack vehicle designed for small squad transportation and guerrilla warfare to deal with high value targets. Now speaking of high value targets, we have the Sunderer, the backbone of any situation. Its ability to carry a whole squad and to deploy for a forward spawn to be established streamlines any attack or defense, and its supportive vehicle ammo dispenser or automatic repairing upgrades are as important to any armor column as the extra firepower it possesses. The Lightning is the single-seater light tank, which brings high-end firepower on a surprisingly mobile platform, and its Skyguide AA weapon platform is crucial to deter enemy air presence that may be hanging around. And at last, you have the brunt of the vehicle presence, the MBTs. Each Empire comes with its own version of an MBT, hosting different weaponry and designs. The NC get the brutal vanguard that thrives as a siege vehicle, designed to break through enemy lines. The TR get the double barrel prowler designed with an anchor system for long range harassment and accuracy, with the VS using the highly mobile mag rider to flank their opponents. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a brief overview of combined arms in Planet Side 2. I'm Kamikaze78, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you on Araxis. Hello everyone, Justicia here. In this video, I'll quickly introduce the Infiltrator class. The Infiltrator is unique in that, depending on its loadout, it can be played both as long-range sniper and in close quarters, excelling at, as its name implies, infiltrating enemy bases. At long range, the infiltrators are the only class to have access to high-velocity sniper rifles, capable of taking out enemies in a single headshot over large distances, while in close quarters it has access to powerful SMGs with extreme rates of fire. The most basic ability of the infiltrator is the ability to cloak for a short period of time. Cloaking turns the infiltrator from fully visible to shimmering translucent. The stiller the infiltrator stays, the harder it is to spot. A special kind of cloak is the stalker cloak, 
that allows the infiltrator to stay clogged indefinitely when standing still. Infiltrators always have to be extremely wary of enemies using a dark light, which makes cloaked infiltrators glow brightly in their faction colors. While cloaking comes in handy to sneak around unseen, a very useful ability once inside an enemy base is hacking. This allows an infiltrator to flip the ownership of terminals and turrets to turn the enemy's base assets against them. But in infantry battles as well, the infiltrator can prove invaluable because of the information it can provide on enemy movement with its special tools, the recon darts and motion spotters. These tools show enemies within a short radius on the minimap of allies, giving a tactical advantage to their team. Offensive tools available to infiltrators are anti-infantry mines that can be used to cover choke points or back doors, and EMP grenades. These special grenades take out the enemy's shields and disorient them, which is very useful in an offensive push to clear a building. Hey there folks, Rel here, and welcome to Planetside 2. In this video, we're going to be giving you a super quick breakdown of the Light Assault Infantry class so that you'll be able to understand their role and identify them in a fight. If you see somebody cruising through the air with the assistance of jump jets, that would be your Light Assault. They're the most mobile infantry class in the game, able to circumvent barriers like walls and buildings, avoid many of the standard infantry choke points, and fight from unexpected angles. Their primary weapons include the SMG and shotgun, which most other classes have access to, and they share access to carbines with the engineer class. Carbines in this game are meant to be close to mid-range weapons, usually sporting a better than average hip fire and rate of fire, but they're penalized when it comes to damage falloff over distance. Light assaults can support their teammates not only by flanking the enemy from those unexpected angles, but also through their tactical grenades in C4. Light Assault is the only class that has access to both smoke grenades and flash grenades, and smoke is useful for providing cover to your allies as they move from one place to the next, as well as forcing enemies out of an entrenched position. Flash grenades will blind nearby enemies upon detonation, which makes them useful for breaching rooms and heavily guarded areas. Lastly, the Light Assault is one of the best classes to make use of C4, which is your remote detonated explosive. C4 is capable of dealing high damage to enemy vehicles and infantry, and thanks to the Light Assault's jump jets, it can be dropped from above onto enemies usually without them even seeing you coming. I hope you enjoyed this brief little introduction to the Light Assault Infantry class and their role in Planetside 2. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off. The combined arms game in Planetside 2 is very diverse. In this video I'm taking a look at the air game. A selection of different aircraft fulfill roles from fighter to bomber to troop transport, and from targeting other aircraft in a bid for air superiority to harassing ground targets in order to support friendly advances and defenses. The most basic Admin type one. of aircraft <laughs> is the uh, quick yeah, and nimble well. Empire Legless, it should fighter, be three. or ESF. Each Empire has their own version. The VS have the size, the NC the Reaver, and the TR the Mosquito. Each is different, but they all excel at the multi-purpose role of both dogfighting and ground support. The Valkyrie is a maneuverable small troop transporter. It can hold up to six players for quick insertions or extractions. The Liberator is the main gunship of Planetside 2 to be feared both on the ground and in the air, with powerful belly guns wreaking havoc all around. Finally, the Galaxy is the main battle transporter, holding up to 12 players who can man guns on all sides. Always be wary of enemy galaxies hovering over a base.
Welcome friends! Today I am doing a bite-sized overview of the Max Crash for the Server Smash team. So firstly, the Max unit is considered a force multiplier. It has more health, more weaponry, and special abilities that regular infantry do not have. A Max Crash utilizes these advantages by pulling as many Maxes as possible, sometimes to overcome larger enemy forces, or to tip the scale if populations are even. The idea is to concentrate an overwhelming force on a single point to completely overpower the enemies occupying it. A good Max Crash often has a few engineers to heal the Maxes and keep them alive as long as possible. A good Max Crash also has at least one medic to revive any Maxes that die, and also any engineers who may be caught in the crossfire. The revive time is much longer on Maxes than infantry, so reviving them is always a risk. Usually a Max Crash is used to overwhelm a point contained within a building or part of a facility. The defensive Max Crashes usually take form inside spawn rooms, as they are the closest to the points and safe from outside fire due to shielding. The Biolab is the most notorious for having Max Crashes because there are multiple teleportation rooms with shields where Maxes can gather safely. Max Crashes are most vulnerable to vehicles and this is why they take place inside on most occasions. They are also vulnerable to light assault C4 and to some degree rocket fire from heavy assaults. But usually a Max Crash will be able to overwhelm non-Max infantry. Meaning that Max Crashes are usually countered by enemy Max Crashes. The Max Crash isn't shy from public backlash, due partly to the Max being the most tanky, most firepower laden, and with charge, the fastest unit, and as mentioned, a general force multiplier. Anyway, I hope this has made the concept of a Max Crash a little clearer. Thanks to Hyun who helped me capture this footage. Hello everyone, Justician here. This is a very short look at the importance of holding capture points in Planetside 2. To capture a base, you need to outlast and outlive your enemy. You do this by setting up a perimeter of maxes and heavies supported by engineers and medics. Here you can see a couple of examples of how this looks from both the attacking and defending side. The creed usually is, the more maxes the better. Alright, 3, 2, 1... Don't worry no, about it. A different tactic is to That's just get more bodies on the point to make sure it can be secured. This is often a last ditch effort when a base must absolutely be taken. Oh, they just dropped that. No, no, friendly no, no, drop, friendly... They're downstairs. So we're on the point, we've got one minute, but the more people the better. They can do a max crash and get it in one horrible sweep. No, they're coming, they're coming, they're crashing. It's worth it. <laughs> Revives are absolutely essential to hold a point. In high pressure situations, this often results in so-called zombies, a mass of freshly revived players whose sole purpose is to maintain their hold on the capture point. Keep the revives up, keep the revives up. And sometimes desperate measures pay off. Yes! This is the most people I've ever seen. That was uh yes. that was that was Hello everyone, my name is Far, I'm from Any Elite, and today I'd like to show you a small video about leadership in large scale battles. So we just excellent. Okay, I'll then look for more uh, sundays. Force of the Hague oh, now, sure, massive yeah. overpower pests, take construction site beta. No, leave it to uh... We are capping Genesis, Terra. Yeah, I wanna go to Genesis now. As a platoon leader, I'm looking at the map and I'm trying to decide where do I wanna go next. In the south is Moonlight Foundry, I've got one squad of my platoon there from mid-October. In the north, uh, we have our three squads from Viv, Mercenaries and Inuit Elite, all helping to save Ixtai water purification. Where do we go next? Do we go for the amp station? Do we try to go for power regulation, off slightly to the west? Or do we go for, as we just realized, uh, Genesis terraforming plant? Genesis, I see, is roughly two to one in our favor, but I know the enemy will spawn in and attempt to make a save, but the timer critically is down to about 70%, so there's only 30% left of the base to go, and with about three, four minutes left, I realize this is probably the better base to go to apply pressure, because if we can get the large outpost, it'll make a huge difference in the flow of the battle. We've got Sunder Genesis, let's go there. And until they come back to war purification, we want to go to Genesis. That's... No, stay at Genesis. That's t it's a two minute marker. Um, 
they're they're being kept at more like fan jets, fine. So Mercs, you stay at Ixta power regulation. That's great. Everyone else, we're staying at um, Genesis terraforming plant. We'll hold on to this. In fact, we might even want to reinforce it because this is more valuable than uh, Ixta power. As a platoon leader, I'm looking at the map and deciding what can I do best. There are three key bases currently under contention. Genesis terraforming plant in the center, which we're trying to get our hands on. Extra power regulation in the north, which is more of a diversionary attack to try and leech forces away from uh, terraforming. And in the south, we've got Mulek Foundry. But rather than making that free base and just allowing the enemy to take that, I've got one squad of my platoon there holding up as much and as many people of the enemy team as possible. And right now, it's three to one against my one squad at Mullet Foundry, but that's good for us because we are forcing limited players away from Genesis Terraforming. Meaning that in Genesis Terraforming with two minutes to go, it's all working in our favor because even if the numbers are 50-50, it would be more than 50-50 if those numbers from Mullet Foundry were there. Just see what happens. They're rushing now, they're rushing now. Rushing. Okay, Alpha, we only need one person at Charlie. Let's move up. Let's move up, any. Right. Leave one person on the C point. Big crash A point. Holy. Move up, guys. Move up. 30 seconds. Move up. Right. One person stays at C. Any moves up. No spawn. We defend Charlie. But we defend the Bravo point. We can't get the A point, but we defend the Bravo point. Dropping into the fight as a squad leader, not platoon leader, I see that there are too many of my guys on Charlie Point and we need to get to Bravo Point. As we run to Bravo Point, I see that the hostiles far too many red indicators on the minimap and max indicators on the alpha capture point. We simply can't take that, it's just not going to happen. But if we can hold the B point, we can still force the base through, which is why I tell everybody I can get my hands on, get to B, let's defend this building. Just hold the B point, guys. Oh, I see the C. All right, all right. The enemy's at C. Get the C back. Yeah, Arrows yeah. here as well. They'll help. Yeah, yeah, think, yeah. We need to hold on to B. The main focus for everyone here is B. Arrow is going to get C for us. Copy that, one is moving inside the bow lab. Okay. We need to get B back guys, let's push it. Come on, B, 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 go, go, go. Can you move this? Yes! Happy boys! This is Landro on all call. One hour, thirty minutes until end of match. One hour, thirty minutes, and oh, the first this bus yeah, wave will be commenced momentarily. Oh. <laughs> I want to switch him away. Okay, guys, good job on the B. Redeploy. Guys, redeploy, save war, uh, extra war purification. Let's go. Redeploy, redeploy, redeploy. Success! You've taken the base. Well done. But it's not over yet. There's still an alert going on. There's still a battle going on. Maybe it's a server smash that's still going on. Look on the map. As a platoon leader, what's under threat? We see that the enemy forces, because they have the amp station, are now attacking Ixta power regulation in the north. We've now got ourselves Genesis terraforming plant. Time to redeploy, get out, make the save, stabilize the front line before you make your fresh attack. Congratulations on the base, but it's not over. Until next time, guys. So, see you in your axis.
thank you for watching the Planetside Battles overview of vehicles, tactics, and infantry classes. We hope you got a feel for the scale of combat that takes place in this game, and hope you will stick around for our live coverage of the Guinness World Record attempt, which begins at 21 UTC immediately following this program. Welcome to Planetside Battle's overview of vehicles, tactics, and infantry classes. I'm Redolent, and in the next few minutes we will explain just what Planetside 2 and Planetside Battles are all about. Planetside 2 is a multiplayer first-person shooter on an unprecedented massive scale. Thousands of players fight over contiguous territory unhindered by loading screens or instances. A never-ending war between three factions occurring across four continents, each 64 square kilometers large about the size of the island of Manhattan. The game offers a scale of combat that is hard to describe to players coming from typical arena shooters. The movements of the hundreds of vehicles and soldiers you see is not a scripted event. They are individual players pitted against each other. There is no matchmaking, no round timers. If your empire is successful in capturing one base, you must move through open ground to the next one and keep up the assault. Planetside Battles was founded to pit the combined strength of each of the game's servers against each other in head-to-head -head matches on a separate competitive server. To date, we have held over 25 such events and watched as the tactics and organization of the players has grown and changed. To help explain some topics specific to Planetside 2, we have compiled brief videos from some of the game's most prolific YouTube video creators. The following will give you an overview of what to expect. Good day there, once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, and for the next couple of minutes we're going to be taking a look at the ground aspect of combined arms in Planet Side 2. Planet Side 2 is a game of massive scale, and therefore the vehicles on the ground play a crucial role in any offensive or defensive situation. The Flash is a go-to vehicle for fast transport and reconnaissance missions, and is a must-have for infiltrators thanks to the ability for it to cloak. The Harasser is a fast attack vehicle designed for small squad transportation and guerrilla warfare to deal with high value targets. Now speaking of high value targets, we have the Sunderer, the backbone of any situation. Its ability to carry a whole squad and to deploy for a forward spawn to be established streamlines any attack or defense, and its supportive vehicle ammo dispenser or automatic repairing upgrades are as important to any armor column as the extra firepower it possesses. The Lightning is the single-seater light tank, which brings high-end firepower on a surprisingly mobile platform, and its Skyguide AA weapon platform is crucial to deter enemy air presence that may be hanging around. And at last, you have the brunt of the vehicle presence, the MBTs. Each Empire comes with its own version of an MBT, hosting different weaponry and designs. The NC get the brutal vanguard that thrives as a siege vehicle, designed to break through enemy lines. The TR get the double barrel prowler designed with an anchor system for long range harassment and accuracy, with the VS using the highly mobile mag rider to flank their opponents. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a brief overview of combined arms in Planet Side 2. I'm Kamikaze78, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you on Araxis. Hello everyone, Justicia here. In this video I'll quickly introduce the Infiltrator class. The Infiltrator is unique in that depending on its loadout it can be played both as long range sniper and in close quarters, excelling at, as its name implies, infiltrating enemy bases. At long range, the Infiltrators are the only class to have access to high velocity sniper rifles capable of taking out enemies in a single headshot over large distances. While in close quarters it has access to powerful SMGs with extreme rates of fire. The most basic ability of the Infiltrator is the ability to cloak for a short period of time. Cloaking turns the Infiltrator from fully visible to shimmering translucent. The stiller the Infiltrator stays, the harder it is to spot. A special kind of cloak is the Stalker Cloak, 
that allows the infiltrator to stay clogged indefinitely when standing still. Infiltrators always have to be extremely wary of enemies using a dark light, which makes cloaked infiltrators glow brightly in their faction colors. While cloaking comes in handy to sneak around unseen, a very useful ability once inside an enemy base is hacking. This allows an infiltrator to flip the ownership of terminals and turrets to turn the enemy's base assets against them. But in infantry battles as well, the infiltrator can prove invaluable because of the information it can provide on enemy movement with its special tools, the recon darts and motion spotters. These tools show enemies within a short radius on the minimap of allies, giving a tactical advantage to their team. Offensive tools available to infiltrators are anti-infantry mines that can be used to cover choke points or back doors, and EMP grenades. These special grenades take out the enemy's shields and disorient them, which is very useful in an offensive push to clear a building. Hey there folks, Rel here, and welcome to Planetside 2. In this video, we're going to be giving you a super quick breakdown of the Light Assault Infantry class so that you'll be able to understand their role and identify them in a fight. If you see somebody cruising through the air with the assistance of jump jets, that would be your Light Assault. They're the most mobile infantry class in the game, able to circumvent barriers like walls and buildings, avoid many of the standard infantry choke points, and fight from unexpected angles. Their primary weapons include the SMG and shotgun, which most other classes have access to, and they share access to carbines with the engineer class. Carbines in this game are meant to be close to mid-range weapons, usually sporting a better than average hip fire and rate of fire, but they're penalized when it comes to damage falloff over distance. Light assaults can support their teammates not only by flanking the enemy from those unexpected angles, but also through their tactical grenades in C4. Light Assault is the only class that has access to both smoke grenades and flash grenades, and smoke is useful for providing cover to your allies as they move from one place to the next, as well as forcing enemies out of an entrenched position. Flash grenades will blind nearby enemies upon detonation, which makes them useful for breaching rooms and heavily guarded areas. Lastly, the Light Assault is one of the best classes to make use of C4, which is your remote detonated explosive. C4 is capable of dealing high damage to enemy vehicles and infantry, and thanks to the Light Assault's jump jets, it can be dropped from above onto enemies usually without them even seeing you coming. I hope you enjoyed this brief little introduction to the Light Assault infantry class and their role in Planetside 2. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off. The combined arms game in Planetside 2 is very diverse. In this video I'm taking a look at the air game. A selection of different aircraft fulfill roles from fighter to bomber to troop transport, and from targeting other aircraft in a bid for air superiority to harassing ground targets in order to support friendly advances and defenses. The most basic type of aircraft is the Quick and Nimble Empire Pacific Fighter, or ESF. Each empire has their own version. The VS have the size, the NC the Reaver, and the TR the Mosquito. Each is different, but they all excel at the multi-purpose role of both dogfighting and ground support. The Valkyrie is a maneuverable small troop transporter. It can hold up to six players for quick insertions or extractions. The Liberator is the main gunship of Planetside 2 to be feared both on the ground and in the air, with powerful belly guns wreaking havoc all around. Finally, the Galaxy is the main battle transporter, holding up to 12 players who can man guns on all sides. Always be wary of enemy galaxies hovering over a base.
Welcome friends! Today I am doing a bite-sized overview of the Max Crash for the Server Smash team. So firstly, the Max unit is considered a force multiplayer. It has more health, more weaponry, and special abilities that regular infantry do not have. A Max Crash utilizes these advantages by pulling as many Maxes as possible, sometimes to overcome larger enemy forces, or to tip the scale if populations are even. The idea is to concentrate an overwhelming force on a single point to completely overpower the enemies occupying it. A good Max Crash often has a few engineers to heal the Maxes and keep them alive as long as possible. A good Max Crash also has at least one medic to revive any Maxes that die, and also any engineers who may be caught in the crossfire. The revive time is much longer on Maxes than infantry, so reviving them is always a risk. Usually a Max Crash is used to overwhelm a point contained within a building or part of a facility. The defensive Max Crashes usually take form inside spawn rooms, as they are the closest to the points and safe from outside fire due to shielding. The Biolab is the most notorious for having Max Crashes because there are multiple teleportation rooms with shields where Maxes can gather safely. Max Crashes are most vulnerable to vehicles and this is why they take place inside on most occasions. They are also vulnerable to light assault C4 and to some degree rocket fire from heavy assaults. But usually a Max Crash will be able to overwhelm non-Max infantry. Meaning that Max Crashes are usually countered by enemy Max Crashes. The Max Crash isn't shy from public backlash, due partly to the Max being the most tanky, most firepower laden, and with charge, the fastest unit, and as mentioned, a general force multiplier. Anyway, I hope this has made the concept of a Max Crash a little clearer. Thanks to Hyun who helped me capture this footage, Hello everyone, Justician here. This is a very short look at the importance of holding capture points in Planetside 2. To capture a base, you need to outlast and outlive your enemy. You do this by setting up a perimeter of maxes and heavies supported by engineers and medics. Here you can see a couple of examples of how this looks from both the attacking and defending side. The creed usually is, the more maxes, the better. Uh, Alright, three, two, one. Don't worry no, about it. A different tactic is to That's just get more bodies on the point to make sure it can be secured. This is often a last ditch effort when a base must absolutely be taken. Oh, they just dropped that. No, no, friendly oh, drop, friendly. Head downstairs. So on the point we've got one minute, but the more people the better. They could do a max crash and get it in one horrible sweep. No, oh, they're coming, they're coming, they're crashing. It's worth it. <laughs> Revives are absolutely essential to hold a point. In high pressure situations, this often results in so-called zombies, a mass of freshly revived players whose sole purpose is to maintain their hold on the capture point. Keeps the revives up, keeps the revives up. And sometimes desperate measures pay off. Yes! We require the yes. command. We just got it. This is the most like people I've ever seen. Very nice. 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 That was uh yes. Hello everyone, and welcome to another production from Planetside Battles. My name is Far, I'll be your main caster today, and with me is... I am Redolent, I am going to be your color caster for what is by far the biggest event that we've done as an organization, and I dare say it's the biggest event that this game has ever done, Farah. Uh, that is true. Today is our world record match. We're all super hyped and stoked for it. And uh, we have a one-hour special pre-game show that we're starting now. So the match start is in 60 minutes. Uh, that's when we're actually going to start. And we've got a ton of stuff that we want to talk to you about today. And I think you'll all be kind of impressed with what we've got. I think so. Um, so hopefully we have a bunch of people here who are watching. And maybe you're watching Planetside 2 for the first time. And you've never seen exactly what this game is like uh, and, and what goes on. Planetside 2 is a massive open world first person shooter uh, it, there really is no other game like it it is a contiguous 64 kilometer uh, continent that the people fight over you can pull vehicles 
You can pull infantry. There are no match timers. There are no uh, uh, boundaries uh, for the individual maps themselves. There's no matchmaking. It is all one con constant war, and that is what you're going to be experiencing in about an hour when we have an entirely full continent of all three empires going at each other. Yes, and um, I think about the, uh, the the selection here. How often does this happen? This happens every day, doesn't it? We got what five uh, servers, and they're constantly warring. This is something that happens every day. We've had a lot of our players ask, "Well, why doesn't Plant Side Two already own this record?" Well, the fact is, it's a standing record. You can't just say, "Hey, well, we do this every day." You actually have to have somebody show up. And we, you know, today at the SOE offices, there is a Guinness representative who's going to be marking down every player that we have to uh, to get the record. But what we're doing today is something that happens on multiple continents, uh, sometimes multiple times a day on the servers. Uh, we call it in Plant Side 2 pop locking, meaning that there's a queue to get onto the continent. Uh, and this is something, the large scale battles is something that this game is built around. This is the entire purpose of Plant Side 2. There's plenty of other shooters out there, there's plenty of other tactical shooters and things like that. You play Planet Side 2 because you want the massive battles. You want to look across a field and see 500 people charging at you. You want to see 30 tanks flanking around on the other side of a mountain. There's also the, the, the immersion and the consistent playing and the sort of character progression and the fact that you know who your bad guys are. In Planet Side, I know who the bad guys are. When I say bad guys, I mean my you know rival uh, enemy factions. Who they are, and, and and I know that's a good guy or that's a decent guy or he's pretty decent or you know I killed that guy and I just sent him a tell saying ha ha. That's kind of cool because you don't get that in other type of games. Something that that really is a is a product of why we've been able to do this match is the community in Plant Side Two is unlike any other first person shooter community I've ever been a part of and really rivals some of the best MMO communities. Uh, you know, there is a great deal of cross-faction uh, talk and rivalry, scrims set up, uh, outside play set up. There's a great deal of talk back and forth between servers, between different continents, uh, uh, you know, between uh, Australia and Europe and, and the U.S. servers. And that's really what Plant Side Battles is built around. We're built around organizing these events and these matches so that Everyone in the world who plays Planet Side 2 can play against each other. And we've been doing it now for uh, almost going on a year now. And, uh, you know, we just keep on getting bigger and bigger. And the community steps up more and more every time to support us with these events. Right. And, uh, well, I guess we'll get a little bit started here. I'll explain the map today for you and the setup we have. Today we have three factions uh, coming from, well... We say normally three servers when we do server smashes, but we do have our three factions are all playing today, NCTR and Vanu. And the difference today is that we have players from all five servers around the world, so Europe, America, Australia, and I'm sure there's other areas as well that managed to get themselves accounts. And today we'll be fighting on the most sort of asymmetrical three-way content we have, which is Hassan. And currently the map is set up as you see on stream. Uh, the territory split up is 32-32% each for NC and VS, and 34% for the Terran Republic. This was done by a flip system of who gets what warp gate, and then who gets ownership of Nason's Defiance. Uh, Nason's Defiance starts neutral, so the uh, Terran Republic has to come there and make it fully captured before they can start make pushes in the center. Um, Today's game is a two-hour uh, territory alert, so we're going to have a ga battle that starts in about 55 minutes, and it will run for two hours, and whatever faction has most territory is going to win. So uh, as a brief rundown, we can see the Terran Republic is in the Eastern Warp Gate. Uh, key bases are such as ha uh, Hade Skydock, uh, Nason's Defense is a large outpost, and also Bravata PMC with their large north outpost in the southern section where they're joining the, uh, the VAS. Uh, to the east, uh, oh, that's a good point. We actually mentioned the streamer, sorry. Myself from Redland, and we're going to come to the faction organizers and the faction casting teams in a second, but the northern front with the NC and TR, that's going to be covered today by Poon Armors and Hellfox. And they, are they on PSB3? Uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah, and uh, that's one of our alternate uh, streaming channels if you want to watch that particular battlefront. Myself and Redland will be moving around the map, seeing points of interest, but that will be a fight dedicated to the Terran Republic new conglomerate kind of grudge off in the north. For the western front, we have Shock and Dis. They'll be covering the new conglomerate and heretic 
cool, it's my opinion of course. Uh, Vanu Sovereignty's fight in the south, uh, uh, west. And to the east, between the Terran Republic and the Vanu Sovereignty, we will have Odin and Malorn, where they will be casting uh, that particular battlefront. So if you're interested, you just need to check out the other Planetside Battles main channels, uh, PSP1, PSP2, PSP3. Uh, other than that, if you want to just watch the whole general fight, stay with us, me and um, Milstrom, uh, sorry, and Redlin. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's interesting, this whole, uh, you know, organizing as a faction, we're used to organizing by servers, and that takes a little bit of politicking, you know, uh, 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 when you have uh, the TR and the VS, who maybe, maybe, maybe they don't like each other on one server, and they have to kind of come together for a server smash and, and put together a team. Uh, I, I'm, one of the things I'm going to be interested to ask our faction organizers is how hard was it to organize the entire faction across the world? You know, did the did the European NC not get along so well with the American NC, and there was there was problems there? Did everyone just you know say, hey, we want to? That's a good point. Yeah, because it's it's because we've only ever done. Um, like server smashes, playing for your server. We've never done play for your faction with all your fellow uh, brothers and sisters, I suppose, across the world. So that'd be kind of cool. But um, that being said, we have uh, a special interviewee today. We do. Uh, Maelstrom, have you let him know that uh, he's going to be coming down here? Uh, no, I can go grab him. Yeah, if you can go grab him, that would be great. We, uh, we actually have a great deal of support from SOE to, uh, to do this match. Without SOE's uh, involvement and help here, we would not be... Uh, we would not be where we are today. We would not be doing this match. And uh, so we have a, we've had a great deal of support from SOE. And joining us today is uh, Mr. Matt Higby. Hello, Higby. <laughs> where did he go? Where did he go? There he goes. Hey. Oh, where did he go again? Can he, can he not talk or what? Wow, this is like error number one. <laughs> well, technical difficulties and all that. We didn't actually... What we now? Higby, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. I kept switching me back into some other channel. Oh, okay. All right. How's it going, guys? It's Great. Going cool. It's nice to see you as well. Yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be pretty fun. We're super stoked for this. We've never had anything this large before, and um, we're really interested to see how the server holds up and just how the battle uh, rolls out. Um, well, I mean, I think, like you guys said, we kind of do this pretty often where we see this a uh, number of people, but getting everybody together in this big of a number in organized ways and seeing the entire uh, kind of server community across all the servers come together and uh, represent their faction like you guys were just saying it's going to be awesome can't wait one of the things we wanted to know is how much time i mean you know we've we put in a great deal of volunteer effort organizing this getting all the players together you know lots of people probably 40 50 people on our end have been organizing this for a couple of weeks how much uh, how much admin time from soe has been uh, put into to organizing this record well, I think you guys have definitely put in the lion's share of the work on this from organizing it on the on the website and all the work that you've done um, with Planetside Battles kind of over the last couple years. But, uh, you know, uh, Radar X does a lot of work to try to organize this stuff. And uh, I know that he's been working with the Guinness uh, folks. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think this is by far, uh, in a way, a mostly community-driven and community-organized event that we're just uh, really stoked that you guys have done it and uh, excited to sort of be able to solidify the game's uh, uh, reputation as a massive scale shooter by getting the official seal of approval on it, I guess. Yeah, it's bringing on from that. Before Plants Had Battles, you know, our organization came into being, um, did you ever consider breaking the world record yourself? Was there ever discussion with an SOE or why that was or wasn't the case? Um, I think it was something that we sort of talked about, yeah, that we had uh, a game that was breaking the breaking the record and we could we could do it at some point but uh, uh, I guess there was never any real organized effort to try to do it um, until you guys sort of started it as a as a community effort I remember seeing the threads kind of on on reddit talking about it almost a year ago now huh mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I mean it's been just really cool to see that stuff being driven by the community um, something that I think we're really proud of and and if anything one of the things that i love the most about planet side 2 uh is our community and how involved they are in the game and how passionate they are about the game um and i i love how much you guys are doing things and you know other groups are doing things to help make the game better and help make the game cooler and and bring the game to a, a whole new audience and i give you guys full credit and uh, all the praise in the world for pulling off something like this and all the other things that you guys have done it's been amazing you know co competitive events in, in plant side have kind of had a little bumpy road you know throughout its existence 
what do you see as the future for competitive events in this game? You know, we're, we're running and we're doing these large stuff and everything. Wh where do you kind of see that going uh, in the future of Planetside? Well, again, I think, you know, it's going to sound like a broken record, but it really is down to what the community wants to see. Um, I think that we've been able to uh, see both sides of the spectrum in Planetside 2 from small scale fighting like what you see in the Farmers League, where it's very, uh, you know, uh, individual skill oriented to the huge scale stuff that you guys have been putting on. Um, so I think Planetside 2 can provide a lot of different types of uh, interesting, fun, compelling to watch uh, kind of uh, battles, whether it's an all tank battle or an air battle or whatever. So it's really up to what the community wants to see. But what I want to do is provide better tools, especially better observer tools. And uh, I think we've done a pretty good job with API tools for you guys to be able to build websites and stuff. I know, that is key. Um, that is very, very helpful. Yeah, and I would love to be able to do the same level of, um, you know, uh, sort of building things out for the community with the observer tools uh, as we have with the API tools. But, you know, it's just a, a matter of getting the time to do it. Well, I sent a few emails to David Curry, so... <laughs> Um, see, with the release of Hostin, we're finally out of construction phase. What are the base or level designers up to? I mean, are they working on refinement of existing bases and continents, like going back to Indar and touching up? Or can we expect perhaps any kind of work on the Battle Islands? Like, what's Nexus up to these days? Is he just kind of chilling out? Um, right now, the focus is really on Kul Tir, which is the new uh, sort of Battle Island that we're creating as part of the new player experience. And uh, actually, the way it's turning out, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, so we might end up figuring out some ways to use it in a competitive uh, uh, aspect, too, because it's a, a pretty well-balanced map with really uh, kind of well-put-together bases in the middle. So it might work pretty well as a, uh, as a map for organized matches to go on. So we might see more than just the newbie zone use out of that. But then uh, I know beyond that that um, Xander, our, like one of our level designers, he's very uh, passionate about going back and fixing areas up, in, especially on Indar, um, and especially kind of the areas between bases. Um, I know that he really wants to like mess around with uh, West Highlands and uh, some of those other kind of uh, you know, stretches between bases that are just kind of grueling to fight through. Um, and he wants to sort of give them the same treatment that we have on Amorish and uh, Hassan, where the bases flow together and there's a lot more thought put into the way large bases and small bases connect to each other and how the roads between them connect to each other to sort of facilitate different types of armor fights and stuff like that, which I think you see on Amorish uh, and Hassan, the yeah, improvement in the way that the flow between bases works. So I know that that's something that uh, the level designers really want to go back and, and fix those issues on on Indar and, uh, and Esmir especially in This has been a, a really big month for the game. It's not just the record uh, match here. You also launched the closed beta on PS4, um, which is, has started ramping up here. How many servers are up right now, and how many are planned for the PS4 uh, uh, closed beta? Well, what we're trying to do right now um, is we're kind of building up the number of players that we're allowing into the beta pretty slowly. So we've sent out a, a, about 15,000 or 12,000 invites so far. Um, and we have our, our server set up with only one continent on it, and we're really trying to kind of uh, stress it slowly and make sure that we're fixing issues with it uh, as we go along. But, you know, the beta is going to be a couple months long, at least. We have plans already for um, at least three updates and uh, potentially more than that. So um, right now our main focus is just on controls and making sure that uh, the game feels good on the console. And... Uh, getting usability feedback and quality of life feedback uh, integrated, especially with some of the new UI screens. We're really getting hands-on feedback from people for the very first time. So that's giving us uh, a lot of areas where we know that we uh, have ways to improve. So um, I can see the beta growing to be several servers. We are going to have a beta in Europe that'll be uh, probably at least the same scale as the beta here in the US. So right now we had started with two servers and uh, this weekend we closed down one of them because we really want to stress out uh, the zone hardware and make sure that everything is uh, is working as well on the PS4 version as we would expect it to work on the uh, on the PC version. Um, see the uh, player studio items. I, I've been asked this a lot now in Twitch chat and uh, some other whispers. Can we expect to see all player studio items? Uh, you know, kind of character cosmetics, helmets, vehicle stuff come to the PS4 eventually, or is that something you intend for launch? 
Um, I don't know if they'll all be there at launch, um, but yeah, I think that especially the the more popular ones, the ones that we know are uh, um, are you know players really like, those will uh, will see their way over to the PS4 for sure. This is a little bit of speculation, but you know, I mean, there there is big differences in the way that the player communities on PC and the player communities on console interact, and and just the general way they approach the game. How do you think the PS4 community is going to to change how Planet Sci is played? Do you think it's going to be a, a big difference between the PC and the console community, or or not so much? Um, I expect that there'll be a pretty big difference for sure. Um, you know, we have some experience in running a game on a PC, and and uh, and a console in DCUO. And so we know some of the pitfalls that can happen if, for instance, one of the communities gets a promotion and the other community doesn't. Um, you can end up having a lot of kind of uh, like super negative reactions as you would expect something like that happens. So, you know, we know some things that we need to make sure to avoid and I'm sure we're going to step in some shit every once in a while too, um, you know, just as we go along because that's just kind of how it goes. But, um, you know, the the expectation is that it will be a different um different communities and they're going to have different desires for the game but our hope is because we've been operating kind of as two separate teams um, at least for the last year now um, with the ps4 port team kind of doing their thing and uh, the pc team continuing to build features and work on balance and stuff like that on the live game which is kind of all being inherited by the ps4 game but hopefully with the ps4 launching now and reintegrating the team we should be able to facilitate the best interests of both uh, sets of gamers and uh you know, as much as possible, uh, make sure that we're making um, decisions that don't hamper the enjoyment of the game for either one of the groups. Cool. Uh, well, we've got some slightly more general-based questions just for yourself, Higby, so uh, thanks very much for talking to us. But now I guess I want to ask, what is your favorite thing that you personally like to do in Planet Side 2? Oh, man, that's a tough question. Um, you know, I've been playing... Uh, quite a bit i i used to play on my my character higby on connery quite a bit and uh it's funny because like i i really love playing planet side i play four or five hours a day when i get home now and uh it was one of my it's my biggest stress relief but it was also my biggest source of stress because i'm coming home from work where i'm thinking about planet side the whole time so i kind of stopped playing on that character just because people would send me tells about bugs all the time and stuff like that and it kind of got to be a hassle oh do you have an anonymous character character i've been playing light assault pretty much non-stop and i've been having a damn blast um you know just any fight figuring out some fun way to flank and uh and that's a lot of fun and then i guess the last week or so i've been playing on emerald and uh running around with a harasser on there and having a pretty good time with that too so um you know i think those are two of my favorite things about planet side 2 in terms of uh the moment to moment gameplay What's your favorite thing that's been added in the last six months? You've had a lot of changes, a lot of stuff's come in. Do you have a reserves are being thing? handed out? Oh, thanks, Just. <laughs> okay, Just this year, thanks, man. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying, uh, what was your favorite thing you've added in the last six months, uh, Higby? Um, added in the last six months, I would say. I mean, I think directives are probably outside of the last six months, but uh, in terms of actual gameplay features i think the turret has been actually really cool in terms of giving uh, the engineer a new gameplay aspect that's not uh something that really adversely affects the gameplay experience of everybody else like he can do cool things with uh with the turret and sort of dueling with the turret but it's not something where um you know my nightmare anytime we introduce a new thing like that is that the forums are filled with people going like motherfucking turrets everywhere and it's destroying the gameplay experience for everybody so i think being able to add a new aspect um to a class without it becoming something that's just like a, a nightmare for everybody else to deal with mm. uh, feels like a victory there and i do think that turret can be a little bit stronger than it is right now yeah um, it's, it's, i'm it's still happy with the way it went in without being overpowered i'd rather it's... it go in a little it bit seems to work. It seems to work best as almost like a, a thing that watches your back. It's not going to kill the guy, but it's going to tell you, "Hey, there's a guy who just came in through the back door." Right. I mean, it's kind of like him. a decoy too, right? Like if you make that thing the obvious thing that they see first, then usually people will shoot at it a couple times, and and you can, uh, you know, get the drop on them. Then. So um, I was going to ask a few other things, like like could you knock the turret over and just freaks out and blows up, kind of a la Half Life Two, because it does seem kind of seem cute in that kind of respect. But I don't know if it was much kind of talk about that. You know, we kind of did talk about how much personality we wanted to give that thing and whether we wanted it to kind of uh, have, you know, voice 
voice sounds that when it's acquiring a target and stuff, and even, portal, you know, we portal. Had, <laughs> yeah, goofy, goofy, uh, get discussions about, you know, okay, we can sell voice packs for your turrets then, and then oh, wow. you know, be a whole new thing, and blah, 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 blah. But uh, we kind of decided to go a little bit more primitive with it, and uh, I, I do want to do something with physics on it, but the only thing that would really affect that is, like, doing a charge into it, or, uh, sure. Or a grenade, maybe impact would do something. Well, we all heard that your your react to flinch by by tilting over. That would be kind of funny. Sure. Uh, we all we all kind of heard that your I guess your best buds, at least as it appears to us, uh, left. Is there any chance? Do you still keep in contact with T Ray? And is there ever a chance of a rum and cola reunion? <laughs> yeah, I do keep in contact with T Ray, and uh, you know I know he's loving life out there right now, um, and uh, you know wish him all the best. And uh, I hope there's a chance for a rum and cola reunion at some point. I uh, I love that dude and miss him a lot. There, um, you know, there's a large patch on the PTS right now, and there's a lot of vehicle changes um, that have happened. You had a big vehicle uh, test here a couple of days ago. What are you trying to accomplish with those vehicle changes? There's a lot all at once. You know, obviously, you have a, a goal in mind. Yeah, there's a couple things that I'm trying to get done. Um, one of the goals that I have is that I want to make the Empire-specific weapons be the more all-purpose ones and move the Nanite Systems ones to being the more situational ones. And that's really tough with um, weapons like the Halberd being as dominant as they are and even things like the Cobalt being as dominant as it is um, in sort of an all-arounder type purpose um, without nerfing those weapons. So what I decided to do was kind of juice up the empire specific ones and give them some you know faction flavored traits um, mainly as a way to try to make them more desirable but also as a way to give all of the um, empire specific ground vehicles a little bit more burst damage and uh, sort of uh, speed up the the ground armor gameplay a little bit more um so those were kind of like the main goals that I had there, was I wanted to make the Empire-specific um, main battle tank and harasser weapons sure. a little bit more appealing so that um, people kind of moved away from using the Nanite Systems weapons quite so often. Uh, this next question is... Oh. All the Nanite Systems weapons, I mean. Sure. The next question is uh, one for myself. I'm currently working in the directors, the leadership directors, so I just recently got the um, exceptional and the black looks amazing. And I was wondering, with the leadership directive, especially helping new uh, BR one through ten characters, one through twenty characters, is you know one of the ways you get progressive ribbons. With the new content of Coulter and that being players BR one through ten, is there going to be any tweaks to the directive system, perhaps? Just you know, for you know, platoon leaders that want to help new guys, but half those kind of numbers will now be on the new continent. Yeah, I know. I've uh, I've kind of seen a couple um, conversations about that. And I agree that it's definitely an issue. Uh, I think in general, those squad leadership um, ribbons, they really pay off when you're kind of low level with a friend who's also low level, but they don't work very well for people who are already like really um, invested in the game and then they're running around with, um, you know, even mid-level players. If you're, if you have, um, you know, low level friends, then it's, it's a cool, cool uh, setup, but it doesn't work particularly well for veterans. So, uh, yeah, no, it's something I think that we can make some improvements to by kind of scaling out the levels that are um, that are allowed for it. Instead of it being such a low level, maybe make it just be a lower level than you are. Um, instead of it just being a flat, you know, BR twenty. All right. Um... So another thing that we notice on the PTS is uh, that the NC are getting a makeover with the new the new art director who just uh, came on. Is there any chance, any plans for an NC audio revamp as well? Both the other empires got that at some point. Um, potentially, yeah. I mean, we redid the VS audio and we redid a lot of the TR audio because we really felt like those those ones needed to be differentiated. Um in terms of audio signature and in terms of like audio quality to be able to be kind of at the same level as we feel, felt like the NC was overall. So of course there's individual NC sounds that could be made better, but we felt like the Empire as a whole had a better theme and a better kind of overall uh, sound quality and the other ones were below that. So that's why we kind of upped those ones. Um, 
but kind of overall we feel like they're all a little bit more equal now now that's all completely subjective some people are going to think that the nc ones were always the worst sounding and they're the worst sounding still um you know that's that's kind of the um the art i guess of of audio game design but the uh the uh I think individually, there's a lot of sounds that can be made better or made cooler, but I wouldn't expect to see a big um, revamp for NC Audio. Um, well, see, during the Christmas event, I'm not sure who this idea was, I'm not sure if you were aware of it, but we all noticed that on the ammo crates, Nanite Ned was in the ammo crate. Do you know who put that in there? Were you aware of it? And is that a secret hint of his return? Will there be future Nanite Ned content? You know, we made a Nanite Ned video for uh, the the holiday for the uh like the holiday show that we put on you know how we kind of did a little variety show mm -hmm. yeah we made an anti ned video for it and it was so shitty it was so bad that i was like oh man this is even too bad for an anti ned video we can't we can't do it it was it was too terrible but uh i uh you know i i i wouldn't be surprised if you saw an anti ned uh, pull the helmet back out of the closet one of these days and i guess the last question for today is will you be taking part Oh yeah, today? Definitely. Yeah. I, and uh, I would ask what faction you're playing for, but I think it's pretty obvious, right? Who, who are you playing for today? Oh, I'm playing for NC for sure, I gotta get my cowboy hat on. Alright man, cool. Thanks for sitting with us and talking with us today, we really, really appreciate it. Hey, and yeah, I hope you have a good time. You guys doing all the work that you do, thank you so much, and uh, thank you to all the players out here who are participating and helping us make, literally make history. How cool is that? Super cool. All right. Okay, Red. Um, moving on from the interview, we now have to talk to our faction organizers. Uh, can we go grab them? Just have a quick rundown with them over. Uh, there's, a, there's actually a video that you were supposed to show beforehand. Uh, so there is. Now let's skip that. Let's go to faction organizers. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and see who is around. If you want to talk about the map for a second, I'll go try and grab some people. Sure. So uh, what um, Redland's speaking about is uh, top plays from our previous Server Smash uh, tournament, which we'll show probably if there's time in the pregame show, but our interview with Higby uh, went a little bit long, but hey, I'll interview Higby all day long. We have a game to run, however, so there we go. Uh, there we go. All right, hey, Red. And Negator. And uh, hey. Negator is here. So um, Negator is uh, our, one of our faction organizers for the VS faction, and uh, we just wanted to talk uh, a little bit about what exactly it took to get to where we are right now. I mean, uh, and actually, Lanzer just joined us. He's the other faction organizer for the VS as well. Uh, so guys, what, what exactly did it take to, to get here, to get 384 people plus the reserves here today? Uh, well, uh, up the top, I mean, having played Service Masters for the last nine months or so means you get pretty solid ties to all the outfit leads on uh, on your server. So it's pretty easy to talk to one guy, tell him to bring me 12, and in short order they'll have the bodies. Now, the uh, the sign-ups, which I, I think Redolent, you made? Did, did you make that? Uh, no, that was actually, I think, Maelstrom who made that. Or Justice, Maelstrom. I don't remember. That uh, that cut out about 75% of the footwork anyway, so I was able to look and see who was truly interested and uh, get in contact with their outfit reps, get a force put together in very short order, and uh, it was pretty easy, actually. And, uh, you know, one of the other things that we were unsure of, we, we knew that we'd be able to get the bodies, but we were unsure as to how the, the different servers and their factions would work together. Does the VS have an overall force commander? Um, are, are they all just kind of, kind of you know, work with you know people on live using command chat do they have an air group you know how, how did the actual strategic organization go <laughs> uh a, a few meetings and uh talking to the other server groups we had a few folks from brig step up that put together the the skeleton layout for uh, the entire force um Really, it was like setting up for any any normal server smash. It, uh, it uh, we decided where we're going to start, where we're going to hit, who's going where, contingency plan, uh, check numbers, and that's um, that's really all that went into it. Uh, at least on the surface, the, the Briggs guys did a lot of work putting together uh, comms channels, who's talking to who, to keep this number of players organized, and uh, a lot of interpersonal work getting the right people in the right spots to, to make sure you got reliable leads in place. 
you mentioned that there was there was just a great deal of uh, of people who wanted to come in and, and be in this event. Uh, you know, we had over four thousand people sign up on that sign up sheet. Uh, who was you know? Did you ever have somebody who who, who signed up or who, who got into the match and came and asked you for an account that you were just surprised a player who hadn't been on in forever or somebody that you know uh, doesn't work with somebody else on live and here they are saying no 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 I'll be in their squad did any, anything like that happen during the organization? You know, I, I would say that the vast majority are, are folks that are just they're interested in community events. Um, and once in, they were almost all of them were very happy just to play. Obviously, we tried to, to get them all with their outfits and uh, you know get them the experience they wanted. But yeah, we didn't have any issues with the folks being unwilling. All right. So, Dotser, are you here to talk about the TR side of things? Yes, I am. All right. So, th- how did things go on the TR side? Uh, you know, how how was organizing the entire world's worth of TR to to show up today? Pretty much our TR in general. You know, a bit superior. I mean, massive turnaround. It's just a shame at the end of the day we couldn't get everyone involved who actually you know show interest. Now, do the TR also have a, a command structure? Do they have a, a force lead and and air squad and stuff like that? Yes, we do have a force lead, um, and it's pretty much going off in my over here at the moment. But last minute battle plans? I'll not discuss any thought of battle plans yet. (laughs) Because there are none! (laughs) I was like, what do we do? So uh, I don't know. Did did anything surprise you in the in the lead up to this event? Did, you know, was there anything that uh, you know, as I I mentioned it to Negator, did anyone show up that you were just like, oh wow, I can't believe that they they're asking to play, they haven't played in a while, or or were any daggers set aside from people who who normally don't work well together? No, not really. I mean, I've had no little to no drama. Um, but what, what shocked me the most was pretty much how fast the turnaround was. It was pretty much like, you know, people came forth as a you know, a server rep, and then it's been, you know, a week to it later they came with the initial roster list, and, you know, the not very envious position of having to pick people. Um, and that happened pretty much, you know, within a week. You know, we had pretty much 50% of the work done in the first few weeks from natural sign-ups. And, uh, you know, what was it like? You, you know, you say you have a force uh, a force leader. Now that's a little bit easier for one guy to be in charge of the uh, the entire faction or the entire server because you know everyone kind of plays each other. You, you, you see each other's names. You you might know, hey, that guy's a good leader. I've faced him before. Um, you know, were were there contentious meetings about the the setups for tactics and stuff like that, or is everyone basically just kind of banding together to to support their faction? Everyone's pretty much you know acting as a faction rather than, you know, the individuals. I mean, everyone on the TR side wants to, you know, wants the TR to win, because in my eyes, they should, they should win. Um, no bias there. Um, it, it's one of those things where it's not like a server smash where people are divided by the servers, whereas now it's for your faction, you're playing for your faction. Is there like any a... faction zeal going on? Some fervor? Some, perhaps, I, uh, I, Warhammer I quotes? That there may have been some role-playing by a certain individual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am I am curious for all factions. You know, we've had this happen before in Server Smash. People who who are so amped to be uh, doing this, they actually pay real station cash for. Oh, that's uh, happened. The, you know it has. Yeah, yeah. for for the the accounts. By the way, the accounts that people are playing on today are uh, are loaner accounts. Basically, these were created by SOE specifically for this event. Uh, we give you the account, you log on to the uh, to play in the event, and then you uh, you give them back to us. So people putting money into these accounts to buy shinies and uh, and nice uh, uh, camos and stuff. There, there's no guarantee they'll ever get that account again and we've had people put as much as twenty dollars into account sometimes waiting. more yeah it, i'm waiting to see somebody running around in in bright shiny yellow uh, uh, max armor or something. i apologize for not forgetting the name but i know during the um server smash record final championship match between cobalt and emerald didn't somebody buy like american decals for the shoulder patches so all the american outfits had american shoulder patches uh yes that is true one one person for uh, i believe it was either the emerald uh uh, championship match or the one before it bought the entire emerald team the uh the u.s the u.s patch to put on so that's pretty awesome you know it's small revenue stream but pretty awesome yeah so um uh we also have uh both of our nc organizers here and um uh basically guys uh Luya and and pizza 
tell me a little bit about how how it was organizing the entire world's uh, population of new conglomerate how how did that go well, I'd probably well, say, well, Louis, I'll let you go. I guess the easiest way is, do you know the NCTK record on live? Um, they're pretty similar out of live as well. Um, <laughs> so it's been, been fun, and it's been getting fun the closer we're getting to the live day. But the organizers, everyone around, has been brilliant. There's the reply from players has been awesome and people have been really reciprocal reciprocated i think that's the word to joining in and actually fighting for the nc now do you have a uh um a faction commander uh just like the other two factions is, is there just one person maybe a couple and you know do you have different groups that have set up a uh, air group things like that um i don't want to give too much away is there a force yeah. commander? How hard is that? Come on. Yes. We, yeah, we, yeah, we, and is there a battle plan, or are you all just going to shoot each other with shotguns in the warp gate? And I think the idea is to warp lock the VS. Oh, the VS? Oh. Why the VS and not the TR? This is interesting. Go on. Orion. Because we need to pay back for the Orion and all those months of Zoe and floaty <laughs> tanks. Jealousy. It is jealousy. I, I agree. As as a fellow VS, I agree. It's just jealousy. Now, since while we have all three of you on here, you know, we do want to talk about tactics because uh, there's, you know, there is the distinct possibility of whoever wins this event, whatever faction, might be nerfed immediately by Higby. Higby's playing. He's actually he's playing in the match today. So it's a real danger, you guys. You know, if, if you win, you might be uh, putting your faction right front and center for uh, for him to look at. I don't know if the others have anything in place, but I can safely say the NC have plans for if we happen to win. And I don't think we're actually looking to win. I think we're actually looking to throw this because we don't want to be nerfed. Typical <laughs> NC. Hashtag. All right, guys. Uh, is there anything else that you guys want to bring up before we, uh, we move on? Anything you want to throw out to the stream or say to anybody or shout outs before we head off? I do. Um, just a massive, you know, shout out to the TR server reps and either organizers like Angie. Um, I can't thank you enough for the effort of work you put in into this, and I'm sure the same goes to the other peasant factions. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, any retorts oh. before we move off? Because I can't, I can't leave it hanging like that. Yes, yeah. um, again, mass sorry, sorry, Nico. massive thank you to every single person who's been involved on it. It's been a lot of work. There's people who can't be here today who have been organising the NC from day one. So, big shout out to them. I'm not going to mention any names because we'll do it later. And hey, who cares what matters because we're the only ones free around here, so. A negator or anything? <laughs> My Orion is ready, that's all. <laughs> okay, okay. Alright, cool guys. Well, thanks so much for chatting out. We're going to head off to a little kind of brief video uh, showing the top plays from a previous server smash. Uh, it'll just, as a brief overview, we showed this during the championship match, such as the intro, but it's our top five plays from server smash, perhaps something we can expect in this current game. And then when we get back, we'll talk to our other casting teams who will be covering the northwest and eastern fronts. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Just A lot of amazing moments came out of this tourney, from the sheer spectacle of 200 aircraft flying out of the warp gate, to the exhilaration of a last moment base resecure. These are the top five plays from 2014's Server Smash Tournament. We start off in the second week, with Cobalt facing Connery in the Continent of Amherst. NC Arsenal is a linchpin three capture point base that starts off neutral in the north of the map. Winning the opening fight here gives a server a distinct advantage over the top three lanes and so both servers had some impressive plays to try and gain an edge. Connery dropped an anti-vehicle squad out of ejection seat sides to lay mines on the road and set up a lancer nest, both of which played havoc with Cobalt's large armor pull from Sungray Westgate. In the end, Cobalt proved more tenacious, slowly pushing Connery's anti-armor players off their hills and getting a crucial spawn sunderer tucked in behind the buildings to allow fast respawns. Uh, Connery is trying to get them A. Cobalt just needs to hold on for 20 seconds. This is huge. 
The fact is Conroy needs to get this point and they can stall this base out so much longer. Cobalt gets it, it is a massive positional play in the north. And it doesn't look like there's enough infantry for Conroy, Cobalt gets the base. Sometimes bases are won after a single enemy mistake. Other times it takes more than a bit of luck turning your way. Miller almost gave away Tumas Tech Plant for free after failing to repair the blown SCU generator when capping the base early in their match against Emerald. They redeployed forces for a last minute resecure of the SCU room to try and avoid disaster. But Emerald moved behind them back onto the point for a last minute showdown. 25 seconds to go. Here comes Miller on the balcony. Here come the Maxis. Most of the consumables have already been used by these Emerald forces. 19 seconds to go. Miller's going up to the balcony. Why are those Maxis going up to the balcony? With 10 seconds to go, you need to get in the capture point, son. What's going on? 10 seconds. 9. What is Miller doing? Get on the point. Okay, here finally they're on the point. But 3 seconds to go. There's too many Emeralds. Is Emerald going to get the base? One second to go! Emerald gets the base! I do not believe it! That was a huge blunder by Miller! What were they doing? They had this base! Server Smash victories often come down to the appropriate use of force at the right base and the right time in the game. The next top play is a classic example of feinting for one base and capturing another in return when the enemy moves to counter. Connery has a well-known affinity for attacking tech plants, and it looked like it was in effect again halfway through their match with Miller. However, Connery quickly redistributed their players when Miller came in force to kick them out of the tech plant, and wound up capturing Watterson's redemption, their real objective, practically without a fight. There's, oh look at that, there's 48 to 96 new conglomerate Miller forces at the tech plant. That is almost criminal, criminal. There's so many NC that is a tech plant, and what's going on Warson's Redemption? They've lost it, 20 seconds. I do not see how the Miller force can save Warson's Redemption. They need to get two capture points in the next 15 seconds. They're just watching all the angles as they're coming out the spawn rooms. And that's it, well done to Conroy. They have managed to take Warson's Redemption. Emerald has become known in their brief time together in Server Smash as a server with many different tactics at their disposal. One both Emerald teams are great at is small squad harassment action. In the Emerald vs. Cobalt match on Ezemir, a squad of only seven people from the D117 outfit were absolutely tenacious in their dedication to keep Matherson's triumph under contention against a much larger force. While Emerald never captured the base, keeping the timer moving in their direction prevented Cobalt from pushing into the weak Rhyme Analytics lane and deep into enemy territory. This constant harassment by a very small group of players forced Cobalt to spend resources and large amounts of troops against a small squad, and was a substantial reason Emerald won the match. Okay, now they've spawned in. I was going to say the numbers were kind of lying the situation. Here comes the galaxies, but there's still an Emerald Air Force in the skies. Oh, but there comes Cobalt's Air Force as well. This is an incredibly dangerous It's a critical amount of seconds. It gets exponentially quick at the very, very end. Okay, it's back to 2 minutes 40, but they have to hold on to the A point. Okay, look at the number of reinforcements that are coming on the map. That is a very, very large force of Cobalt's NC now here on the base. And Okay, it was close, but I do not see... No, that's it, it's game over. The number one play for the Server Smash tournament was part of a furious assault that Miller engineered in the middle of their final tournament match against Cobalt. An outnumbered Miller force manages to capture Gurney Dam despite having no secure spawns and being constantly hammered by Cobalt Air, and then moments later saves their ownership of construction site Beta, with only a second to spare. Gurney Dam, 20 seconds to go, even with air support, it looks like Miller's gonna get this. Miller is just now flipping the point at, at Beta. Really? Oh wow, we're coming there as soon as the space flips. Wow, Miller takes Gurney Dam. I can't believe it. Okay, we're at um, construction beta. Oh, 15 seconds to go, and it looks like this is going to be a Cobalt base. What's all the lightnings doing? You're not kidding! You. What the hell? Yeah, there's a lot of fighting on the point. If Miller can just get more people in here... Oh, it's be flipping be again. Harasser, though. Oh, the, 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 okay, it's Red's Grenade Ward's going off. It's so close. Millie's getting bodies on the floor. The, the Cobalt still has control of the capture point. Is this Sunder going to come in? Are people going to spawn the Sunder? Are they on the point? Miller's back on the point again. It's razor close. I think Miller might have just gotten away with it. All right, let me show you all these vehicles, guys. What is going on here? 
I, I heard you needed some. It's, it's like the Lightning um, Sales Depot. Unfortunately, Miller's aggression wasn't enough to prevail in the game, but their constant assaults kept Cobalt guessing late into the match, making for one of the closest and most back and forth server smashes ever. Hey everyone and welcome back. Um, hope you enjoyed the uh, top five plays there, uh, put together by our Redland no less. And now we're going to go and give you a brief overview of our casting teams that are going to be casting each front. We're going to hop down to our Western front casters. That's going to be the NC versus the VS. That's going to be Shock and Diz. So we're going to move down there right now. Hey guys, how you doing? Doing? How's it going? Doing well. So, you guys are on Planetside Battles 4, our channel, and what front are you guys covering today? We are covering the Western Front, so NC versus VS. And, uh, and uh, as a VS player, Shock, are you looking forward to this? or? Uh, you know, a little bit. I'm looking forward to uh, kind of seeing what's going to happen. I know there's going to be some decent action on this front due to, uh, I mean, Hurricane's right there and uh, a couple other bases, but... You know, the VS have some people on them that I know. Uh, I know a lot of my outfit is there, uh, the Future Crew guys, so I'm kind of excited to see what they're going to be able to do today. But yeah, I'm excited. We'll see. I mean, I don't really know who's going to overcome. I think it's going to be a really close uh, battle. I really, I, I've like been looking at all of the kind of like lists of people, like the NC list, the VS list, even the TR list, and there's a lot of people playing in this, and it, it could really go either way. Now, both of you guys are, uh, you know, pretty comp competitive players. You both have very competitive outfits. What is, what's your favorite thing about Planet Side 2? Why do you guys, uh, you know, stay in it? What, why did you make it your, your main competitive game for so long? Well, I mean, for, you know, for what we do in the Farmers, I know that AC, I mean, my personally, my outfit, our favorite thing to do is the small to kind of medium-ish uh, infantry fights. Um, you know, we like to attack, defend, and see... Can we take this base even though we're out popped two to one? And when we can, it is that is far and away the most rewarding thing for us. Yeah, you know, I'm going to echo that too. And with my outfit, it's more, it's been a lot about just the community as a whole. Um, I enjoy, you know, not only playing with Future Crew, playing with people that I've been playing with for 10 years plus in the Planet Side series, but also. I mean, coordinating with AC, they're longtime friends of friends of mine and, and other outfits as well. And just kind of like making things like Farmers League that what, what we do, Diz and I do, a reality. Um, and and just community events like this are a lot of fun. We, we like just being, I, at least I do, I, I like being just around the other people that make the Plant Side 2 community really just pop and really just be the thing that it is today. Given the populations, it's probably going to be heavy everywhere, but do you particularly see anywhere between the NC and VS front that's going to be a hot spot? Um, Honestly, okay. I... Well, go ahead. I was going to say, looking at this, uh, Fort Drexler, depending on who okay. kind of wins the initial push, uh, Fort Drexler and or over to Can Cairn Station, that lane, is going to be an absolute bloodbath. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll leave you guys be, and we're going to jump up now to uh, Planetside Battles 3. That will be the north front between the TR and NC with uh, Hillfox and Poonarn. So um, good luck, guys. If you guys want to watch this particular front rather than a general battle with myself and Redland, then go watch Planetside Battles 4. Hey, guys. How you doing? doing oh, great. hey. There you are. Sorry. Something really amazing <laughs> happened. Higby showed up at the Amherst NC Warp Gate and started giving out cowboy hats. No! He's giving out cowboy hats? That's not fair! That would explain the message once you've got one, go away. Man, everyone's that. I'm jelly. I'm super jelly. But he's just in the NC warp gate. No! This is an unfair advantage. This is an unfair advantage now, man. It's cosmetic morale support. You think you're jelly. The TR are upset because they all went to their warp gate. And it's like, where's our hat? Where's our hat? And they don't get cowboy hats. Oh, yeah. You should have made it clear. In all fairness, only one faction has a cowboy hat. But <laughs> yeah. But they had a dream. They had a dream of a Well, you you guys are in the north. You're covering the TRNC Grudge Civil War match. Um, pff, I don't know. You guys are on Planetside Battles three. So if you guys want to watch Poonaners and his assistant Hellfox, then you can watch on Planetside Battles 3's channel. 
what do you think about the Northern Lane? Do you think any points of interest you want to talk to us about, Pinanos? Oh, I hate it on Skydock, uh, obviously. That's where people really get locked in. It's kind of a people suck, but it's not as bad as a lot of the people sucks that are very well known in this game. So it, it'll be plenty fun. You're going to see probably it get taken a couple of times and people fight over it. It's just a really fun base to fight over. And it's, uh, it's easy to take. It's easy to defend. It's very well balanced. I enjoy that base a lot. I enjoy filming it because it's very easy to get into. Just a little bit of scaffolding and you're good. All right. <laughs> so, so again... This is, uh, this is Plantside Battles 3. If you want to watch uh, Poon Enters and Hell Fox's antics, and there will be antics in here, right, guys? A little oh, bit. Yeah. We'll talk about freedom. Gonna talk about love. Gonna talk about frame rate cushion. Oh, yeah. So, so good. This, is this is our casting team on the North Front. This is uh, NC versus TR, and this is uh, Hell Fox and Poon Enters. And go over there if uh, you want to watch them. We're going to head up to the next casting team. Hey, guys. How you doing? Dude. So, uh, you guys are watching uh, the Eastern Front between the Terran Republic and the Vanu Sovereignty. So, uh, how are you guys feeling about that? Very, very excited. I think that uh, after looking at the map and looking at our th at the three-way match that we did about a month ago, I think that there's going to be a lot of good and great fights going over on, on this side of the map. So, I'm really looking forward to, to fighting on this side and, and watching what goes down. I think we're going to see a lot of DACA and TR going to win. <laughs> yeah. Did you see what T-Ray was doing, Malorn? Have you heard what he's done? What has he done? He is on the NC warp gate handing out free cowboy hats. Not T-Ray, Hig Higby. Oh, Higby, sorry, Higby. Higby, apologies. Higby's on the NC warp gate handing out cowboy hats right now. It's, well, it's not what? fair. They need that, they need that, because <laughs> they don't look nearly as good as TR. Yeah. So, so I mean... Are there any particular bases on the Eastern Front between the uh, TR and the VS you think is going to be a point of interest? I totally believe that at the end of the day, we're going to see um, the three-point base on the far side, the um, Gen uh, Genesis terraforming plan. I think that's going to be the linchpin for this front. This and the amp station is probably going to be the, where we see the most uh, biggest fights go against. Maybe even Nascent's Defiance as well, even though that's kind of in the center. But I really think that Genesis terraforming plant for both sides is going to be the one that they either want to keep or that they want to uh, to push on. And one of the great things about on this stream, guys, you know, we, we have very different styles on all the different front streams. And, and one of the real big gets we got here was having Malorn as our color caster. Malorn used to work for SOE. He was a level designer and he did a lot of work on Hassan. So he's going to be able to give us a lot of really kind of in-depth uh, about bases, about how bases are designed in this game, and why some of the fights that you see happening are happening. Because believe me, that isn't accidental. They spend a long time trying to figure out how to get player flow to work, and and how how a match can actually, or how a, a a fight can actually develop within a base. And I guess I've got the question. The unique thing about the TR is the way we did the random rolling system and the the selection process. The TR has Nason's Defiance. Admittedly, the capture points are neutral, but how do you think that's going to play into this kind of fight? Because they're kind of in the middle of everyone. Malone, well, what do you think? That's your think, that's your baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, Nason's Defiance is one of the one of the bases that I made. Um, actually, on stream on the work in progress stream, if you guys have seen that. Um, but, but yeah, I think it's centrally located. It mo mostly offers flanking routes. I think you'll see typically more action at Gurney Dam and Broken Vale and Woodman ASE Labs. But uh, Nazan's allows you access to cut across and attack those and put constant pressure. So it's a, it's a real nice strategic point to have. Very hard to take if they are actually defending it. Cool. Right, well guys, if you want to watch the Town Republic Vanu Sovereignty uh, Eastern Front... Uh, can't guarantee there's not any Russians playing for the TR, then you can come to Planetside Battles 2, that's the channel. Uh, Casters will be Odin's Pride and Malorn. Who doesn't want to listen to Malorn? And um, good luck to you guys, and uh, we'll catch you at the end. All right, good luck. Yeah, good luck. All right. Okay. So, uh, I guess there's a few other minor things that I need to cover now, just before we go into our ref speech. We do have about four and a half minutes to go. If I show this here, this is the beginning of our new production overlay done by, oh dear, there we go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That's all good. Right, so this is our new production overlay done by Maelstrom. Isn't that right, Maelstrom? 
Yes, I've worked very, very, very well. So we have a new bug in the top left. It, it will overlay um, the territory percentages. Those are the main numbers. We also have this uh, bar here. So when a base flips, we'll give you notifications. We'll have a clock in the start of the game. And we also have some additional but familiar server smash uh, stat things. So we've got a kill overview. Of course, they're not there because we haven't started yet. But there is a kill graph. I will come back to it. The kill graph comes here, as, as we've seen before. There is a... That section that lets me pull up um, players, outfits, weapons, kills, vehicles. We'll bring those stats up as we come along. And then also we have our ye old cap graph bar, which will show, and that will uh, basically show who's captured what base, when, where, and how. So this is uh, a lot of work that's been done by Maelstrom. It is live, it's in sync. Um, so, you know, we'll bring it up on stream, and uh, it hopefully it should improve the viewing experience for you guys at home to see what's going on. All right. Why don't we go ahead and play the open and get this show on the road? Roger right that. Where we come from, we each fight for loyalty, for freedom, or perhaps enlightenment, but not here. Here we cast aside our disparate beliefs, our barriers and preconceived notions, and band together as a global force to engage in some of the largest competitive battles this world has ever seen. We are the squads, the platoons, the empires and servers, full of players coordinating a complex game of strategy and tactics. This is where combined arms happens. This is where war comes to play. This is Server Smash. Okay, everyone, as we see with the countdown clock at the bottom, we are 2 minutes and 10 seconds away. Just about to start Redland, um, we've only got 2 minutes as I was saying. Uh, are we all prepped? I think we've got everyone on continent. Uh, Justicia is our referee, or did everything look good from your end of uh, how this is going? Yep, everybody's moving over, uh, we're set to go. I'm going to head over to the Town Republic's warp gate to see their exit. Uh, what are you going to do, Red, on the beginning? I am actually uh, going to be at Mulok Tech Plant. One of the things, there's so many people on this continent here. We've actually had to spread people out. Think of it like, you know, uh, lying on a nail bed. If you, uh, if everyone was at the warp gate, uh, things probably wouldn't be going so well. So we've spread people out to some of the larger bases along the outside. And uh, it's quite a sight. We have, uh, we have galaxies kind of perched on top of buildings. And, and oh, just... man, it is very impressive. Here, let me go to the Czech Tech Plant in the north, guys, and quickly show you. We've got one minute and 20. Um, are we in sync with the guys uh, casting this beginner? Are we going to have a shout-out? on alert or what's the kick goal here the alert will start bang on i've got red rx watching the timer right cool now. stuff so we got all players ready oh wow it, it it looks very very impressive um almost ghostly here just silent galaxies ready to start yeah one minute to go and guys we will uh oh there's the broadcast right i'm gonna take away the uh oh we can see it in the clock i'm gonna take away the uh, timer on the bottom well uh here we are Months in the planning, ready to go. Are you psyched, Red? Because I am pretty freaking psyched right now. I am definitely psyched. This is uh, definitely some of the biggest battles we may ever witness. If, uh, if you've got anybody out there who plays the FPS or wants to see this, I know it's a bit late now. Tell them about it. Put it on Twitter. Put it on Twitch. Send people messages because we're about to start. In the next 25 seconds, there's going to be the world record attempt on the most number of players in an FPS. And we already have everyone already gathered up. They're gathered up in multiple places around here. Where do you think they're going to be heading? Oh, man. The entire front line. All contentious bases. They're, every point is going to have something going, even if it's small. Hate Sky Dock TR is going to go to construct site beta at the beginning because they want to make sure they get on the capture point just to prevent you know a cap on a three-point base, perhaps. Uh, we might see some fighting at the biolab. There goes the alert. And there we go. We're live. Good luck. And, uh, and we're beginning at the Czech Tech Plant, so the first number of forces of TR are heading off. All of these galaxies are full, because we have a two-minute ruling where uh, your one squad can only pull a full galaxy, one full Sundra, or two Valkyries. Surprise, surprise, there are no Serp Pinatas, I can see, Redland. What about you? I don't see any Valkyries over here. I think that's less to do with the... Uh... See that? 1,098 uh, players in Haas, and it's unofficial until the end, until we get the word, guys, but that's a lot of people. 
That is a lot of people. That is an unofficial count. We'll, uh, we'll be getting the count from Guinness uh, as they can give it to us. Already seeing the, uh, the TR and the VS engaging each other over Genesis terraforming down here. Where have you headed to? Well, we were going south. It looks like there's a TR force perhaps going for Gurney Dam or Nascent's Defiance. Uh, a lot of drops currently going over fighting for the bio lab. We can see both forces bringing in lots of sky whales. I wonder if the whales will stay in the air and try ram each other. It looks like that's what's actually... Yep, we've got some whale wars going on. Lots and lots of galaxies, and they're keeping the galaxies alive, or they're trying to. And without any ESFs around, it's just whale wars. They're, they're bulldogging each other. They're firing the, the walkers at each other. This is, uh, this is really epic stuff here. If we actually kind of go into the biolab, briefly, this being a can biolab, uh, we can see that huge numbers of NC have turned up to the biolab. They are at home having a jolly old time. The uh, TR has managed to get themselves set up on the Bravo capture point of a CAN biolab, <laughs> but there's just so many NC and so few TR, I think this is perhaps just a diversionary attack to prevent any form of pressure being applied to Eastern um, a CAN storage depot. And interestingly, the TR do not seem concerned about this at all. They've dropped their entire forces on a CAN Southern Labs, which not only gives them the... Oh, better, good point, yeah. Although they're, they're being contested right now. I'm going to head over there right now. But that, if they manage to... Two-minute notice on all call. All players are allowed to pull all vehicles. No more vehicle restrictions. So that's a two-minute call, which means that this game now will uh, start to have ESFs in it. It will start to have uh, Valkyries and uh, Harassers and things like that. All the players are at their, their respective locations, and we're going to start seeing big air battles. So these, uh, these galaxies that have been floating up unharassed uh, are going to start getting harassed again. And so we're currently watching the stream now at Cannes Southern Labs. It looks like there are more Terran forces, or they might not have motion detecting the new conglomerate forces at Cannes Southern Labs. But we do see that the capture point is actually in the hands of the NC, even though it looks like there's plenty of TR on the western building, just not deciding to push out. Could just be that motion is lacking though. This is, this is just a, a very, very difficult base to push on. It's incredibly open, and especially with these, uh, these galaxies and, and the air incoming. It's so exposed. It's so very difficult to... Well, this is four damage. points looking down on multiple levels. They've got... And we can see that the new conglomerate have got squad beacons. And they've got the high ground with heavy assaults, not just light assaults. And they're dominating the control point. Terran Republic's coming reinforcements. Wow! That was a near suicidal uh, new conglomerate galaxy. Perhaps trying to ram uh, the Terran Republic's galaxy with the point. They've got reinforcements. They've brought in some maxes. They do have a Sunder set up now in the garage that's set up bringing in fresh reinforcements. The numbers, however... They're enough! They're definitely pushing back the NC. The NC's making a right nuisance of themselves, uh, delaying the stall in this capture. It's still 3 minutes 30, plenty of time for NC to get in. So, if we look back for a moment and have a look at the map and see what's going on, we can see that the new conglomerate have got 2 to 1 numbers in their favour attacking Hade Skydock. Further down the battlefront, uh, Practically all the Terran Republic numbers that was at Akan Biolab have been pushed out and are now east of Akan Storage Depot. That means that those numbers that are defending Akan Biolab could, in theory, go down to Akan Southern Labs and help make a save. Uh, Nason's Defiance, we have a large tier of Republic force saving Nason's Defiance, allowing to make a further push. There is a small Vanu force at Ixtab Power Regulation taking Ixtab Power Reg. Um, there's a 50 50 fight going at Ixtab Southern Pass. Genesis Terraforming, uh -huh. the Terran Republic's played their hand, they're going for the Terraforming. That's the large outpost belonging to the Vanu Sovereignty. And Nettlemar Gardens has been attacked by a small force of the Terran Republic. As for I the new. Here, I am down here at Tack on Storage, and this is one minute till cap. Notice that uh, when we asked Shock and Diz what they thought was going to happen here, they they said Fort Drexler was going to be the big slog. Well, they're going to, the VS are about to lose their connection to Fort Drexler because of this really, really great point hold that the NC have going on here. I think we'll go down there next. Yes, we were saying that um, Broken Vale is uh, currently uncontested. Um, Hurricane Storage has a reasonable number of value forces, perhaps they've been a save. Hurricane Western Pass is actually being attacked by the VS, so they wanted to take their vulnerability to the amp station, so they're taking the Western Pass, that's where their main play is. Although they are at numbered almost 60 to 40%. You're correct in tackling storage, 50-50 numbers, and the NC is going to take that. We're going to warp over there, and the Rue has distillery. NC has number advantage. Uh, we're just going to leave the Southern Labs and see what's going on over to the south between the VSNC lane at tackling storage. And then Oops. you have to wonder how... how much wow, check this balcony out, dude. That's a lot of NC on an upper platform on a construction site base. And Tacon is so difficult to push into. It is it is the construction site from hell, really, with that upper raised platform. It, it's, it's just a firing line to get back in there.
And it seems like Tacon is our first capture of the match. And that goes to the NC. Right behind it, however, is Ixitob Power Regulation, which the VS are... Oh, it's just getting... I'm going to fly over there very quickly. Uh, where, sir? Ixitob Power Reg? Ixitob Power Regulation, yes. Uh, it looks like it just got re-secured at the last possible second by uh, the, the TR, I think. Oh, I went to Hurricane Western Pass. <laughs> Sorry, but it is. it looks like the capture point is being messed with. Uh, on the lower section. At the Vanu Sovereignty back here? Uh, if there was a massive resecure. I didn't get here in time to see it, but there was a, just a massive resecure from the TR at, I want to say, five seconds left. The and the VS are just trying desperately to push back in here. They do have population, though. They, they do have two to one numbers, except Power Rack. Perhaps they're redeploying it to provide extra forces. Uh, Hurricane Western Pass was just saved by the NC. I'll come over and join you now, except Power Rack. It was a valiant effort by the TR, but unfortunately they weren't able to guard both sides of the point. They only Yeah, well this is the thing, they're outnumbered and I just like a counter push by the Vanu Sovereignty, which is what we're seeing as they're loading in, and we see there's a lot of numbers, and with twenty seconds to go, there's simply not enough Terran Republic numbers. We look at this and we see they're outnumbered sixty forty. But at the same time, the Terran Republic on the southern front against well the, the west eastern front against the, the Vanu Sovereignty, they're losing extra power regulation, but they're gaining Nettlemire. This will be worth it if they get Nettlemire. But crucially, there's fifty seconds in the capture point of Nettlemire. The forces of Vanu that are currently extra power regulation, if the redeployment allows it, they can get to Nettlemire and help make a save. And this is the huge thing about this game. At, at, at this high strategic level, it is entirely about force distribution. Every, all the force commanders are doing is they're staring at their map and basically play, playing risk with real people. They're trying to move their forces around and play those clocks as long as they can. So I guarantee you the VS force commander right now is trying to move as many of his free characters over to Nettlemount Gardens to stop that with 24 seconds remaining. Uh, it looks like the Vanu forces perhaps begin to apply pressure to Ixtab Amp Station, or the fact that just Terran Republic are bringing vehicles and forces from their Amp Station back to Ixtab Power Regulation to keep them off. There's a small cap going on at Gurney Dam. The fight for Hurricane Western Pass is still ongoing. I'm going to go there now. Can you check what's going at Hid Sidock in a can um, storage depot, please? Yes, I'm going to head up there right now. Interesting. Oh, Valkyrie! I saw Valkyrie. We kind of figured that that tack on lane would be very a very still lane. It was in the three-way smash that we had. Uh, it was very difficult for anyone to gain any territory, and I'm very surprised that that was our first base to get captured. Uh, you know, I, I believe there was probably some uh, some gaming going on there uh, with the NC about getting people onto the point before the VS could make a move onto uh, onto the next base. Well, we're currently at Hurricane Western Pass on stream, and. Um Apart from the occasional, oh wait, no, here come Galaxy reinforcements for the new conglomerate. They're up high, I don't know if they're gonna get reinforcement drop. Yes, we've got squad droppers, they're getting rid of the beacons. Now they've got 80 seconds to make a base cap save. A second squad of the NCs dropped in at Hurricane Western Pass, they've got 75 seconds to make a save. That's a third squad from a third galaxy. They need to work their way down to the capture point, which is what they're doing. Have the VS cordoned on what's going on, are they gonna reinforce? Because we can see the NCs coming from both sides now. Still barely holding on to the capture punk with 60 seconds to go though. It's too many NC numbers on the outside. Yeah, that 60-40 uh, is just is just killer with that much time remaining. They can put so much pressure on you. Uh, you know, uh, there's just so many more people who can come through that door and you can't possibly respawn fast enough as an attacker to get back onto the point. At Hade Sky Dock, uh, the TR have put 60% pop onto it and have, uh, for the most part, kicked uh, the NC off the points at least. The NC are certainly still here trying to get back in, although it looks like they did just remove their population. It just went down to uh, to 1v12 um, for the NC at Hade Sky So, um, fun stat, what is the top weapon today? So far? I'm going to guess it's the Orion. It's the Orion. <laughs> it is the Orion. There you go, guys. <laughs> and uh, we see the VS are slightly on top with kills, followed by the NC, then followed by the TR. But that's no uh, signification of um, progress, because we've often seen teams that have fewer kills actually get more progress done on uh, capture points. Well, and something that is a, a huge difference in metagame compared to Server Smash is you do not want to take the lead early. Uh, having the lead too early in a three-way match is pretty much you're destined to lose because it means that both other empires will say, hey, who am I going to take 
territory away from to try and win. So I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing some of the empires that are capturing a lot to try and back off. Basically, tell the other guys they want them to come after them. You don't want to you don't want to get too large of a lead here because then you have to defend it for two hours. Currently watching the last 80 seconds in Gorni Dam, but the Vanu Sovereignty are right outside the capture point and they're pushing into the square building. It's very hard to defend this once the enemy actually forces their way in. A lot of down TR and the capture point's flipping. Too many VS reinforcements have come in. When we look at the capture, uh, the pop numbers, they're outnumbered. Oh, it's only 54 to 45, but it really depends whether or not the TR has spawn sunders, and we can see in the minimap the spawn sunders too far away. And just so many grenades, it's such an open cap point. You know, all the VS had to do was... You got four them. points of entry, that's the difficult part. You have to watch everywhere, and your back's being flanked three different ways. Of course, now the problem is that when they're holding the point, if the TR can mount a counter-offensive, they could basically do exactly what the uh, the VS did. I think that actually the TR... Oh, yeah, they have too far. We can see that the, the, the TR has made a full save of Nascent's Defiance. No one actually tried to make a stall of the Nascent's Defiance save, and that's why the Terran Republic can apply pressure at Gurney Dam, and it also looked like there was small pressure at Broken Veil Garrison. Uh, we can see the Hade Skydock uh, fight is stabilized. The Eastern Account Storage Depot fight between the Bylab has stabilized. There was an attempt by the NC against Woodman ASC, but that is being saved by the Terran Republic. So right now, the front line against the NC and TR is relatively stable. The fight with the, N uh, the TR and the VS, however, is fluctuating. Nettlemire has been captured by the Terran Republic, and Ixta Power Regulation is captured by the Vanu Sovereignty. There's still heavy fighting going on between Eastern Substation Genesis Terraforming Plant, and the Terran Republic tried to get Ixta Southern Pass being pushed back. There is a small Tag force. Storage oh, was 16 seconds away from. Oh, I see that. VS. And a massive, massive group of Maxes and uh, and Ingies just crashed it for the uh, the NC. That's a heavy Nana investment, then, isn't it? It is. We're trying to play some revive force here, but I did, there's just far too many Scat Maxes up here. Oh, we can see the cowboy hats. I can see the cowboy hats. I think that's all they really need. Cowboy hats, OP, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> A Maelstrom, unfortunately, you didn't put that stat in your stat tracker. Uh, kills by cowboy hat. How many cow cow kills per cowboy hat, yes. It's a so ferocious firefight going between the two buildings of the Vanu Sovereignty and the uh, new conglomerate. But you have to say that it's working in favor of the new conglomerate because they have the capture point, and the longer this drags out, the more it's going to be saved, or the more the capture point will be reverted. And you can see that the, the VS are trying to get a Sunder up onto the point. That's really the only thing that can help you break into this base. Uh, it, you know, we'll, we'll see this the later the match goes on. People will try and get Sunders and Harassers with short-range Bulldogs and, and, if you're NC, shotguns, and get it onto the point. It's really the only way that you can push through these doors when there is just that... It's, it's a force multiplier. It gives you the extra yes. oomph um, when numbers are against you. And you usually have... You want to use the vehicles in the last 60 seconds. You want to keep your forces away from the vehicles, keep them outside the building, and as if you do get pressured in, then that's kind of like your ace in the hole to force the, uh, the fight through. Because you have to assume that the enemy team is going to redeploy with more than what you have to make a save. And even more so desperately as the timer progresses down. You know, it, it's interesting that you look at the, uh, uh, the fronts and it definitely seems like the TR and the NC both said that they wanted to push to the south early on and go after the VS. Uh, that's where the gains are. It's not that they don't have forces up in the north, it's that they both chose the same places to go to. Uh, you know, it's a it's a almost dead even 50-50 uh, fight at Hate Skydock. It is a uh, pretty well dead even fight or, or, or in the, the area around the Con Biolab. And what really surprises me on the NCV, uh, NCTR fight is nobody's up at Awful Pit and Kressel's Crossing. They've, they, no one has sent even a squad of people up there to say, hey, let's see if we can go steal something. Well, th this is the thing, I was, oh, okay, so we do have a small NC force perhaps getting set up at Roothouse Distillery. I just wanted to see what was going on here. It doesn't look like there's any serious numbers, however. It just seems like an empty base. Most of the number of population seems to be too close to attack and storage. That's why it shows as, n n as many as there are. The Terran Republic, however, they're chipping away at Broken Vale, and Broken Vale is one of those bases where everybody gets a turn because it's a really easy base to flip. Uh, we're going to go it's, over there it's now. It's such a difficult base to defend. You're... Uh, you know, uh, you almost are in a different hex uh, when you spawn in to try and get to the point. And I'm trying to see if the TR have been sneaky with... Oh, twin Valkyries! They're, the Valkyries are trying to shoot down the NC infantry on the roof! Or they're maybe they're shooting at the side. I'm not sure how big this is going to go. One Valkyrie's burning, he's flipping. Where's he going? 
Oh, he bails and gets out just in time. Smoke has been laid on the roof. The capture point has been retaken by the new conglomerate. Looks like they've got the roof. Looks like I'm seeing lots of dead Terran Republic markers. Ah, oh, the new conglomerate have made a save and they've got the capture point back. So Broken Veil has been saved by the NC. And Red's grenades are going to go out, but... You can see just how quickly those Valkyries die. The, the Valkyrie is a real risk. It is, uh, it's, a, it's a great little uh, platform to drop small groups of six people onto a point, but it is incredibly weak. Wow, or... Somebody got a Sundra right up to the capture point. The NC's managed to get a Sunday right up to the capture point. I've never seen that before up here. Way out from the vehicle base. So that's a huge advantage for the defenders because of the no deployment field for attackers. It, it almost negates the um, attacker's bonus of Broken Veil due to the distance from the... Oh, and I say that, and here comes a Valkyrie. The one thing a Valkyrie's good at, and that's Sundra killing drop-ins. Beautiful Valkyrie play there as it bumped my observer camera out of the way. And it kills off the Sunder that was being extremely effective at close reinforcement times on the capture point at Broken Veil Garrison. That is, that is what the Valkyrie excels at. Dropping six people with tank mines on a Sunder on a hard point and just taking it out instantaneously. You don't, need to, you don't need it to survive that long. You just need it to survive long enough to get your guys over what you want to take out. Problem is, the NC at the moment for Broken Veil Garrison, they're too well trenched in. There's too many people at the point. The Terran Republic doesn't have kind of like a... a a distance and they're just dropping kind of people in piecemeal at the moment so it was a nice attempt at Broken Veil but they're gonna have to come back and think again I mean they're outnumbered 70% to 30 so uh, so if we have a look at the line again you're right no fighting at Kessel's Crossing none at Awful Pit I guess that's just not popular the fighting still going at Hay Dock kind of back and forth small numbers at Construction Snap Beta those forces ready to go on uh, the bio lab is 50-50 population numbers uh, Nason's Defiance, Hurricane no one really Western going on. Pass was just resecured by the NC. Which uh, one? With about a minute left to go. Hurricane Western Pass. Uh, there was a very large VS uh, population here, but the population evened out, and the, the NC came and dropped via Galaxy directly onto the point to, to swap this back in their favor again. See, the Terran Republic's abandoned Nettlemire Gardens. They, they lost their attack on Bullock Foundry, and they're abandoning Nettlemire Gardens. I wonder what they're going for. Perhaps they're going for Ixip Southern Pass, and it'll be a base trade for Southern Pass for Nettlemire, but the problem is Nettlemire is a quicker cap than Southern, so it does give them the option to redeploy. I personally am going to go to Roothouse Distillery in the southern lane uh, to see the VSNC and how that's going, because there's very large 96 plus numbers going on at this base. You know, one of the other things we haven't seen yet is, it, even though it's been several minutes now since they could pull ESFs, I have not seen any large roving bands of ESFs. I'm going to go uh, around the continent. That's something that it's it's difficult as a pilot in Hassan to get mass groups of air through the trees, but if you can do it, if you have good enough pilot skill, air is what really... It just is a, It's a force multiplier like none other in this game. If you can get your dedicated air force in and start ground pounding, you can take bases that you really have no business taking with the population that you have. There's a tight little new conglomerate defense going at the capture point of Roothouse Distillery. They've done a really good job at keeping the Vanu Sovereignty Forces outside of the double doors on the capture point. But with 70 seconds to go, I can't help but feel that the Vanu Sovereignty should just be able to force their way in. And with consumables and the close quarter combat that is inside a capture point like this, yeah, here goes Max charges in. Oh, there's a counter NC Max. He's chasing after him. Hey, bro, where are you going? Come back! Uh, oh, they there. double kill each other! No way! Was that a double punch or were they double rocketed? Oh, the Max is down. Capture point, however, it has been taken back. The Vanu Sovereignty. They've got the cap point. They're pushing to large stairs. A lot of smoke. I'm trying really hard to see what's going on. I don't want to get the observer camera. On the extra re reinforcements and maxes, and um, okay, we got some zombie grenades going off. Let's see what's going on here. I think though, you know, the VS sovereignty, the Vanu sovereignty's got their self control of the base, so they've made another save in the south. And well, they've got 65%. Uh, just as I said, hey, I wonder where the air forces are. The NC air force showed up in mass. Uh, uh, Hurricane Western Pass. Hurricane Western Pass just absolutely dive bombing with rocket pods every oh. site. And look at this as well, we were talking about the base trade between Nettlemire Gardens and Nixtub Southern Pass, and, and you're right, it's this totally flipped. The TR just mega redeploys to Nettlemire Gardens and the VS mega redeploys to Nixtub Southern Pass, so both caps are then negated. There, there's a great deal of brinksmanship going on with Force Commanders at this point. You know, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, several layers of just simply redeploying. It isn't just enough to redeploy your people there. Maybe if you're attacking, you don't attack with the full amount you're going to. You only send 24 people there. Let them think you have a small force, and then as the time ticks down, you drop an entire platoon just to make sure it goes through. And as defenders, you can do the same thing. You can make somebody believe you're not coming back, 
until much later and then at the very very end drop something on now that they have their air forces up now that they can pull whatever vehicles you want you're going to see force commanders moving those assets around to try and and get this resecure also the last possible we're currently seeing uh, force commanders playing it safe rather than risk everything for the base you want we're seeing force commanders saving the bases they have and normally i would agree with that keep what you have then try and attack what you don't have but i would like to see the game of who plays chicken first you know you're staring down equal cap timers do you just go for it and take try and take the enemy base gambling that they may take your base and you lose the attack it's to be seen how that kind of plays out now it's another valkyrie i like the use of valkyries being used as short transports I'm not entirely sure what these uh, value forces are going to be able to pull off here. They're heavily outnumbered at Hurricane Westland Pass. I was just about to go to the Terran Republic lane. They actually just got popped there. Uh, VS now has 55% pop at Hurricane Western Pass. Oh, so fresh reinforcements then, because the cap timer is technically on uh, two and a half minutes if they were able to flip it back. But this is all upper floor fighting. I mean, yes, they've managed to hack the vehicle terminal, uh, sorry, the equipment terminal inside this uh, kind of building, and that just offered strength for consumables and max resupply. Okay, here's the Sunder. That's what I was talking about. They need a uh, spawn location. Case in point, a Sunder that's deployed. And they're bringing in extra reinforcements. This is another big play now by the Vanu Sovereignty against the new conglomerate. Uh, I've moved over to Ixitab power regulation on the VSTR front, and the VS have uh, brought Sunders onto the point with them here. This is something we talked about, the force multipliers of some of these vehicles, if you know how to drive them up here. However, they're very, very vulnerable to light assaults, and this guy's going to get C4 in just a moment. There are a lot of TR coming back in. This uh, last I looked was a 50-50 fight. So the Vanu Sovereignty's managed to get themselves Hurricane Western Pass. It's now in their hands. It's a three-minute base capture. They've got Sunders and Lightnings on the southeastern side of the base. It's to be seen what kind of response the new conglomerate pulls off here. The Vanu Sovereignty are beginning to get into sort of spawn room camping positions, keeping the enemy at bay at a distance. They've got 76% population. This is a big play right now by the Vanu Sovereignty. And at the same time, however, the Vanu Sovereignty is losing Hurricane Secure Storage. So they're gonna, you could see that the NC can afford to take Hurricane Secure Storage, then come back to Hurricane Western Pass. Let's go over to Secure Storage briefly and see what's going on. Also, Gurney Dam is one minute from capping uh, for the TR as well. We have Sunder Group Wars in the south. Looks like uh, NC Ah, uh, they're trying to take care of the VS Sundra on the underneath of the capture point. I love the fact that they're using uh, very irritating harasses as force multipliers with canister shotguns on the top. Capture point is 40 seconds to go. We don't see actually many NC forces inside the capture room, and they're being flanked from the other side, so it looks like VS forces may make a save. Harassers need to kind of rotate around if they want to be useful. Ah, we can see why this is the case now. There's a deployed VS Sunder on the western side, giving in fresh reinforcements. Much faster than the capture point at Hurricane Secure Storage. 40, 39 seconds at Gurney Dam, and the TR have managed to get a Sunder, a Bulldog Sunder, up onto the platform. That They're just hammering the VS who are trying to get down to those doors now. This looks like a much more secure hold from the TR at Gurney Dam than the last one we were looking at. And you the see VS the Sunder? To, to deal with the Sunder yet. It's still there. It's smoking. It's it's damaged, but it's not dead. A double Furies, though, just pounding away at the main entrance, the obvious one that everyone would want to run in. 19 seconds to go. Stealth Flash. What's he going to do? I saw that briefly. Right. Watching the other entrances. 11 seconds. It's time to run in. I don't care if you care about your life. You run inside now. We see a VS Infiltrator. Nope, he doesn't get anywhere. All the Terran Public, they're watching all the doors. They're watching all the entrances. I don't see how the VS can get in. They don't have enough time to throw the different flanks. Terran Republic takes Gurney down. Now it's up to them to clean up and see what they can do. Now, did the van... Having that, that force multiplier there, I really... Oh, the Sunder helped a lot, that's for sure, because they were coming across the one main bridge, they weren't using the spawn teleport from the rear, and it took them so much longer to make an uh, inflating flank around the capture point, they didn't have enough time then to push in. Now, the real thorn on the Terra Republic side now is Ixtab power regulation. If they can get Ixtab power regulation, it prevents them from being attacked in so many different directions. And if they can get Ixtab power regulation and Ixtab southern pass, it makes a far more homogenous front line for the TR, and it works greatly in their favor. Hurricane Western Pass, however, um, the storage was saved by the VS, and looks like the VS are going to actually capture Western Pass. Oh, I need to go over there and have a look. Six seconds to go. There are a lot of uh, NC who are coming across this bridge right now, though. Oh, but the Vanu Air Force is pounding away. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so we so we've now seen two uh, two different air forces, both the VS and the NC, at the same base too. Oh, but the Vanu Sovereignties are being pushed right to the capture point. We see the new conglomerate coming down to the lower platform. They are still being spammed galore by the Vanu Sovereignties air force, and this will probably the force multiply that will get them the base if it flips. We still see VS being able, with maxes and infantry, being able to hold the outskirts of the capture point. I don't think the new conglomerate can get in and make a save. That being said, there's a medic. There was a medic. Uh, there's our friendly little Spitfire turret being a valiant defender on the capture point. We're seeing more and more NC forces coming in now from the west. Oh, they've got Maxon on the point. Oh, it was so close. All oh, the VS4. Ah, oh, they're not going to get it now. It is a big save by so many explosives on the floor. It's a dangerous place to be this capture point. And we have those PPA. Uh those PPA sites that are just absolutely it was so work. close it would have been a much easier cap without it they're still hammering away with the PPAs you're right but the NC makes a save possibly well in fact is they're still at Hurricane Secure Storage as well but we can see that there's actually more numbers than you think at Hurricane Amp Station because this hex here that I'm showing in the minimap that's actually the capture point so the capture point isn't actually in the hex of Secure Storage so it can give misleading numbers when we're looking at the minimap Gurney Dam, the numbers have actually dropped off radically. I wonder where the tier is going. Mega, yes, Mega Force is being applied to Ixta Power Regulation. Now, if you're VS, do you try and save Ixta Power Regulation, or do you just give it up and say, you know what, it's too much hassle for its worth? At this point, I think the VS need to choose what they're going to save. They've been basically, it looks like, been being pushed by both empires right now. And with that, you can't, you don't have enough people to stop it. You need to choose as a command staff, hey, this is this is the line and no further, so that you can make a push later in the match. Only 30 minutes has passed. There's a lot of time left in this game to make comebacks and gain territory again. You know, choose what you want to save and stick with that. If you lose other stuff, it's not the end of the world right now. Plenty of sunders of the Terran Republic uh, extra power regulation, good force multipliers, a, th a huge pool, we're talking like a platoon plus, could probably force this, but it's, it requires the Vanu Sovereignty to make the decision. It looks like they've been applying numbers really at keeping Genesis Terraform plant from ticking down any further. They actually had to make a save on Mulek Foundry, but there was a cap going on there, so the Nellet Mar Gardens cap failed. The Mulek Foundry is being now attacked by the TR, but it's being saved with the VS. Genesis isn't really going anywhere at the moment, although it is technically halfway on a two base cap, so it could be quicker if they get all three capture points. Ixtab Southern, you can see fresh galaxies coming in, so we'll go there next, and it looks like the capture point for Ixtab Power Regulation is going to stay in the TR hands, and they're going to get this. Where are the VS numbers at the moment? Are they heavily engaged against the NC? Uh, they are. Uh, you know, they seem to be really keep on trying to push Tachyon, and they, they're back again at uh, Hurricane Western Pass. It's obvious that the amp station is a, a major, major focus from them. Uh, the, it's what they've made their entire play based on, and they just keep on going back, and unfortunately the NC know that now, and they can just wait until the last second and drop people on them. Well, it looks like Ixtab Power Regulation will stay here just in case. No, it's unlikely there's going to be a redeploy, especially with half a platoon here. We'll go to Ixtab Southern Pass, because Ixtab Southern Pass is another one of these bases where it actually favors the attacker fairly heavily, because if we go here, we'll see if they've done the same thing. It is actually possible to get a Sundra on the capture point deployed on this section here that I'm highlighting. Alternatively, a fallback capture point is this uh, section here. You can get Sundra, and you can be right on the capture point. Uh, are providing a significantly shorter reinforcement time for the attackers. It doesn't seem like they have any Sunders, they're just using reinforcement galaxies in the above the capture point. And the Vanu Sovereignty coming from the spawn room, they're not flying in, they're coming from the spawn room. They don't have enough forces. You have to wonder how organized perhaps certain outfits or factions are at the moment. It looks like the Terran Republic is going to pull a double play against the VS. They've got themselves Ixtab Power Regulation, they've got themselves Gurney Dam, and now they're going to get themselves Ixtab Southern Pass. And, and we can see that they've also doing Mulek Foundry's been reattacked. They have moved all of their forces here, and they're again the, the VS Air Force is here. They are trying to use those PPAs. Oh, check the map now. Redeployment side. Income the maxes. Income the reinforcements. The VS says no more. This is ours. They're making a play. They're making a nanite investment. We can see that they're pushing along the bridgeway. Forty seconds to go, though. Where did those Tier Ten Republic galaxies go? They need the firepower of those Bulldogs to suppress. They don't have the force multipliers. 30 seconds, easy. In comes Magrider forces and Sunder reemployments. Uh, this is a big play by the Vanu Sovereignty. If they don't get this cap point in 26 seconds, however, it'll be a big blunder, but I don't see that happen. In comes the first heavier assault. No, you didn't get to the capture point. Last defense now by the Terran Republic. No reinforcements. If I was Terran Republic commander, I'd send everything I have right now. Make sure this cap goes through. 
Astonishingly, it got to the 16 second marker, but finally the Vanu Sovereignty is pushed onto them and swarmed the capture point. It's not necessarily over, it's still a vulnerable cap point. Where did the TR go? They've left Genesis terraforming. They've only got a small force at Mulek Foundry. Did they go to, oh, big redeployment east on the can storage depot? And it's made a save there against the NC. Look at that, 96 plus. And that's, you know, you look at the, uh, the VS and NC front, you look at the TR and, and VS front, and huge changes since, uh, since we started this map. You look up at the northern front uh, between the NC and the, uh, the TR, and practically nothing's changed. Still, I think the TR probably dropped the ball slightly except Southern Pass. They did make a, a kind of a, a flinch redeploy, mega redeploy east in the can storage depot to make a save, and I get that, but they could have got an except Southern Pass. With better sun replacement, the galaxies still being in the air, and we see they're back, so they may actually redeploy in. It's not over yet because the TR is making a play to get this back, and they are beginning to bring reinforcements, but they could have gotten this first time round. <laughs> <laughs> the galaxies are running into each other! <laughs> Being bailed out of, and oh, well, but the problem is, is this time round, however, we can see that the uh, VS forces still have their scythes flying around in the air, and they've got air control. So if the Terran Republic come here, Sunders are going to be vulnerable. Case in point, this guy isn't going to live very long. And um, they don't have air control, and they don't have the ability to resupply in. So with, it's, uh, it's risky. With 30 minutes uh, uh, gone in the match, why don't you show some of the statistics that have, uh, that have happened here? Sure, I'm going to just fly over uh, Ruhouse Distillery and then I'll bring up some stats. And um, looking at the map right now, Mulak Foundry was being attacked by 1 to 12 TR. I couldn't find them. I suspect it was significantly less than a squad. And the VS had to deploy in 12 of 24 to come get them. And that's that's the issue with redeploy side is you can force significantly more than your number to come and deal with a base. Uh, you can be a single infiltrator and you can get an entire two squads to come after you. So within half an hour into the game, we are currently on 14 and a half thousand kills. Uh, we have almost a thousand TKs. Uh, moving on to the kill graph. We can see that the NC is slightly in the lead compared to the VS on the kill graph, and the Terran Republic is lagging ever so slightly behind. However, the Terran Republic is in the lead with 36%, and, the, and so it's it, kills don't show the whole picture. And you see that a lot, you know, the, the group who is in the lead tends to be the group who manages to get the most bodies in the point, and it's a valid tactic to basically say, platoon, we're charging to that point and die, we have medics who are going to chuck res grenades in there. Well, that doesn't get you killed, but that gets you the point, and that's... Oh man, what is terrifying in a lag environment? Four maxes using charge, warping around with, <laughs> with the anti-infantry guns just mauling apart. The attack in Ruhus Distiller just got annihilated with the four maxes, and... That's it, it's over. They got the capture point back and now they're beginning to push back to the um, Sunder from the NC. Oh, Hurricane's Western Pass, is that actually finally going to go now? So close, 20 seconds, it's come down this far before. Loading in, loading in, loading in. 15 seconds. What, did I go the to the wrong base? base? The VS do have the right, uh, the right amount of pop. 57.42 at Hurricane Western right now. Maxis and C4 and grenades in the cap point, trying to see where the NC is. Nowhere to be seen on one side, unless it's not rendering. Yeah, it's probably not rendering. No, they got it. Persistence, persistence, persistence. It pays off. And the Vanu Sovereignty finally gets a full defense on Hurricane Amp Station. And that opens up a potential attack to Fort Drexler, which is pretty tough, but possible. Ten Republic, however, has got the capture point up Ixab Southern Pass again, and they are actually now applying pressure, and they're 40 seconds away from their cap. We'll go see what's going on there. I'm here, and unfortunately the VS are trying that same trick again, and the, and the TR no this time. They have just oh, absolutely right. got everything trained on the spot where the VS are trying to cross that bridge. Oh, we're and just going to have a quick look at the... I'll finish off on the stats, by the way, sorry, because it was just going through. So we do have some uh, stats on the players. Uh, top outfits, if anyone are in the same... Top weapons, the Orion is still in the lead, followed by the Anchor, then the SV-88, followed by the Carve, NSWR. Frag Grenade is holding strong, and other ones. Uh, personally, when it comes to weapons, uh, although the Orion is really, really good, I like the uh, guns, the LMGs for heavy assault that have 200 bullet clips, because there's so many people to shoot at, it makes use of it. Ten Republic takes the base, good defense. 
And, you know, part of that was they moved their defense off the point. They weren't defending from the point this time. They were actually defending forward of the point. They were stopping the choke points where VS had to come through to get to them. And that's a huge thing. The only real defense against that is to come in and have to gal drop on your own point. And that's really difficult to do if you just spawned everyone into the to the uh, spawn room. Puna has just sent a frantic message to me probably ages ago. If, I don't know if someone's to double check that everything's okay with him. I will head down there. Generator repaired. So that's the strat. Sorry about that for the little delay. We're just looking at some things. Here's the map timeline, how things are going, and we can see that the Terran Republic, it started roughly around here, guys, from the beginning of the game, and the TR has just been in a progressive capping system right now, and they just captured Mulek Foundry as well. We just see that on the map as it updated. So the TR are pretty well dominating the southern front. The northern front isn't really going anywhere, and we can see that there's only really one or two big fights going on between the NC and TR, and everything else is going against the VS. And right now, this is playing into the Terran Republic's hand. They are up to 38% population. Now, is this going to backfire? Is the VS going to focus on the TR, and is the NC going to try and get a push in the north? Or is the Venu sovereignty going to collapse here? Because they got themselves a like foundry, Pushing on the tech plant is going to be very, very difficult, so it's to be seen how that plays out. Terran Republic really wants to get their hands on Genesis Terraform Plant. We can see that by the number of reinforcements and numbers and galaxies. They're playing hardball for this large outpost. If they can get this large outpost, Genesis Terraforming, it just pins down the entire front, because then there's nothing but small bases for the Vanu Sovereignty then to defend from. Gurney down, we see a small force in the Vanu Sovereignty is trying to capture. Root House Distillery, um, which was captured the Vanu Sovereignty, is being reattacked by the NNC, they keep persisting there. We see that the fight that was at Hurricane Western Pass is pursuing back to Fort Drexler, and Fort Drexler hack is actually going on. And with eight minutes, it's probably a two, three point cap. No, it's going to be a two point cap. And then we can also see that the NC is applying pressure to Hurricane Secure Storage. So I mean, the, it's swings and roundabouts. Everything's going on everywhere at the moment. Uh, right now. Yep. One of the things I wanted to do was I wanted to start hopping down and talking to our casters, and I figured we could go down to Poonanners and Hellfox first. Sure, let's do that then. Hey guys, so how's the uh, northern front been going on between the NC and TR? Hitting Skydock all night long. They've bounced around a couple other bases, but like it was in our last three-way battle, Hidden Skydock is the place to be. Constant oh, attacks, yeah. takes, defends, bounces, Max crashes on both sides. It is where the fight is. The sunken biolab. Atlantis will never rise again. <laughs> we can see that they've been sidestepped. There's a large number of NC forces that hit Stidock, but the Terran Republic has leapfrogged them onto construction site beta. Yeah, we see, we saw them pop in this construction site beta and they get pushed out. They pop in, push out, pop in, push out. Right now, it looks like they're doing a current takedown. And then what it is is the NC kind of wait for them to get around two minutes. And then they just rush in with everything they have and crush it. Oh. They crush it hard. It looks like oh. the TR have been more strategic and more methodical, though. Uh, uh, Poon Anders, I, uh, I'm going to bring this up. Yeah, construction site beta is pretty much falling to the TR because... Oh, I'm right in now, there. I'm looking at A-point right now. They have it locked down pretty good. But it's yes. going to be about sub two minutes. This is where you see it, about sub two minutes. I'm hearing proxy chat chatter. And this is where they try to wreck the base with a uh, They don't have reinforcements, they don't have the Sundra count we can see, because we can see they've got the reinforcements, but they're being surrounded slowly. They don't have air control, and the problem is this there capture point there. isn't... Oh, here they come, they're moving in with the Maxes already. The base. Yep. We'll the probably see a crash here at sub two minutes. It's, uh, I think it's yeah. actually worth your time to wait on construction site beta for these two minutes and actually see how this cap goes down. This is going to be fun. As you so many Maxes that? pulled. It is freaking awesome. This is going to be very tough to put you guys up A point. It's going to require a massive the, force. What would you say is the, the main tactic you've been seeing on the... This is lots of air, lots of vehicles. What, what have people been doing? It, uh, honestly, it's been harassers. Harassers, oh, yeah. really? I've been seeing lots of Sunderers. I've been seeing lots of Maxes, but harassers have been doing the clutches. Oh, my God! The TR have a Sunderer on A point and pick a construction side beta. The, the TR have actually tried on a few separate occasions. Get the Sunder inside. Hit all the engineers are rallying to it. They're doing repairs. Oh. That could be it. The fact is that oh, the Sunder's health though is constantly and chipped away. At. That needs to be at full health for when that crash comes in. Oh my God! Yes, they gotta get their engineers on it. They're pushing. Here comes the push. The gunners need to pay attention. They need to be firing in that death channel. 
There's the push. Oh, they came through the tunnel. Oh. It's a good push, but I don't think it's enough. Oh, the I'm carnage. The NC are on the ground, but the A point is flipping. Can the Maxes stop the camp? I think they can. Freedom has fallen this day. Let's give them a small, quiet evil yell. Can they come back? Can they make a save in the next 80 seconds? It doesn't seem the Sunder is being- Oh wow, the Sunder just went down! They have popped the Sunday. Sir Pinata down! But the TR have got a point locked down. They have so many people here, I can't even really count them. But it's a lot of maxes. They're, they're, not, they're not actively watching the tunnel. They're only watching the entrances. But it's, it's good. It's good. They got this. You know, if you fall sub two minutes and you do a crash and you lose, it's such a morale drop that you're almost guaranteed to lose the base. If I'm not there behind the NC yelling at them to what to do, they're, they're gonna, that's not going to happen. If they'd be a good TR capture for the Knights. Yeah, I mean, they they're all set up in the right positions. They're all right where they need to be. They've got all the points covered. The NC would really need a big surge of guys to break it. 45 seconds to go for the construction site beta. And you know it's the Eastern Can Storage Depot is going for the NC. Do you think the TR do a redeploy the instant they flip this and try and save Eastern Can Storage? Uh, they, I think they could have time. As long as, as long as this point does not get disrupted, then I think they would have... They might be able to get it within... The I don't think they'll have the time to save it. Honestly, I think they might be going for a trade. It's a long run on the Akan uh, substation. Running over their own mid and trying to run over a couple of NC. The NC are max crashing. NC. Oh max my! And there's galaxies above as well. All sides point to no. NC max crash as hard as they could. They got a couple more maxes lagging in, but I don't the think it's gonna happen. Jesus a couple of guys running to the point, but nobody's. Not enough infantry. No nuchin on the point. They got plenty. Oh, there's the nuch. Can they hold it down? They only got a handful of seconds left. Oh, and the freight rate is not on their side. Oh my. They still got the point. There's this one infiltrator. Oh, he's taking his cloak off. He's been spotted. Oh, he's down. It's over. it's over. That was a really good Oh, but it's still ticking down. Why is it still ticking down? Oh, it's not rendering everything. Oh, there we go. There we go. Almost, almost, oh my god. In five I seconds. know. I love these clutch plays. This is what Come makes on, Planet Oh, they need a Jesus Grenade! Where is my Jesus Grenade when I need one? The Max cannot cap the point! It's too late, that's it. Oh, my Jesus Grenade! Oh, oh, amazing. Oh, and again! Saving construction side beta! Nobody can stop the March of Freedom! They are the ones who bring that new conglomerate feel of shark god magic! <laughs> and uh, the Terran Republic just made a clutch save now on Easter Can Storage Depot as well. Oh, they're on the point! Eight seconds! There it goes. We all lost that bet. That's right. Well, thank oh, four you. seconds is enough NC! They're gonna get the base! Two seconds! The NC's always oh, flipping on two seconds! Easter Can Storage Depot! Oh, the shields are up. The shields are up. Did they save it? They saved Easter Can Storage Depot. They put the shields up and they saved oh. it on the two second marker. So, so two clutch saves by both factions. Wow. Right, yeah, well, um. Incredibly quick on moving people like that. You usually don't see a massive move like that when you lose a base, when you lose the cap. Nah, well, well, we'll leave you guys to it and we'll come back probably about an hour or so, but keep up the good work, guys. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah. I love that. This is so funny. Uh, right, let's go check out, um, because there's actually a cap going on at, uh, Brokenville Garrison, or that's a save, and that's a save by the NC, fair dues. Uh, Gurney Dam was going, Genesis Terraforming is ticking down, looks like the VS, the Va VS have actually taken back Mulek Foundry, they're applying pressure on Nettlemar Gardens, and Genesis Terraforming blank plant was going down in the favour of TR, but now they're at number 2 to 1. It looks like the TR don't have area of operations, they're actually freely removing their forces from the south to the north to the south to the north. And, uh, construction site beta, uh, no, it's 80%. They're not going to get that anymore. And the awful pit cap has been pushed back as well. How's the VSNC? Do you want to let's go to the uh, VSNC front, the uh, west front with Shock Diz and see what's going on there, shall we? Yeah. Uh, has 93 kills. 910 from VS has 83. And he's tied with 475. So a um, couple of guys kind of creeping up there. A couple of NC creeping up right now on the, uh, on the player leaderboard. On the outfit leaderboard, we're seeing...
You see backs. Those bigger outfits, of course, are going to have a lot more kills. Right now, you see kind of the... There's like four outfits right now that have like the 10 or under players. Um, future Crew leading them, my boys. The eight Future Crew infantry sitting at 427 and 123 with 2.99 KDR. They got to get that above three, man. <laughs> so anyway, that is how it's looking right now. And I'm actually going to look, too, at what's going on with the sorry about that i'm going to actually look at what's going on with our kill totals no not the kill total you going over all the stats yes i'm going over all the stats yeah because we're just watching the fight attack and surge uh why don't you tell us guys kind of a rundown what's been going on between the nc and vs on the southern front so right now the vs actually lost attack on storage early uh, to the NC, but they were able to get a bonus back with the Hurricane Western Pass. Um, that was a that was a nice cap, but they had to take about four or five tries to get that base back. Um, but the big story for this front is Hurricane Secure Storage went down to 25% NC in the hex. Um, a absolute gift for for the for the NC. The, the VS just gave that base away to the, to the Briggs NC guys, which was really, really cool to watch. Um, so the NC definitely have a bit of an advantage right now. Um, it looks like the VS have finally consolidated their forces right now and are going towards tack on storage. So that's we've actually seen, where I'm headed over right now. We've seen a couple of holds attack on. We thought there's no way the NC are going to get this back. And somehow, somehow they've done it two or three different times. Yeah. Yes, they have, and so we have another situation like that right now at Tack on Storage, where yes, they are entrenched, but don't let that <laughs> show anything right now because the NC have done a fantastic okay, job. Okay, they finally took my advice and got a sunder here under the point. Thank you, guys. Yes, that's that's exactly what they need to do. We we saw that in the north. Yeah, the Terran Republic brought a sunder in when they were trying to capture um, construction site Beta, and they got so close, so close, and that sunder stopped one big uh, max crash. And then they're such a powerful force multiplier. What oh, would yeah. you say the What would you say the tactics down here have been? Is it been mostly infantry, a lot of vehicle play, a lot of maxes? A lot it's of been a lot of infantry. We've not seen very much air. I mean, we've, we've seen a couple of situations where if the VS just had a little bit of air support, um, they could have taken bases, but they just they have not been pulling a whole lot of air. They have not at all. There's there's really not been much air. I've seen a lot of sky whales, a lot of galaxies rolling around with those MLG symbols on them, dropping people on points. Um, I've I've seen a few vanguards here and there that was mainly at the bigger bases, but really it's just been a lot of max crashing, like slight max crashing and a lot of infantry play, a lot of res grenades, a lot of just grenades in general, a lot of smoke, a lot of infantry check tactics on this front um, have definitely been going down and it, it might just be because of the types of players uh, that have been here for sure, but... Looking, looking, looking at some of the other ahead. fronts, well, just look. It looks like there's been a lot more ground made on the other two fronts, opposed to this one. There has yes. just been there have been some great attacks here, but there has been just better redeploy side. Um, well, and that, and that was a huge there, yeah. that attack on storage cap was a huge, huge thing because if it had not gone through, you know that you would have been basically sitting at Fort Drexler for the last hour, you know, just watching yeah. it go back and forth. And well, yeah. the VS did make, a, make an attempt on it. I don't, the, the NC have not even looked at Karen Station. No. And, and with good reason, because we all know that base is just a nightmare. You wouldn't go to Karen Station until you, the, if the NC took, for example, Rehouse Distillery and Vital Stockpile. They want to, you know, progress the line further. You wouldn't go straight into Karen Station where you're super vulnerable from all directions, would you? Right. No, absolutely not. And that, like this said, that is a nightmare of a base to attack. And so we have definitely seen that the NC have not been going for it, but have made a couple attempts on Roothouse Distillery. Uh, currently making an attempt on it right now with a small force, but I don't think it's going to last because I think the redeploying of the VS is going to get there. But oh, you at uh, Hurricane Secure Storage? The NC just dropped the galaxy on the capture point. They're getting it back with six seconds to go. Five seconds, they're going to get the point. Three seconds. Oh, they're going to lose the base. Clutch defense by the two last defenders on the point. Oh, and they get it. Nice. Those two guys got the base. NC were short by like one second, two seconds at most. Very good. So that was actually the base that I was seeing that the Briggs guys captured 25% in the hex uh, as NC. Just kind of, a, like I said, a gift 
that for they whatever just reason, that's Manu. that's the forgotten base. People are kind of taking it, but they're so they're focused so much more on you know Tacken and Hurricane Western Pass. We're seeing so much more back and forth there. Yes, we and it's have. so difficult to get from the spawn room to the point as well. It's almost something you have to attack from your own amp station to get the point back. It's that's almost the, the closer way to do it. Back at Tack on Storage, we see with 25 seconds to go. The VS, this is the real horrendous one. With that upper raised platform, is infinitely more defendable than any other construction site. I just don't see the VS losing tack on storage yeah. cap. I, I said this earlier, and then the NC came in with about 40 scat maxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, about was, less than 15 seconds left. 40 scat maxes, about 20 light assaults. They just That's so light. resource of intensive, though. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. This, this looks time, like it's going to be a VS cap, though. Yeah, and there you go, it goes through. One second. Semester 26 from Alcohol, all streamers, please refresh your pages. You now have player resolution. Player resolution. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to head uh, head out here. We'll be back, uh, visit with you guys in about an hour. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Well, that was informative uh, going on VSNC. Oh, and we do have player resolution. Look at that. We got names. Hooray. Right. So I guess we'll go over that later. This is hotfix on a hotfix. Oh, of course it is. Right, Nettlemire is being saved. I actually want to go see what's going on at Genesis now because that's been going on forever. Uh, it looks like Kessel's... Actually, Kessel's Crossing in the North is being attempted to be taken by the NC. They do have slight pop advantage there. I guess we'll drop into the um, final front, uh, the... Uh, well, one of the Eastern things front with Odin and we did that. Um, if you want to pop into the biolab and just see what that fight looks like, I mean, it, it, we haven't had a biolab fight yet in this uh, in this match, so I'll go up and check out Kessels and. Okay, I'm just at Kessels at the moment, see watching the guys. It doesn't really look like they'll be able to pull off much because looks like they've got spawns against them from the rear, and looks like their own spawns are going to get picked off. Hate Skydock is being attacked again, now two to one, and uh, TR. I don't know why you'd want to go for the biolab. Maybe it gives you options. I, I guess. Biolabs to me in server smash just feel like clingy girlfriends because the, you, once you capture them, you need to hold on to them every, otherwise you'll lose them in two minutes. Uh, so, and, you know, whoa, wow, okay. They're, they're ignoring what I thought they were going to do. They are in the lead and they are trying to expand their lead. Uh, and Hey, go for it. I mean, the more you grab, there's, there's an alternate theory of thought. Oh, light salt, trying to get some kills. There's an alternate theory of thought. Rather than playing it safe and smart and keep not expanding too much, if you can get your hands on as much as you can possibly get your hands on, go for it. Because when both factions double team you, and that will happen, you've got more territory to play with, you know, to stall time. Uh, TR has been holding these two points very, very tenaciously. Uh, NC has not really come back in to, to knock You're referring to the biolab? Uh, referring to the biolab. They hold B and C and they hold the gen room. I, really I think this is merely just a gen room hold. The number of maxes they've got, they're going to make a play for the SEU. Which is the uh, spawn control unit, if anyone's wondering. Once the shield goes down in uh, 7 seconds, they'll be able to trigger the SEU. And I believe, is that a 1 or 2 minute timer? Uh, I believe it's a 2 minute timer. Really? I've got a hunch of 60 seconds. I mean, I guess I was wrong. It's a long 60 seconds, if, even if it is. There you go. SEU is exposed. Here come the maxes. This is the play. And they can't get in the shields. Wait till the shields go down before you push. Uh, shields? The shields seem to The be shields? <laughs> Is this a bug? Did we just find a bug? Uh -oh. That's a big bug. The entire tactical play was resolved in that. Oh, oh snap, the shields go down, finally. Only 19 seconds lag right there. But it's too late. It's killed all the tier that are ready to push in. Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal. And now the NC makes the counterplay with the smoke. Uh, the, the main push by the TR has been broken because they were caught outside the shields. Whether or not it would have been successful is debatable, but that certainly did not help. <laughs> so we'll, uh, I'm going to go hop down to uh, the VS TR front and uh, let them know where we're coming to. There's no quit in cool. a TR hey guys, how y'all doing? Doing great. We're going to fight over at Gurney Dam right now, uh, and we have seen, for the most part, for the first hour, we have seen nothing but uh, good things happening. At least on the TR side, they have been able to push all the fighting over to Genesis Terraforming, and almost took it for uh, at one point there. But most of the fighting is going on between Genesis Terraforming Plant and Nettlemire Gardens. 
That's really only where we're seeing right now. We are seeing a little bit of a fight ramping up at Gurney Dam, which is really fun to see. But uh, things are going TR's way at this point. But of course, this is the only halfway mark. So we'll see what happens if the VS are able to, to push sure. it back in a second. Has the TR at any point tried to attack Outpost Lambda in force? Because before in the no. Fervis three-way, Genesis Terraform plant was taken. And then there was opportunities at SRP Hydroponics and Mulek Pass. Um, you can only push so far to Mulek Tech Plant, and we see that Mulek Foundry is flipping back and forth. Uh, for me, the TR might choose to go from Gurney down to Outpost Lambda, but it's not really a thing now. Yeah, so it looks well, like they've actually, been trying some ghost capping there from time yeah, to time, but nothing, but, nothing in force. Yeah, it's been it, Gurney's been contested most of the time; just kind of goes back and forth. Um, nothing super serious, but uh, I think it's been just yeah. enough to keep Outpost Lambda pretty much off limits for most say, of the time. I was going to say, we're heading back to uh, to Genesis Terraforming right now, and I was going to say, if you're TR, I think you're you're totally happy with where things are at right now. You know, at, at some point, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. Yeah, TR are definitely in control of this front uh, pretty solidly. The VS are on the defensive. They're trying to they're trying to push back at, at Gurney, but getting shut down. They're trying to push at Nettlemire, getting shut down, and they're just trying to hold on to Genesis. Tr are keeping the pressure there. Yeah, all you need all you need to do is um, is basically like we were talking about earlier. All all the Tr need to do is just keep one point in contention at Genesis Terraforming, and they're good. You know, if they can continue doing that and just keep the pressure on, then there's no way that. You know, any of their other bases are going to get contested, which is great for them. Obviously, it's probably a very big headache for for the VS, though. What would you say the the main tactic is down here? Have you seen a lot of maxes? Have you seen a lot of grenades? A lot of gal drops. What? Gals. Gal drops. Yeah. Gals. Gals and more gals. We see gals coming in from every angle, just hovering over uh, hovering over points, just you know, using them as mobile spawn units. Yeah, the Terrans have mostly been having a lot of galaxies, and every now and then we'll see the VS come in with uh, with a Scythe Swarm to take out the take out the galaxies. We also see TR pulling a lot of hacked out Sunders from various bases, and they'll, uh, they'll have a big pile of Sunders, and every now and then you'll see a small screen. Oh, somebody's bought the galaxy horn. <laughs> Someone's got the gal whale horn, yeah. This is uh, actually the first time that Genesis Terraforming has been completely capped back in probably a good 20 minutes, I would say. Yep, And Easy. And VS have back capped all the way up to... Uh, have finally been able to back cap at Eastern. Yep. Eastern we're substation, fighting at Eastern again, which we haven't seen probably the last half hour. Looks like the from looking at the population of the territory, even though the NC's got thirty one percent, it looks like the VS is making more progress against the NC. The TR significantly making more progress against the VS, and in the north, it doesn't really look like the front's going anywhere. Uh, do you yeah, think this will back? There. I mean, TR's winning, that's great, but ultimately it's the score that matters at the end, right? Do you think the TR's going to get double teamed or continue like this? I think if you can keep the pressure on, if they can secure their borders and make focus all the fighting on Genesis terraforming, then no matter what the VS want to do, they can't push out. You know, if you can if you can keep the fight there, then the TR are in, good, in, in a good spot. But once you let them yeah, actually push out of Genesis Terraforming, that's when things get tricky. You can actually start getting your amp station starting to, to get pressure on it. You can start getting uh, pressure pushed from up to the north at, like they're doing right now at Eastern Substation. So right now, if I'm TR, I just want to keep one point in contention over at, at Genesis and shore everything up. And if I'm Just to keep them off the Eastern and the except Southern, yeah. He's... Uh... Oh, a lot of TR had to show up to Gurney to hold that one down. This TR are probably moving on to Eastern pretty soon. Or do you, would you say let the timer run on Eastern? Because it looks like they've got forces there picking off the Sunders at 50-50. Nettlemar needs attention. That's the key of the moment. Yep. It's, it, it, yeah. it's, one, of the, it's one of those things where you can, you know, you can kind of, because the bases are so close together, you can kind of just, you know, keep a gal up and go from spot to spot, you know, dropping out Sunders and stuff like that. But we are seeing a, a pretty big response from the TR. We've got four or five Sunders uh, moving around to Eastern, trying to take things out. So I would assume that uh, within, you know, they do have two and a half minutes to retake this point, um, unless the VS come back in and uh, and push them out, I would assume that they'll be able to actually hold. Seems like an equal distribution. There is one hour VS remaining in the here. alert. One hour remaining. It looks like uh, VS lost all their spawn points at, uh, at Eastern, uh, but there's a good chunk of them still in there. They're going to need to push in with some maxes and 
Yeah, I'm actually heading over to Nettlemire. I've never seen a 96 plus fight at Nettlemire Gardens. In <laughs> really? With 60 seconds to go, it's getting close. Uh, we're we're going to be gonna see some ziggurat fighting real soon. So yeah, I mean, we are seeing it's, ha it's halfway, you know, the exact same thing we saw last time. You, know, you don't want to get too far ahead once uh, once people start picking up and noticing. You know, you go after the guy and, you know, you get that... that uh, TR makes the flank from the west side. Speaking of Alpha's Lambda, there are a lot of TR in Vestibara right now. So there are, that's interesting, we can like check out. Contested as well. Yeah, I'm watching if, if they can get Gardens, Lambda, then going crazy. that opens up a lot. Uh, I have well, a, well, a if, question. If I'm t yeah, if I'm TR, is, is it better to, like, say, don't even worry about going on that side and just try and keep the pressure on Nettlemire Gardens, or, pardon me, Nettlemire Gardens and Genesis Terraforming, you can keep that front and just kind of hold on to what you have and make sure the NC don't, don't press on you. I have a question from Lauren, uh, base design wise. You know, when when you design these bases, is it is it part of the thought process of maybe making the defenders pull a defensive sunder to to allow them to flank a different way to the point, or are you trying to keep all of the uh, the people flowing between the spawn rooms and the point and, and have a good base flow that way? Because that's all, all the way we see a point pull be broken is the defenders will set up a sunder at a different angle to allow them to to come in and sweep the guys off. Well, I think a lot of it's just about variety and having different ways you take different different bases and having each one kind of being a unique experience and unique strategy. Um, but it, certainly the, I've seen different one, different strategies employed that way where you expect to have a defensive Sunday, like uh, Nason's Defiance, for example. If you pull a defensive Sunday and put it on the south side, it makes it a lot easier to, to defend that base. Um, and then, of course, that gives an objective for the attackers to take out. Um, something like uh, Gurney Dan. Uh, pulling one out will absolutely help you in that one to get around because it's a mm -hmm. long run from the spawn room areas uh, to the point Gurney Dam. So it, it, it definitely varies. But yeah, that's stuff that, that gets thought about. Okay. The Terra Republic were pushed off the capture point at Lambda, but it looks like they're heavily contesting it. They still have the spawn sunder on the west side. It's vulnerable because it's the only one, but they have got 60% population, and it looks like they're taking the point back ever so slightly. So they are committing numbers, but the problem is they're forcing their hand at outpost Lambda when those numbers could be used at Nettlemar because the VS have got the point back. So they're going to yeah, lose the base for no guarantee. Yeah, I'm actually uh, I'm actually here at Nettlemeyer Gardens, and I do not think that the TR are going to be able to do this in 10 seconds. They are way yeah. too far away from the point. There's well, plenty of maxes staring them down. Well, the point is, is that Nettlemeyer is actually, if you lose it, it's not that big of a deal because it doesn't open up any new lattice links. If they manage to take out both Landa, they open up two more places, or well, a net of one more place they can attack the BS. So it it, it hurts the defense more for them to lose uh, Lambda than they gain by getting Nettlemeyer. There was a last second attempt at Nettlemeyer with TR Maxes, and unfortunately they just didn't kill enough people. Uh, we're going to see some uh, TR manage to get onto the point here, but now, unfortunately, they have to try and do their own point hold to get the base back, and I just don't think they have enough people here. Yeah, we might see some action at the Ziggurat pretty soon. That place is a real meat grinder. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, we're going to leave you guys be, so keep the good job, because we're going to go north north and check out what's going with the NC at Awful Pit and Construction Site Beta. So uh, keep the good guys, and uh, we'll catch you in just before the end of the game. Alright, All right. have fun. Alright, Red, I'm going to head over to Awful Pit, because I actually saw a fight going on in the north, and I was like, ooh, fight in the north, let's see what's going on there. I'm heading to Roothouse Distillery, which looks like it might be being saved by the VS. Uh, I'll, hopefully I can get over there and tell you what's been going on. See Vanu, uh, sorry, we see new conglomerate air forces surrounding the capture point. Terran Republic's got a brig sunder for spawning guys in. Capture point's been contested. Oh, too many NC coming in now with one minute to go in the base capture. They've taken the capture point back. And we don't see a deployed sunder. So it was a nice push. But we do have to actually deploy sunders further to the east. But the NC's got themselves set up the capture point. This is a horrendous capture point to take though. Tiny little building in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by vehicles. Oh, look at this deployment sunder by the NC, right by the capture point. This gives an example of how hard it is to take this base. I got to uh, Roothouse Distillery after the VS had already made the push in mass onto the point, and all the NC surviving that I could see were two liberators who were just desperately trying to fire their Daltons through the door and take them <laughs> out. They couldn't do anything. Oh, I think it's a couple of Briggs stragglers, perhaps. Um, yeah, this is a couple of Briggs TR. Uh, it's still trying to apply some pressure on the capture point at Awful Pit, but they are at number 60 to 40. And there's that defensive Sunder on the capture point by the NC gives them so much advantage. Uh, but this is a secondary attack. There is actually another attack going at Strike Site Beta. So the longer the Briggs guys can hold larger numbers of NC at Awful Pit, it will work in their favor when it comes to the Construction Site Beta capture. 
currently going on um, just further to the south. The Eastern Storage, Account Storage Depot, the TR Overpop, they need to move some of that 70% as quickly as they can to some of their bases in the north if they want to do the attack there. The Woodman ASC cap's gone through and make a save. Maybe have an infiltrator doing a reverse cap on Akan Southern Labs when it goes through just to make sure that Woodman can't go through, but those numbers can also be redeployed and used in the north, Construction Site Beta for example, because they're already outnumbered 60 to 40 at Construction Site Beta while they're trying to get that base capture. But this is kind of like force commandery stuff, you know, force redeployments, and we can already see the NC's got air control, and they're uh, kind of redeploying in, and oh, they have the outside area. I'm not entirely sure the TR can hold on here. Same case as last time, they did get the Double Fury Sundra inside on the capture point at Construct Site Beta. Uh, it's lower numbers than it was before. They're all really holding one upper platform, so one good redeployment by the NC, like they did in the past, it will easily be able to force their way through the tunnels to get to the capture point. We see the small TR capture force, they are going for the Cannes Southern Labs from the Northern Line, so that's fair enough. Um, still a large number of Terran Republic at Eastern Accounts Storage Depot, they may be choosing to go to Biolab next. It took two, it took an hour, but the VS finally got connection to Fort Drexler, and they do not want to give it up, they have all Wow, the they really are going hardcore at that, yeah. And the Ruiz Distillery, they've got population there as well. Look, there's 1224 at Rusty Bent, not at Fort Drexler. I just saw in Yell Chat the NC say VS have at least 200 people here. They have to be doing the math in their head, knowing how many people they sent, and then looking at the pie graph and saying, well, that's how many the VS got here. <laughs> wow, that's that's huge. But then again, if you want to commit those numbers, the value is we've seen the Terran Republic trying to take um, the large outposts on the eastern front, which is Genesis Terraform plant, and never quite getting there. VS are playing a huge hand here trying to get Fort Drexler. They've got all three capture points. They're surrounding the spawns as much as they can and they know the value of this base. If I lose a couple of small outposts for the cost of getting Fort Drexler, that's fine. I can get the small outposts back. If I'm going to lose Hurricane Secure Storage, doesn't matter. I can get it back. Fort Drexler just opens the door to the Gahanan Eastern Gatehouse, to the Iron Quay, and then there's nothing but small bases leading all the way into the interior of the NC. This has got to be a crucial top priority base for the new conglomerate. It, it is simply the bulwark bastion that prevents you from hitting into your interiors. And... Wow, and we just see that the VS numbers are in force, covering all the main entry points. Lots of Sunders virtually on the doorstep of the kill. Look at this, the Sunders right on the doorstep of the cap, of the spawn room. That NC Galaxy just dropped in. It's trying to take out the Sunder. The, the, instead of dropping on the points, they're trying to blow up the Sunders. It's a great move. It's too late, not in six seconds. You need to get a capture point to stall. If you get one capture point, you can stall an extra couple of minutes out. And the capture points aren't hard, they're double buildings. You can get inside and look inside. Well, what's almost on the Bravo cap point? Nothing. This, oh, wait, uh, never mind. Rendering time. A squad. There is a squad. <laughs> There's one new conglomerate light assault trying his best, but no, he's picked off. We can see extra new conglomerate reinforcements trying to make a play on the Bravo capture point, but you're right, there must be a tremendous amount of Vanu sovereignty just making the play of the game right now for Fort Drexler. 44 seconds. I mean, the, the NC could be coming in, but I just don't see anything that's going to have it happen. Oh, here... Uh, is that it? Nope, that was a VS Galaxy that was trying to come in. I'm trying to see if there's any Galaxy support from the NC coming. I just don't see any. It's really the only way they're going to be able to get a couple points back in time. Uh, I'm just looking at Alpha's well covered. Another NC Galaxy. Wow, it tried to belly ram the guy in the ground. Did it have anyone on it? No, and he just blew up. Okay, so that, that belly ram on the Galaxy in the roof of A failed. Look at the lasher fire from the Alpha capture point. It's Disco Sex and Lasers currently going on at Fort Drexler. All firing into the spawn room. It's probably the best lag inducing weapon that the Vanu Sovereignty has in their arsenal at the moment. NC are making a huge push to A. They managed to get B flashing. This is the final resecure. There's the population numbers. NC still only 42%. They do not have the numbers. Yes, they got Hurricane secure storage in the north, but that doesn't mean they're going to save Drexler. Capture points back in the hands. Six seconds to go. Large outpost. First one of the game is going to fall, and it's going to go in favor of VS. <laughs> Yell chat praises Vanu. There we go. A large outpost of Fort Drexler. That is a huge, huge win on this front line here.
Oh, check out... Oh, um, now, the problem is that was a huge number thing. Uh, very, very, very large population sink was going on there. Now, it's fortunate because the T are actually more occupied. They've actually took Awful Pit. I can't believe it. We missed it. They took the Awful Pit. It, it they, just happened just a moment ago. Uh, they were, they're fighting a beta. So the TR at the moment is fighting the NC, which is why they're not capitalizing anywhere else, except from Outpost Lambda, which is currently going on. So does this NC... Sorry, does the value sovereignty continue the pressure on the NC, or do they come back and save Lambda? Because Lambda is, is similar in that... It it will allow uh, access to the VS interior if they don't come back and make a save. And with 70 seconds to go, they have time. And we can see them pulling out Sunderers and some uh, numbers coming to the capture point. The Terran Republic ideally wants to hold this upper balcony section, but the VS is using their best lag weapon they have, which is the Lasher, because it's just of an area effect um, LMG. Extra max support coming in, they've got themselves the bridge weight, they're right at the doorway, they're lashering the living nuts out of the capture room. TR's pushed back to the back wall, far too many in one corner, one grenade or some. oh one max, here we come, close quarter combat. He's gonna pick everybody off, no Terra Republic maxes, and oh in 30 seconds, there was no Terra Republic maxes, now this could have been an attack of opportunity, and we can see the Terra Republic's also playing their hand now at Nettlemar Gardens. Uh, they're gonna have to make a save at Ixum Southern Pass and Eastern Substation, so right now the Terran Republic isn't really making much advantage. Oh, and we can see the Iron Quay is under attack. So there's 50-50 numbers going Iron Quay, so the VS are not stopping. They're applying pressure where they can. It looks like they're trying to get their hands back at Hurricane Secure Storage. The cap is actually over two hexes, so we see it's probably 50-50 at Hurricane Storage at Hurricane Secure Storage, and Iron Quay is actually growing in the number of VS. They want to make the play now against the NC. Let me go check this out. Here we are over Iron Quay. Where did you head to? I'm over Iron Quay at the moment, deep in NC territory, where the Vanu sovereignty, as we wait for it to load, is currently on 60% against 40. Doesn't look it's like there's a lot of fighting going on. Maybe we just go check, see if anything's rendering. And that's a, that's a huge benefit of getting Fort Drexler. There is so much territory that they can take that's much easier to take than Fort Drexler. That's the real coup of taking that base. Uh, you know, just look at all the single cap point bases to the north of it. You have Iron Quay, you have Construction Site Alpha, Wainwright. You know, I mean, if they wanted to, they could march right up to the warp gate if the, if the NC don't come in and stop them right now. So it's actually only a small two squads going on at Iron Quay, but it's enough to be a nuisance. They've got themselves actually kind of niftingly setting up watching the exit points of the spawn room, and they're not moving, so I don't see them being picked up at all. Watching their flanks. A proper uh, NC uh, resecure, like reinforcements, would make the difference here. Possibly Vanu Sovereignty reinforcements coming in the form of a galaxy. We'll wait and see, because if I was uh, VS, I wouldn't show my full hands here, Iron Quay. I would wait till the defenders, i.e. the new conglomerate, come in and make the save, and then I would send in my reinforcements. Maybe even have the... Sorry, good. We've seen the VS get double teamed at the beginning. It definitely seems like everyone's pushing on the uh, the NC right now. And what does that tell you what's going to happen at the end? Everyone, Everyone pushes TR. TR. Yeah, so the the real thing for the TR is how much territory can you grab n right now and how much of it can you defend? Well, they've the got a bit against the NC. I can Sun Labs go a long way, but they're constantly in pushback. The, the Cam Biolab seems to be the red, or the, the, the blue line, as it were, for the NC. They won't let that go. Uh, Awful Pit is realistically only one base that they've lost in the north, so it's been fairly static in the north. It's all been going on, however, along the southern front between the NCVS and VSTR. I actually have moved back over to Nettlemar Gardens uh, to look at this. It, even though the VS have population here, oh, never mind. They just got the point back. Uh, it seemed like the the TR had a nice little point hold going, but uh, just before I got here, they got pushed out, and the VS are actually foot zerging to their uh, spawn right now. I'm going to clear this out. And uh, we have 50 percent. It's 50-50 right now, and it, I'm one of the observers, possibly with other people. This is why it's not exactly 50-50. And we can see that an Iron Quay. It, the NCs push back the capture point and they're going to slowly be pushing back to the Sunders have taken quite a bit of damage uh, and they're, they're saving the capture point so the Iron Quay was a smaller push we see that the main VS thrust currently is to save Hurricane Secure Storage they've made the save on Outpost Lambda they're making the save on Root House Distillery and now they're making the save on Secure Storage the cap actually is 50-50 for Gahan Eastern Gatehouse so they are probing and saving at the same time not really making a big play anywhere that they want probably stabilising kind of where they are over the whole map 
We can see the capture point is also flicking back now in the hands of NC at Ghana and Eastern because it's only 50 50 numbers. If you really want to take a base, it has to be more than 50%. So I'm here at uh, Nam Ravine Overpass, which the TR have managed to get a little point hold on, which involves blowing up a generator so they can get to it. But it's uh, with 45 minutes remaining, why don't you uh, go over some more of the stats for the match? Sure. Oh, that Count Southern Labs has actually been made to save as well. Okay, so uh, we'll go over to the capture point at Hurricane's, Hurricane's Secure Storage, and we'll have a look at some of the uh, kills, deaths, and everything else going on. Alright, here we go. Looks like the Vanu Sovereignty has got themselves on the capture point. They've got a point of vehicles. Don't really see much NC. Looks like they're all at the far edge of the base. Right, now as far as unreinforcements in the galaxy. So total kills with 44 minutes to go. We are up to 34,000 kills so far. <laughs> there's been 36,000 deaths, which means there's been over 2,300 uh, 2, TKs. See, the kill graph is actually very close to call. All kind of numbers getting closely merged in. Around the 11,300 to 11,600 number. From the kill statistics, we see that the Vanu Sovereignty have actually got the top four spots. Uh, then comes only one Terran Republic, followed by a mix mash of NC and uh, VS. Uh, top, uh, no Outfitters are in top. Then comes some Emerald guys, some Connery guys, some Briggs NC, Cobalt TR, a uh, bunch of factions. And what is the top weapon? The Orion Reign Supreme. The Orion Reign Supreme. Quite a comfortable margin against the Anchor. Uh, unknown weapon! <laughs> it's doing quite well at 1394. Uh, SV-88, uh, Godsaw, MSWR, EM-6, TM Minigun, C4. And the Lasher is actually doing respectful at 634. It's really kind of a suppression weapon. At uh, Nam Ravine Overpass, the NC uh, did a, a very nifty resecure here. I actually don't know where they came from, but it's not they didn't come from the expected direction. There are there are uh, two doors that the defenders tend to come uh, when they resecure this, and I wonder if they spawned in uh, through their teleporter and kind of ran around behind because uh, the TR and uh, and myself, neither of us were expecting that. They uh, they both just well, the NC is now making a big big push of here can secure storage, forcing way along the bridge. And while we're doing this, what vehicle has the top kills? The Sunder, baby. Yes, the Sunder. And that's, you know, the, the Sunder is, it's a tank, you know, it's a tank with two guns and you can put it on a cap fight. Who wouldn't want one? Oh, that's an interesting cap, but what's up with the uh, map timeline, Maelstrom? Uh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Go fix it. Right, anyway, the NC is outside the capture point with 24 seconds to go. The VS are doing a very frantic kind of capture at the last second. They're trying to stall them outside, but the NC, ignoring the smoke, just charged the capture point. VS are desperately clinging onto the capture point with 15 seconds to go. They're still holding the inside, but too many NCs are running in. Light assault's on the point, but the too many VS still on the capture point. More and more NC are pushing in. Here comes the droves. Is that enough to capture the point yet? No, they still don't have enough numbers to flip the point. There's still more VS hanging in the back behind their max. The point, with three seconds to go, they're gonna get this. The NC's too late. They're not running inside. They're gonna be kept outside. Wow, the VS takes it. And the NC, it looked like they were so confident on the outside, but no. They must have got, oh, look at this counter flanking fire. Oh, by the VS watching those they're coming in, that must have made all the difference there, and they get the point. And it's just such a difficult base to take if you don't own the amp station. The amp station gives you the opportunity to park sunders in really great locations that are, frankly, almost a little bit closer, or if not closer, certainly easier to get to the point than the uh, the actual spawn room itself. And you know, we've talked about how that hex hides players. You know, you think it's only twelve and twenty-four, and really it's forty-eight because half of the population is is actually put into the hurricane amp station hex as well. Mm. And the VS now are trying to make a counter play. Um, they were going for except Southern Pass, but you see they're actually making a play now in Gurney Dam. So uh, from being pushed back, they are beginning to become resurgent. They're back to the same number of pop territory they had at the beginning of the game at thirty-two percent. NC is now suffering the brunt of being at twenty-nine percent, and the TR is at thirty-seven percent. But that doesn't tell the whole story because. The TR is actually taking territory from the VS, and the VS is taking territory from the NC, and the NC hasn't necessarily made any program against a t against the TR in the north. So, if you're NC right now, do you try and counter push the TR in the north, try and get hit Skydock or East Account Storage Depot or Woodman ASC, or what? Well, because it seems difficult because you're constantly under pressure by the VS in the south. 
It, it looks like they're pushing on Awful Pit, and really what they needed to do to gain territory is that Shack Tech Plant lane. It's the easiest place to get three three caps, and I'm sure that they know that, and basically we're saving it for this moment. 40 minutes left in the match. we got to gain as much territory as we can. we got to take it away from the TR. That is the place I think you're going to really see them push. Paid Sky Dock is a grind. It's been a grind all game. Not much is going to go on there. Same with the Biolab lane, but that Awful Pit... Uh, Kessels and uh, Shaq Fusion Lane. That, I think, is where you're going to see the NZ trying to push. Their big problem, as you said, though, is the South. they got to find some way to get territory out of the BS uh, down there as well. Maybe they're just going to move everyone over to the TR and say, hey, uh, you know, let's try and take it out of the leader and uh, and ignore the BS, just try and hold what we got. <laughs> a very laggy, a very, very huge max crash. I couldn't even see everything. That was insane. Just pushed on and corny dam ridiculous number of people and they made a save relatively late in the base capture um, so the Terra Republic makes a save at Gunny Dam, it is their southern linchpin against the VS keeping them essentially off nascent defense, actually there's a small new conglomerate force trying to force nascent defense at the moment and there's actually a very small Vanu force pushing Brokenville Garrison from behind so it's all going on, it's to be seen whether or not the VS decide to continue the pressure not only at Fort Drexler Iron Quay but go for Brokenville Garrison or they try and go for Rusty Bent Glaive, keeping them off Roothouse Distillery. You know, it's interesting. You look at the via, at the uh, NCTR lanes, and every single fight there is even on. It's 50-50 for the most part. Awful Pit, Hate Skydot, Eastacon, and uh, Masons. Oh, uh, Masons, I'm sorry. It, it was uh, even. It, the TR just replayed them to try and save that. But it's obvious that the two of them don't want to really fight each other right now. Um, Tell you so what. Fight at Gurney Dam is not over. The VS have come in with Sunder reinforcements and Harasser reinforcements. PP Harasser on the capture point, forced his way in. He's just driving around like a madman, running people over. PP is spamming. Alright, he's finally dead. But it's, it's there's so many people, it's impossible to render. There's so much lasher span going on. All the TR's been killed. The cap point still hasn't been flipped. Alright, not all the TR. Some still survivors clinging to cover from anywhere they can get their hands on. VS are outside in forces. They're now the dominant force outside the base. It would surround a cap building or sunken building as you want to describe it. Those PPA uh, sites really help clear out where the TR are pushing from, but unfortunately you do have to have people on the point. The, the VS have to get actual human beings down onto that point, and the PPAs can only stop the <laughs> A max with pounders just uh, punched another max into death. But here comes the VS, big forces, they finally push off the remaining end, uh, TR, they've got themselves the capture point back, only two minutes to go. The Terran Republic has already played their max resources hand, which means not enough time has passed for those people who pull maxes to pull fresh maxes because it costs 450 resources for a max. But it's to be seen whether or not the Terran Republic can actually come back here and make another save. Because they're outnumbered 60 to 40, whether that's fresh reinforcement, but at the same time, they're also losing Eastern Substation, so you have to make a call which base do I save. And at the same time, huge NC force attacking Woodman ASC, full pl half platoon, and another yeah, force attacking Eastern Storage uh, Pit and the Alpha Pit. We've seen the change. The change. Terran Republic are under attack from all directions now. They're uh, Look, they're doing an attack on Nettlemire of two squads. Is this really the time to be pushing out? Because you're under attack from everywhere. And this is, we were waiting for this switch to happen. It's actually... 36 minutes to go and the, it's happened. It's about six minutes early and the real danger here is whoever gets in the lead next, you, it, you know, it's like playing American football with a great quarterback on the bench. You want to you wanna score as late as possible. Give him as little time possible to get that, uh, get the extra points. And it's going to be the same thing here. If NC gets into the lead, if DS gets into the lead, they want to do it at the last possible second. It's just lasher, lasher, lasher. Even if you can't see anything, fire lasher. And it's working extremely well for the... I, I wouldn't even want to go anywhere near those doorways. There's no TR there, probably, but they're still firing lashers. They've even got the roof of the sunken depression building. Can they see bad guys? Doesn't matter. Fire more lashers. Going to brush your teeth in the morning? I don't care. Fire some lashers. That's, that's the current mentality from the Spandex Force. With one second left to go, it looks like the T oh the TR were so close to resecuring Awful Pit, but the NC managed to get an extra body on there at the last possible second, and the NC have recaptured Awful Pit, which is even though it's a one cap point base, the way it's set up, it is just such a grind. That is a real coup for them, allows them to push it push into much weaker bases heading to Shack Tech Plant now. I 
I'll tell you what, the VS might actually push into the lead right now because they're going to grab a number of bases from the Terran Republic now, so straight out flips. Seven seconds on Eastern Substation and six Seven seconds on Gurney Dam, yeah. I wonder if the TR can save either of these. No, they can't save Gurney Dam. Way too much lasher spam. East Falls and Gurney Falls. Just like that, the Terran Republic loses the lead, goes into second place, and the Vanner Sovereignty take the lead for the first time in this match. And they've got themselves a fairly decent position because they can still take Ziggurat, that's a takeable base, and Zot's Agricultural Lab, so they can get, and Ixtab Southern Pass. So there are, there's easy territory, I say easy, against the Terran Republic, Ixtab Power Regulation, soft bases that they can make pushes. The NC can get Woodman ASC, and that actually allows them to push all the way into single cap points, which they're currently doing, although they are kind of outnumbered, so we'll go Maybe warp over there quickly, take a look. What a huge swing there for the VS. And, and you had to think after that tack on, they lost the tack on fight really, really early in the match. This was something that was planned. They basically said, hey, don't lose past this, and we're going to push for whatever we want. And you remember how tenacious they were for that uh, Hurricane Western Pass. They would not give it up. And that was to allow them to push into that Fort Drexler thing. They could they could have another spot, uh, place to pull thunder from. They could get another spawn in. They didn't have to worry about that side. And then they just dumped everyone onto Drexler right at the end. And ever since that Drexler cap, they have just been on a roll, base after base after base. The NC forces at Woodman ASC, they are out popped, 27%. But with some exceptionally good use of maxes, they did get the cap point down really, really low. And when we were talking like 30 per seconds here, more so than probably should have gone. We can also see the Terran forces are pulling in galaxies and reinforcements for the base slightly to the north. The Akan... Here we go. We're at... is flipping right now. Oh, it was flipping. Oh, but NC reinforcements on the roof. Still 35 seconds. A drop on a drop. A T an NC drop on a TR drop. I wonder if that was planned or not. They're back on the capture point with 30 seconds to go. This is brutally close. The capture point was being flipped because TR Gal dropped on top of it, but a counter Gal drop by the NC. And that's caught the TR off guard. They're out pop 56 to 44, and it's gonna take time for the Terran Forces to spawn back in their galaxy, assuming they still have it, or a Valkyrie. No, the galaxy's gone. I, I tell you what, I think Easter Can Storage Depot is gonna go in hands of NC. Yeah. Oh, they come in from the outside. Couple of guys, I don't think it's enough for the capture point. There's not enough bodies. Res grenades, oh, NC Max is gonna make all the difference, right? Two seconds, one second, res grenade. New conglomerate gets it, and here comes the shields. Not enough people, you're right. And up till the last maybe uh, minute, uh, 30 seconds of that cap, it, the NC were vastly outpopulated here. It, it only turned into an even pop fight in the last 30 seconds or minute. Oh, and the pressure's continuing. The VS outpops the tier at the Ziggurat. The VS outpops the tier, or did, at uh, the uh, Sun Pass, the tier is now making a save. But they outpop the tier heavily, except power regulation. So the VS, they've got themselves Root House Distillery, hold that. They've got themselves Fort Drexler, under pressure by the NC, hold that. That's the ability that a large outpost, because the, the terrain is different. Fort Drexler is designed to defend against pushes from the north, not necessarily from the south. So it's working great into their favor there. So I think the VS has made as much of a push as they want against the NC, and now it's just holding forces, and everything else now is focused against the Terran Republic. And then in the north, you can see that the new conglomerate, they're pushing on Kessel's Crossing, small tinkering force that hates Skydock, but the main push was a Easter Can storage depot, and now that they've got that, will they go for Hate Skydock? I would have thought the best play you could do is maybe force Woodman ASC or something. Oh, what do you think there? I think I think that it's a little too late to be pushing three cap point bases unless you're really really desperate. I understand why the NC are pushing back at. There are easier bases to take, is what you're getting at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can walk right up to their tech plant. Even the tech plant is a single cap point base. If you manage to get up to Shack Tech Plant, you dump everyone on there. That yeah, it's a seven cap, uh, seven minute cap, but you only got to defend one point. I'd much rather go after that than go after a three cap point base this late. And Fort Drexler is uh, massively resecured by the VS. I just flew over here thinking maybe something was going on, and I can't imagine that these uh, VS won't just immediately redeploy a Roothouse Distillery and uh, and save that as well. Well, more lashers and more lashers currently going on. Upper platform at Ixta Power Regulation with spawn sunders surrounding the base. Oh wow, even double Cobalt sunders on the capture point, and then a Fury Fury being repaired. Double blockades. Uh, this double <laughs> Sandra 
taking tons of rocket fire from the spawn room of the, by the Terran Republic, but it is playing miraculously as a powerful force multiplier into the hands of the Vanu Sovereignty. They're taking the base slowly. 80 seconds to go. Terran Republic still got plenty of options. Alright, there goes the Sunder. 30 minutes, half an hour to go. See the Cobalt Sunder still making uh, use, but there it goes, it goes down. Terran Republic applying more pressure. It looks like they're beginning to get guys in the capture point. To population numbers, they outnumber the Vanu 70 60 to 40. I think it's really just, yeah, they've got numbers from the flank. Up in the far north at Kessel's Crossing, it's an even pop fight, and this is the whole thing. You know, it's basically been almost 50 50 fights everywhere. And this is a great base to try and hold, it's a, but it's also a great base for the defenders to try and, and set up some flanks and come from an unexpected angle to get onto the A-point. The TR are finally making their push onto the A-point to kick uh, the NC off here at Kessels, and there actually weren't a lot of maxes. I think we're, we're late enough in the match, we're starting to see resource starvation. Uh, it, it, the ability to pull those maxes, the ability to spam those grenades is becoming really, really no difficult as we get closer well, to the end of this match. And the thing is, the, v, the VS have kind of almost expended their push. The, the Terran Republic seems to be stabilizing along the front, possibly even trying to take Eastern Substation back. Ziggurat's being saved, the Southern Pass has been saved, except power regulation has been saved. Yes, they lost Gurney Dam. Uh, looks like they're making small token saves at Nason's Defiance. Um, Woodman ASC has been saved. They lost Econa Storage, uh, Eastern Akan Storage Depot, but that means they only need to defend now Hate Skydock. And Kessels is the linchpin in the north, which they need and to I, save. And I thought that the TR had taken this back, but the NC came back with a vengeance. I'm actually seeing Empire Specific Heavy versus Empire Specific Heavy here. The TR crashed in with lots of chain guns and lots of jackhammers just pushed them back off. Wow, and in fact, it's down in the south at Root House Distillery. The NC has a huge max force, very big resource play going on at Root House Distillery, and they're going to get it in 22 seconds, and the VS could be close to losing their lead here because the NC is going to get close. This is going to be razor close within one base, I think, uh, should the NC take Root House Distillery. And 11 seconds, 10 seconds, we look outside, there's just too much max, there's too much firepower for the NC. Um, not enough time, too many spawn options as well. And the, the VS TR, perhaps are a little bit too late. The TR managed to get a uh, secondary uh, spawn sunder into Kessel's Crossing. We were talking with Malorn about this. They basically put one opposite of where their spawn uh, is, and the NC just weren't prepared for that. They were all looking one direction, and uh, all the TR finally came in from the other direction and took this back at Kessel's. Well, new conglomerate, they get themselves Root House Distillery. They're trying to get Fort Drexler, but it's such a difficult base to take. It's a powerful defensive force for Hurricane Amp Station. The NCs actually, population-wise, they have a lot more population at Hurricane Secure Storage than it actually appears because looking at the two territories, they're close. Believe this or not, if the NC gets this, they're going to take the lead from being picked on and down to 21%. They've come back and they're about to hit 34% if they get Hurricane Secure Storage. Oh, but... Yep, 40 seconds to go. They've got the bridgeway. They don't necessarily have a flank. They don't have an additional sunder as far as I can see on the mini-map. But they're holding the bridge. Are the VS going to redeploy in? Not enough. I don't think they'll pull this off unless they... they, they 30 seconds to go. It's a long way to go. They need to have like some sort of fly-in or gal reinforcements. We can see the NC is actually bringing in additional reinforcements right now with uh, beacons and drops. I think the NC is going to take the lead in 19 seconds. What a turnaround. This main bridge, they have to be coming from another direction and they because they're just going to get slow. Oh, Sunder for the VS is coming in again on the west side like they've done before, but it's too little, too late. They're not set up, and even C4 and rockets are ready for them. NC's got this pinned down this time. VS are nowhere close to the capture point, and the base is going to fall for NC, and they're going to take the lead now and go up to 34%. There we go. NC takes the lead now. Is that the first time in the game they've taken the lead? That, I believe, is the first time in the game, and that means that this is something we never had happened in the other three-way, and it's very rare in, oh, our, but in our two ways. The thing is, though, the problem is the Vanu Sovereignty now, they're actually pushing Ixta Power Regulation with a minute to go, so I'm going to go there next. But they're also pushing Ixta Power, Southern pa Ixta Southern Pass, and that is a 96+. plus. That is a huge play. But at the same time, there is a massive Terran Republic force at Eastern Substation, and that could potentially redeploy to one of their being cap bases by the VS. So even though the NC's got this, if the TR takes something off the VS, they'll go up to 34% as well. You might actually have... Can we have a tie in this? You can't have a tie. There is no way to tie on uh, on Hassan, but you can have a last minute 
moment kind of uh, thing. Now, interestingly, at, uh, at Hurricane South, there were some VS galaxies that came in just a couple seconds too late. I think you'd already left the base by the Terra Republic saved Extant Power Reg, and it looks like they're going to get Southern, and I'm going to go have a look at Southern Pass. Uh, we'll actually tell you about Eastern Substation, that's probably more important. One of the big dangers of losing Roothouse Distillery for the VS is, yeah, they can save Fort Drexler, but it opened up tack on storage again. And we've been back there so many times in that base. And I just, I, I imagine as a VS on that lane, it's like, oh God, I didn't want to have to go back there. And now they're going to have to go and resecure that, that base again. I mean, you can see the Terran Republic forces, there's barely any Vanu. Barely any Vanu with 19 seconds to go on Eastern Substation. They've just given it up. There's not actually that many TR, assuming it's rendering correctly in terms of population numbers. Terran Republic actually left. They left Eastern Substation early to go back to um, Ixtab Southern Pass. The numbers are slightly growing, or no, Ixtab Power Regulation. So they realize they probably can't save Ixtab Southern Pass, and they've made a play for at least one base to save. So it looks like they'll get a base and make a base save as opposed to, well, if they pay attention, dude behind you. He's, he's stalling for time. The Terran Republic should have this base. The Oi, come back to the point. Come back to the... Dude, the point isn't yours. Come back to the point. There's so few Terran Republic they've given up on the capital Eastern Substation. Only like three guys can save this for the Vanu Sufferty. There we go. This guy knows what he's doing. Tech Sergeant Server Smash. He finally gets to the point and there he goes through. That was... That was... Sketchy, man. That could have gone either way because they gave that up. What was his number? Um... Uh, one, two, six. One, two, six. So, Eastern Substation falls back for the TR, and it looks like the VS are trying... Oh, but look, they've mega redeployed an extra power regulation, so they're yeah. just, they're going to take two bases anyway. And the thing is that Tacon Storage is still ticking down. I I'm wondering if they're trying to play these timers. They got two minutes left on Tacon, and only a minute ten left on Ixtab. It, that's cutting it awfully close. We've seen how tenacious it is to for point holds at Tacon. That may not be enough time to actually re redeploy those people over. You might have to send other VS forces to actually get that base. Uh, as this game has gone on, more and more heavy assaults have swapped from the Orion to the Lasher. It is just a Lasher party everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, when you think about it, is there a better place for it than here? You're no. Service Smash, Large Clip, Suppression Firepower. Yeah. At Tack on Storage, the NC have uh, Sunders up on the point, which is going to just make this even harder for the VS, and the VS have not deployed enough people in here. If uh, oh, Here comes another galaxy of VS trying to get onto the point. At this point, I think they need to be bringing in vehicles trying to get up there and take out. There's another uh, NC Sunder that's trying to get onto the point here. This is really, really dangerous. It's 116 left, and I don't know that there's enough uh, VS that are coming into the, to this base. It's 60-30, though, or 60-40. There's... Oh, okay, they're finally pulling those vehicles out. Oh, the Terran Republic's actually got 57%. That's a lot of grenades on the kill spam, but they're not going to make it in 7 seconds of that, or it's just being one a horrendous lag. They're running on the point. I mean, it's it's sketchy. I, I don't see everything going on. Oh, the number of grenades on the upper balcony, they killed everybody off. But there's too many Vanu sovereignties on the capture point. The TR gets there a few seconds too late. Again, um, Cobalt, Twin Cobalt Sunders must have made a helpful defense there. TR gets to the point about 5 seconds too late. They lose extra power regulation, and we are actually in a tied scenario. It is VS 34, NC 34, Terra Republic 31. I knew that would happen. So, please restart your, your stream overlays. You but that's not necessarily going to happen. Restart stream overlay. Yeah, you have capture, capture overlay now. The are we starting it? At 30 seconds, massively, massively redeployed to uh, the capture point of Tacon Storage and taken it back. Re they've taken it back? They have taken it back at, with about 30 seconds uh, remaining. That had to be uh, a resecure from uh, the other base that they were capturing. And they actually have tons of maxes. They saved their maxes to come in here and make this push. Uh, they managed to get it back from the NC. Yep, and we see that. a lot of NC on here. Now they're making counter push at Ruhouse Distillery as well. Uh, pff, wow, this this is possibly it's super close because right now the Terran Republic are the whipping boys. Everyone's picking the Terran Republic, sort of, and and they're in second place 
with 31%, but one base, and then against either the VS or NC, and they go into second place. And and the VS and the NC, if they want to take a base, they need to take it off each other. Oh, we're just watching as what's the flickering, there's more base saves and more base saves going on. 20 minutes to go in the match, guys. 20 minutes. Um, Gurney Dam. NC's making a play for Gurney Dam. Wow. Talk about being awkwardly out of position. Let's go check that out. Just looking for angles, looking for bases to apply pressure. We can see it's a galaxy drop in. I don't think it's a lot of people, but the fact is, stretch the VS as much as you can, see if you can get a base out of it. You know, this, uh, we saw that huge rush at 30 minutes. I think we're going to start seeing it now. As it comes down, when you come into that, you know, 12 minute moment, that 15 minute moment, that uh, eight minute moment, nine minute moment, right when you can start dropping on certain types of bases, you know, it, it, if you want to take a large facility or a, a three cap point base, you got to start going now. Uh, it's going to come down to eventually six minutes where that's about when you need to start getting onto a four minute cap base just to allow yourself the possibility of them flipping the point back and forth on you. The NC have made a 50-50 uh, uh, pop push onto Hurricane Amp Station that I think they shield broke in there. Yep, and we see there's uh, three minutes to go. This is a small NC force. Uh, they're applying pressure to Gurney Dam. They're applying pressure to Hurricane Amp Station with 18 minutes. Well, okay, shield. fair enough. They shield broke in. It's a, it's a small force. I'd say maybe a squad or two of NC here on the point. And they're losing their Sunders very quickly. So, unfortunately, I don't think this is going to last very long for them. And there's a Kessel Crossings. Yeah, there's a Kessel Crossings push going on. I'm going to go up to Kessel Crossings. I haven't really shown that all stream, right? Uh, but we are going to have to do a recap, probably when we get to around the 10-minute marker, to kind of go over the theory crafting here. It's... It's... Close. It's, 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 there's so much going on, it's impossible to call who gets this. Uh, you know, as I said this, the NC managed to pull two more Sunders, so they are still on the point here, and they have one outside, so the VS really do need to come here and, and deal with this right now. It, uh, I thought it was getting take, taken care of, but the v the NC are just absolutely resecuring themselves the uh, capture point of Hurricane Amp Station. This is interesting. The Terra Republic actually got motion sensors down on Kessel's Crossing, but I'm not seeing the NC in my minimap until I'm right on top of them. I think they might all have motion sensor on. I'm not entirely sure what that purpose that serves. Uh, perhaps it's the minimap not showing me actually accurate updates. Maybe it's because I'm in a vehicle, but... 50-50 doesn't look like there's reliable spawns. Although there's an NC Max, there's always an NC Max, and they're holding the point, I think the Terran Public's going to come in and take the point back in a sec. I just don't see enough reinforcements or support for the NC forces. Although, that being said... No, no, here we go. Heavy Assault kind of plank from the back. No. Those Sunders were finally taken care of at uh, Hurricane Amp Station, and the VS uh, came back down through the back elevators and have wiped the point clear. A really tenacious uh, point hold here from the NC. They uh, they lost their Sunders the first time, and they managed to pull a whole bunch of others that uh, I, it didn't look like they were going to be able to. It's a ferocious defense by the NC at Kessel's Crossing. They've actually got two to one numbers now. They're increasing their numbers, and I can only really see the TR numbers on the minimap. They're bringing in Maxes, and it uh, looks like Briggs forces are coming in. It's going longer than it should have done. This should have been saved around the two minute marker. Maybe the Terran Republic just doesn't have the forces, but it's a really well done play by the NC um, at the sections. Their maxes are being well nurtured and taken care of, engineer support, and they're just doing good flanking fire and cover for each other at this area. And they're just picking off the Terran Republic as they're coming in and not getting themselves exposed to the point where they can't be res themselves. I, bizarrely, I think the NC might actually get Kessel's Crossing. Unless the tier gets increasingly desperate, uh, they are losing this at 56%. They don't have the population. They've got vehicles on the outside. I, I don't even think the NC has a Sunder at this point. Oh, let's go have a look. 60, it's, well, 56-44 right now as far as in the NC's favor of population. But that base can swing so fast, you know, be looking for a, a TR Sunder to be on the opposite side of the base to allow them to spawn in. That's how they, that's how they beat them last time. Okay, so the NC Sunder finally goes down. They still got Valkyrie and a second Sunder getting set up. They still got the capture point. This is astonishing. The new conglomerate is going to get Kessel's Crossing. Now we might not have all the facts here from the minimap details, but the Terran Republic multiple times has been in the capture point. And is this it? Is this finally going to be it when they take the capture point back? A lot of dead NC here on the cap point. 18 seconds to go. Here come the Terran Republic Maxes. Now they're finally on the capture point. They don't have enough Puggy yet to flip the point, but they've got max support, picking off all the uh, new conglomerate squishies. 
12 seconds, 11 seconds. This is a lot closer than it should be. Finally, it flips with the Terran Republic. And they had to spawn in 45%. So if the map is accurate on Kessel's Crossing, then they did bring back a 50-50 fight, but it doesn't look like the ensign's got proper spawn options. Some reinforcements for NC dropping back in, perhaps from air. We see perhaps a squad coming in. Oh, but here they're getting flanked by the Terran Republics from the uh, east side. At the same moment that they were resecuring Kessels, the NC, uh, as the TR were resecuring Kessels, the NC resecured or tried to resecure a Roothouse Distillery. Unfortunately, they haven't taken out the spawns of the VS, so there are lots of scat maxes guarding this point now, but I'm waiting to see if the VS can manage to push in and, and just uh, take this cat point back. With 14 minutes to go, there has to be another base flip, right? I mean, the Terran Republic is making a big play in construction site beta currently in the north as we do have an overlay. They've made the save in Kessel's Crossing, but it still seems somewhat sketchy, although without spawns, I think the NC are going to give up and go back and save construction site beta. A Eastern Akan storage depot has a large NC force. That's going to be saved. Akan, Southern Labs, very low numbers, not really a serious attack. Broken Veil Garrison, large number of NC, probably only a small attacking force with the VS or TR, so that should, in theory, should be saved. Nason's Defiance is secure. Gurney Dam was taken, taken by the NC, what's going on? How did we miss that? I don't believe that. There we go. Yeah, yeah I missed it as well. Ixta uh, uh, power regulation, huge numbers of Terran Republic over a platoon at Ixta power regulation. They should get that. Ixta Southern Pass was being attacked by the TR, is now being saved by a platoon's worth of Vanu sovereignty. They could go to Ixta power regulation quite easily to make a save. There's a small number of Eastern substation of VS attacking the TR. Nettlemar Gardens, uh, two squads perhaps, one, two squads of VS making a save in Nettlemar. That's the Terran Republic out of the way. In terms of the new conglomerate VS uh, um, fight going on, Ruhas Distillery is still being saved by the NC, so that's good for them. Fort Drexler down to four minutes. Big play by the NC trying to get Fort Drexler back. And uh, they also made a save on uh, Hurricane Secure Storage. And the Terran Republic is doing Broken Veil. It, at Root House Distillery, it took an entire room of shotgun gorillas to get the VS off of here. Uh, so many so that they actually weren't able to flip the point, and you could hear them in proxy chat yelling for engineers and medics to come up to just help flip the point. But the NC looked like they have this now, and I think that they've taken care of a lot of the spawns that the VS were using to, re to come back and try and re-secure this point. And the new conglomerate forces that were at Kessel's Crossing, they came back and they've pushed off the Terran Republic that was at Construction Site Beta. So the next likely base, bizarrely, there's a tiny fight going at Broken Veil. Look at that. There must be like five people at Broken Veil. Go check that out. Can you go have a look at Ixta Power Regulation and see the likelihood of Terran Republic taking that base, please? All right, try not to be as jerky with the camera. Here we are. Uh, yeah, it's, so the, the point... Okay, a full squad of new conglomerate has come in to guarantee the save in Broken Veil. Actually, two plus squads, half a platoon plus, has come in and saved Broken Veil that could have been used elsewhere. And we've got half a squad saving a can Southern Labs. So there's like a whole platoon of new conglomerate just making some base saves on small distraction forces. Extra power the regulation heading there. over there. Yeah, Ixtop Power has a very nice TR setup here with uh, Sunderers guarding the exits, the likely exits for the VS. I don't see enough VS spawning in right now to even make a push. Uh, it's not quite the same thing. It's not the Lasher Disco Show, is it? <laughs> a Viper Lightning! Oh wait, there's a high explosive uh, HE Lightning. It's gone self onto the capture point. With Double Fury Sunderers, I like the Force Multipliers. Not seen the Lightning before, so that's kind of cute. Uh, he's kind of got his rear exposed to the uh, main spawn room Oh, fair enough. It's his decision how he wants to set it up. I do not see Ixitab power getting resecured here. No, there. not an N7 second. So, so the NC is actually technically slightly in the lead. And I think they're continued because this is a TRVS flip. Yeah, so the NC is still just in the lead. And if TR uh, gets Ixtub Southern Pass, I don't think it's enough because it's taking territory off the Vanu Sovereignty. It's not taking territory off the new conglomerate. That's the key right now. With 10 minutes to go, it's the NC that you want to take territory off. And with 10 minutes to go, it means that a lot of these larger bases are just out of play. Uh, they take seven minutes to cap, but when you think about the time to travel there, that you know what happens if they push off once, you know, you're, you're really cutting it close. Once 10 minutes hits, you're really down to only small bases that you can go after. Very large max force. Um, looks like the Terran Republic are mostly confined to the capture point building of Ixtub Southern Pass. They don't really want to push out and hold the kind of the bridgeways, possibly just due to the discouraging amount of lasher fire that's going on. Perhaps the Air Force, although 
there is no Air Force at the moment. Um, for TR or for um, VS, although TR's got the galaxies. At 60 seconds to go, smoke has been popped by the VS. Are they going to make a play here to try and get Ixub, um Southern Pass back? I don't know, and the fact is the VS are actually still capturing Eastern Substation. 10 minutes left. Oh wait, no, it's flicking back. So the Terran Republic's making a save in Eastern Substation because they've got 60%, and they're still making the play. Oh, right, here comes the numbers. You see that on the minimap? Massive numbers of yeah. Vanu. This is the play now to get the base back. 30 se six, 34 seconds. That's a long run. You just need to stall for 30 seconds. It's totally doable. The Max is just running right past. If you're Terran Republic, try and avoid the Maxes. I know that's really hard, and kill off the squishies. Uh, here come the light assault forces on the roof with 20 seconds to go. It is pretty null biting stuff, 20 seconds to go. The VS should have this. With the amount of forces they're firing in and a galaxy incoming, has he got a squad dropping down? No, maybe it's bulldogging. But some people the capture point, it's super close. 10 seconds, they go to max, they're falling back to the capture point. TR might pull this off actually. I don't see the VS forces on the capture point yet contesting. And with 6 seconds to go, extra reinforcement from the Terra Public, they're on the capture point. The VS don't want to show themselves in the building. Max forces, they're getting bombarded by the Air Force, but they're gonna get it. And they do, Terra Republic takes x time Southern Pass. But it doesn't really matter in terms of who's first place, it just means the Terra Republic gets slightly closer. They're in second place. New Conglomerate is still first. Vanu Sovereignty has fallen into third place. Right. Const oh my goodness, the NC's pushing Outpost Lambda now. They're really going all the way around. This, you know, they saw that weak spot. Once they managed to actually secure Hurricane Secure Storage and they pushed into Gurney Dam. That was a huge thing. They, they got into the weak part. And something that's been, been very sad for the VS is they had Fort Drexler, and outside of their one push into Iron Quay, they didn't go anywhere. Really secure it. They've never been able to have Fort Drexler at 0% to be able to push out of it. That's a huge, huge benefit to the NC to defend. So Drexler. here's the thing for you, right? Here's a thought for thought. We are eight minutes, okay? If the TR loses a base to the VS, they can still win if they take a base off the NC because a base off the NC is a big number flip and even losing one base to the VS, they'll still get uh, maximum numbers, if, if my thinking here is correct. Which means when you get to somewhere close to that five minute timer in about two minutes, you would put, they're doing it right now, Broken Veil Garrison. I was about to say you'd go to Broken Veil Garrison because that is the easiest base to take, right? So if you apply all your numbers right now in Broken Veil Garrison because if you flip the point, it's got three minutes to go when you flip it. Case in point right now, two minutes, 46 seconds. We're going to go there next. If you take that base, you win. The Terran Republic would win. They still need to kind of hold at least prevent the VS from taking two bases from them and they need to prevent losing any other base to the NC. And we can see the NC's pushing Kessel's Crossing really hard right now. Hate Skydock probably won't matter if you can keep one point. But if they can push Broken Vale super hard and save Kessel's Crossing, the Terran Republic wins. And the Vanu Sovereignty is going to have to take at least one base from the NC or two bases from the TR to get the winning spot. And you can see already the TR are making their moves where they need to. They have a large force at Eastacon. They are slowly pushing into Gurney Dam, although unfortunately it looks like the, the NC have uh, have put population there. And that's really the areas they need to be pushing. They need to be pushing Eastacon, they need to be pushing Gurney Dam, they need to be pushing uh, uh, Broken Vale Garrison, like you mentioned. And the Oh, no! There was, uh, there was a, there's a crucial, crucial spawn Sundra overlooking the Broken Veil Garrison, and I think it was Seb from Miller TR who came in with the Valkyrie, dropped three of these guys onto the deployment Sundra. They all dropped C4 and killed each other without killing the Sundra. That's huge because the NC is still spawning in. Oh, sorry, the Seb is the Sundra belonging to perhaps uh, Miller NC. Or it could be someone else. But anyway, the point is, this Sunder is alive. It's being repaired. The Valkyrie push on it's failed. And now the end con new conglomerate forces have got an easy respawn in. They're 61% and they're taking Broken Veil Garrison back. And they still have 2 to 1 population advantage at Kessel Crossing, which was very close last time. It looks like the TR is trying to apply pressure on a number of NC bases to get the flip. And we're down to the 5 minutes 50 second marker and the NC is still clawing away at the lead. Alright, so what are we looking at here? Gurney Dam is being attacked by the TR. That's a big play. Hurricane Secure Storage, bigger numbers for the VS. Although it's actually 50-50 if -50, you look at Hurricane Amp Station and Hurricane Secure Storage. I'm going to go check that out. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, the Broken Field has been saved. Eastern Akan isn't going to go through. It's the Kessels. Right now it's the one in the north and it's uh, the Kessels crossing and it's the base cap going on at Hurricane Secure Storage. These are the two big ones because they can flip it either way for NC or VS take the lead. 
and uh, uh, Eastern Substation is still falling, and it, I, it was falling for the ziggurat. I can't imagine that the TR aren't going to hop their people over to Eastern Substation and go deal with the BS over there. At this point, it's just who slips up with putting their, their forces where they need to go. One mess getting up. very close. On five minutes to go, we're getting super close to the point of no return on small outposts. Once we get under four minutes, fresh base captures won't matter anymore. New conglomerate makes the save on... Um, here can secure storage. It looks like they're going to make the save in um, Gurney Dam as well. Uh, they're not going to get Fort Drexler. They're not going to get Tack on storage. It's unlikely they'll get Vital storage. The VS needs to really push forward the next 40 seconds to try a small base capture. Otherwise, they're going to be out of luck. Terra Republic's got two to one numbers going at Eastern Account storage. The NC is actually pushing Woodman ASC with small numbers, even though the Terran got numbers. But that's 60 seconds to go. If the NC got Woodman ASC, that's brutal because then they actually get an additional lead against the Terran Republic, which is their closest mm -hmm. rivals. At the oh, moment, yeah. go ahead. So uh, the VS have saved the best for last. If you come over to Eastern Substation, this is a Sunder parking lot on the point right here. Eastern Substation. Uh... There is a TR Galaxy that's trying to drop people on there, but I don't. You, nobody brought enough C4 for this. Four minutes left in the match. Looks four like Terra Republic saved Woodman ESC. We're under four minutes, so new base captures. Once a small base has been saved, won't go through. Terra Republic is. Hey guys. Let's see, losing the capture point of two minutes to go. VS, as you're saying, yep, that yeah. is a lot of sunders. A lot of grenades, AV grenades going off. Trying to get inside! Wow, you're not kidding here, dude. This is brutal. I wouldn't want to try and get this. Fan of the thing is, it's not going to get them the lead, though. They'll get the base. The TR technically can afford to lose this base, bizarrely, but they need to either save the Ziggurat or take an NC base, and they're also losing Kessel's Crossing. So this is actually all working in favour of NC, because the NC needs to just hold on to what they've got. Big Roothouse Distillery is huge. Actually, you know what? Roothouse Distillery doesn't matter, because it's 3 minutes 23 and there's only 3 minutes 10 on the clock, which means the entire platoon plus of VS forces of Roothouse Distillery does not matter. They need to leave and go somewhere else. The cap that's going on at Hurricane Secure Storage, that does matter. So they should go no, there. It yeah, it does, it's yeah. under. No, the alert timer is faster than the capture Oh, time. geez, look at that. It's 2 minutes 56 and it's 2 minutes 51. You're right. So the Hurricane Secure Storage also does not matter. Ziggurat, Ziggurat however, does. It's 144, I believe. Uh, Ziggurat matters. Eastern Substation matters. If the ends, if the v I tell you what, actually, if the VS gets both of these, I still don't think it's enough. It's too close to call, but it doesn't matter because the TR is going to lose it to the NC. I think the NC may have somehow managed to pull this off because they get um, Kessel's Crossing in the north. There is a, just a massive, massive resecure of uh, a VF, uh, a VS Pop here to the Ziggurat. Uh, I can't even count the little dots on my minimap that are all just standing on the point. They are not going to let anyone come get this from the, the minute 27 left. Alright, I'm gonna jump to Poonano's channel for one brief second, see what his opinion is on freedom winning. Too late, way too late. Hey guys, so uh, Poonano's, just before we're reaching to the end here, Kessel's Crossing, what's going on there? Did they just make uh, a save? I'm watching Woman ASC, I'm actually oh, gonna watch a Woman uh, ASC. Yes, yes, Kessel's looks like it has no, a big save no. on it, but Woman ASC looks like it's gonna be the clutch save. I'm gonna uh, rush over sure. to uh, Kessel's and take a look for you real quick. We were not and, uh, Right now, New Conglomerate's winning. It looks like they may actually win the the whole kind of world record faction smash. What's your opinion on that? Do you think they'll pull it off? Oh, okay. Dude, dude, you know how much I love freedom. And you know how much <laughs> I love DNC. But, they have Kessel's Lockdown. I think they have Woodman. Woodman is going to be a take. Six that seconds. is a take. That is a pull. Five seconds. That is a Four seal seconds. the deal. They are within seconds of sealing that deal. No! And then oh, and TR oh, comes in back. and swims it again! Oh, oh wow, yeah. Come in and get it! Save it! Oh, it swims again! Oh my god! It has been a swing back and forth. Alright, I'll leave it to you guys. We're gonna jump back. I think it's really the deal sealer. We're looking at the map. It's, it's, it's so close to call. There's nothing's actually flipping it. <laughs> what, the, what is going on up there? It looks like the Terra Republic is making a save of Woodman ASC. What is going on north at Kessel's, Kessel's Crossing? Kessel's is just, it's a back and forth. I mean, I can't even tell who's alive, who's dead. It's just res grenades and maxes. and re It's red and blue all over the place, and the point is just flipping both ways. This on the zero second marker. Possibly get. It's on the zero second marker, absolutely. Oh, come on, Lord, Lord. Oh! 
What? No. Okay, my game's kept. Wow, that's a lot of people just die. Okay. Uh, but the base is still Terran Republic. Ten seconds. I got a 13,000 ping, man. Wow, I think we just killed the server, dude. Kessels. Kessels crossing caps in favor of the NC. Yep, we just... Really? Because I'm... Oh, well, there it goes. Okay. And the alert ends. There we go, the alert ends. The new conglomerate is victorious and they captured the continent. Congratulations to the NC for winning the alert and winning the record smash. What an amazing... Oh, and we all died. Oh, we all died. Even the observer cameras died. It's psychedelic. I'll die in 20 seconds, man. I got 20,000 ping. <laughs> I think that's uh, perhaps some dev rotations going on there. Oh wow, I've got 26,000 ping, what the hell? Yeah. Right. Well, wow. That, uh, that our GM here makes an announcement. He already uh, did. He said, uh, congratulations Planeta 2 community, you were part of the official world record at 1158 players. The team really appreciate your participation. 1158. Yep. I mean we're too short of Naraxium. For reals? No, 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 no. The observers count. See, see, the observers, we, we all count because we took part as well, right? <laughs> we, we, we're more than Naraxium. So what an awesome event, guys. I mean, that was, that was just amazing, especially at the end, that back and forth and back and forth. And every single empire held the lead once. You can't say that... that you know, one empire just absolutely steamrolled the other one. Every empire had an opportunity to win. Every empire held the lead at some point and really, really made some great moves and got a lot of great territory gains. It just came down at the at the last moment to the NC playing their cards right at the There is a huge, and this is better if you're an NC character, party going on to the new conglomerate warp gate. I'm sure there is. Right, I'm going to mute the sound here for a second because this is way too loud. Okay, so wh while we've got this going on, one sec. Let's do a quick stats redown. Uh, well, uh, can we get the um, just the other channels, the uh, casters together? We'll get them all together. We'll do a kind of a post game interview. But uh, right now, I'll just run down some of the final game stats. Uh, so, if guys, if you're not aware of what's going on, we did get the world record. We got 1,158 official players in. A single FPS battle, too short of Araxium, but let's be clear here, the observers probably counted, so it's over Araxium. Huge amounts of DACA going on in this work gate. Right, so some stats, okay, for you. Kill totals, we had a total of 53,997 kills over this two hour period. Um, and some other things, we take the kill graph. We can see it's, it's very close to call. We see the VS and TR probably in top, NC slightly below. We can also see that from the numbers. Some kind of player stats, top kills, uh, 314 kills, okay. Higby says, hat power. <laughs> yeah, hat power. Everyone's going to blame the hat, man. Uh, some top outfits, probably just kind of names. We see Briggs, and, uh, Briggs is kind of playing up. We've got some Emerald, some Connery, assuming that the members of said outfits are actually accurate. Uh, Future Crew's eight-man team did extremely well, as did uh, Tool, uh, for their kind of rating. Oh no, oh no, there we go. Stats page going wonk, and the galaxy, get out of my way, dude. Oh, the map timeline. Is this accurate and fixed, Maelstrom? Should be. Nice. So we actually see... Here we go, guys. This is the plot. <laughs> That's a galaxy mail up. Right, I'll give you a better view here as you warp out just for a second. So you can see in the timeline, at the beginning, the Terran Republic starts strong, and in the first quarter, they actually get themselves in a very strong position and hold this right up to about the halfway marker, and that's when they start falling down. And then both other factions and the VS start coming down, and it's going back and forth, back and forth, and the NC claws it back from being picked on to being just so close, and then finally taking the lead at the end. That's a fantastic comeback there, and just shows what happens in three-way games, how it can come and go at any time. Right, so uh, I guess um, we'll drop down to the interview channels and have a quick uh, chat with their other um, kind of cast to see how they all felt that went. One sec. Hey guys, how y'all doing? It is amazing. Hey guys, how you doing? How was that for you guys for uh, watching, casting, streaming? It was a really 
really tight fight at the end. It was amazing. I'm like having to pull out of the worm gate to be able to have a conversation with you guys because there's so much noise. But the NC, the whole time, what they did was they balanced. They balanced. They waited for two minutes. Two they were down to 21% at one moment. Yes. Yeah, 29, 29 or there they go. I about the volume pretty hard. But, but up north, all they did was balance. That's all it was. was manage logistics, wait for two minutes for the cap, and go pop in a clutch save. Clutch save, clutch save. Both TR and NC were clutch masters. And the whole time, that's all they did. There was a trade there at the end between Woodman. Really freaking great trade. It actually worked out really good for the NC. NC were able to seal out the pop cap at the end. And the whole time, that's all it was, was logistics and clutch. Logistics, clutch. That's all they did. Something but that, that... in my vocabulary, it was a logistic clutch. And my vocabulary was freedom and then more freedom. And then a little bit of eagle. And, and nothing to do with all those freebie hats being handed out by Higby. Oh my god, right? Higby dropping in the cowboy hats. Like, you know, I complain a little bit about Higby, mostly because I think my hair is better than his. But the cowboy hats was a good touch. The real problem so, is, is you got cowboy hats instead of berets. Oh, ah, dude, there you go. Dude, in all fairness, in all fairness, berets are lame. Cowboy hats are awesome. <laughs> but in all fairness, that, 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 is, that is a bit, a little bit biased because I am a Texas, uh, a Texan native. You know, so one, I am drunk, one as, thing that we I'm drunk as hell because the chat room kept telling me to drink. <laughs> one thing that we noticed was this was by far the most even fight that we've had. I mean, every single Empire held the lead at one point. Every single Empire had massive pushes, and there were times late in the game that we could look at it and say, wow, the VS really got what they needed, and they're going to push. Wow, the TR really are up and have everything they need while the NC do. That was, it was just crazy, and it really came down to, as Poonainer said, it was force allocation at the right time. Uh, since we have some of the, uh, the force organizers in here, it, can you guys tell me what was some of the thoughts about when to push? We saw a push from the VS around 36 minutes, and we saw the, the, the real big push from the NC around 19 minutes. What was what was going on in, in your command chats? Start with the TR, I guess. Sure, TR. Uh, unfortunately, Anga's muted. I was going to so say, if they're in here. <laughs> uh, so uh, VS, if you're in here. Uh, you're muted. muted. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm in hello. here. What's up? Hang on. Hang on. Let me let me grab wow. the uh, force lead. Is the NC what? force lead in here? Uh, you I, think, I think I think everybody's celebrating right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's here. Yep. NC's okay. here. So yeah, t um, uh, NC force lead, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us, uh, you know, about the end there. When when did you try and push? Was that was that deliberate? You were deliberately waiting for a time, or did you wait till certain bases fell your way, or what happened there? Um, hi, I'm Art Tiger from Miller Two Five TV. Um, we just, I think, we lost Fort Drexler, which wasn't in our plan at all. Um, so at that point, we realized we couldn't really get past Hade Skyduck on Fort Drexler, so started going around the other bases. Um, and we just pushed when we had the opportunity to. Uh, the VS and the TR got bogged down in some of their own fighting, so we just pushed the bases as we could. About 15 minutes left, we just went full out attack. As a player from Miller, right, how does it feel to win a server smash style game, Tiger? Uh, very good. <laughs> uh, All it took was help from second. everybody else. <laughs> The massive I think, I think we did galaxy it. pile over in Eason's Defiance right now. I'm, I'm watching it right now, yeah. <laughs> I've actually, I, for those of you who care, I've actually switched on, just for this, I've switched on uh, my personal channel at Odin's Pride just to let you guys watch this. Yeah, the uh, uh, we had said at the beginning we didn't want uh, everyone at the same base, but uh, now that the record's had and the, uh, the event's over, they're just having a big old galaxy pile <laughs> over the central base. Um, yeah, I actually saw, oh, there's a TR one. Let's uh, let's talk um, for a second about that VSNC lane. Uh, that's where Shock and Diz were, and they kept on saying, you know, uh, that it was a lot of infantry tactics when we went down there. And you know, that tack on fight was just back and forth. One guy, you know, one person would get it, another person would get it. What finally swung it for the VS to get uh, Fort Drexler? Well, <laughs> let me see if the force lead has gotten here yet. Oh, I, don't okay. know. <laughs> I think from the NC side, I think it was just that 
the TR were pushing us on some bases that we didn't really want to lose. Um, so we couldn't throw more numbers at Fort Drexler. But they had some very good, ta you know, they were killing our, we were trying to bring in Sundress from the north to get some different, different, uh, different spawn options in. The, the, the fight was just so huge that it's more about human wave tactics than anything else, I think. You were the NC first command, right? Yep. Okay, to congratulate you, I was the TR first command. Hey, guys. Um, just on the, on the short side, though. Apparently we crashed uh, Google Documents. Go, <laughs> oh, cool. nice. I got the feeling we crashed the server yeah, in the we end. Crashed Jaeger, but we crashed Google. Okay. Well, yes. That's, that's that's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> There's huh? already a word that's working in that too. We we had to crash something, guys. It just <laughs> wasn't going to be planet side if something didn't crash. Come on. A question for you, Negator, right, is when we were watching the game, as the game progressed along further and further and further into it, I kept seeing more and more Vanu Sovereignty heavy assaults using the Lasher. How did you lose with all that Lasher spam? Nothing to do with me at all. Sorry, the Lashers were just insane annoying, eating up frame rates, especially me coming <laughs> like from Europe. It is, you know, we me coming from Europe, I already have a, a, a difficulty there. At a certain point, I had a lag compensation of um, a, a 1,011 milliseconds, that's more than a second. And it just told me, <laughs> weapon shot invalid, you know. I was throwing nades in 30 seconds later, I got a hit marker. Well, at, at, well, am I talking? Where am I? Yes, you're talking. Yes, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, sorry, I'm like, there's so many people in the channel. Um, at Fort Drexler, we saw that uh, there, there was a three-point base, and at the top, or at, at like a three-point point, at the top of that point, there was like 45 BS Lashers shooting at a point, like at the spawn room, and that was uh, that was extremely terrifying. Because it's not people, even shooting at as a anybody. TR, that was pretty terrifying to watch. We saw it. We saw it on our end as well. Yeah, I played I, in I, it. I, I believe we have. <laughs> I, I believe we order, have the BS leads that were here in that area now. Was the order for that uh, basically just if if there's a doorway, shoot at it. It doesn't matter if you see uh, someone or not. Which one was this? This was La you. All of them? Lashers? Well, Fort yes, Drexler which one in specifically. Oh, yeah, that, that may have been me. No, I was had there for you. four squads of Lashers on that I base. Hate you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we couldn't hit anything because we all had over a thousand latency. So the <laughs> idea was, if we can't aim at anything, let's make a death field, our own pain field. So we did with Lashers. It um, seemed to work. It was very visually impressive. Don't act like you don't know about lag wizardry. <laughs> so, what, uh, I mean, I'm just going to go through the forces here. Um, the, uh, from NC's perspective, uh, let's, uh, we just were talking to NC. Um, from VS perspective, what, what do you think was the best fight? What was the best moment of the match uh, for VS? Come, come to check for BC. Best <laughs> fight of the match was definitely our Drexler push, because when we say that as a fight, that went for an hour and a half to fucking get there and then win it. <laughs> so that was definitely by far the best it fight. Was, yeah, Although the, there the was some pretty them. awesome skirmishes on the TR front. Genesis terraforming was really fun a couple of times as well, uh, I have to say. I think those two were my favorite fights, but the most epic one was probably when we took Ixtab Power. <laughs> because I, I actually have a video of about so, of so many lashes, they weren't the individual plasma balls weren't rendering, shooting at the spawn point from the upper level inside the inside the point. Hey, we we so, got, we got that as well. We we were watching yeah. that that disco party. It was it was pretty intense. And T T Tr, just... what was your uh, sorry? Uh, Tr, what was your favorite um, uh, fight or your your uh, biggest moment? In, in, in tire match in tag match, but definitely the save of the most northern base. On Kessels? Yeah, Kessels crossing. So, uh... Like that last fight was intense. Like, I had 30 seconds latency at the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, yeah, the last one was crazy. Yeah, we all got... The point hadn't flipped yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the question I've got now is, where is Higby now that his faction's won, and will the NC be nerfed, as was the intended winning faction? Yeah, we, we, we all said, oh, whoever wins gets Where's nerfed. Where's the button so. the instant nerf? Well, we're yeah. getting the Ravens nerfed next patch. So. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that doesn't count. Oh. 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 New. So, 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 NC. Damage on. And, NC, check, uh, check well, I, I have to ask. 
Lindsay, I have to ask, yeah. how much did the cowboy hats play a role in your victory today? <laughs> I mean, oh, they no, never they're had pretty cowboy good, hats. Uh, Hitboxes. They're pretty good at defending against Lasher spam, so... They may <laughs> not admit it. Nerf cowboy hats. They may not believe it, but the cowboy hats brought so much freedom that no amount of Phoenix spam could believe that that freedom was unstoppable! <laughs> Wait. He is really drunk. I <laughs> oh yeah, he is. In all fairness, yes. <laughs> the chat, the chat kept kept making up drinking games that got, got, got kind of out of hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> for for the people who actually played in the match, how did this compare to live? I mean, this is as close as we've come in Server Smash to what it's what a pop locked continent. You know, this is bigger uh, than a pop locked you know, continent. They took it's, off it's the caps. Oh my god, they did, they did take off the caps. This so, is better than what live has ever been. Oh my god! Like, I mean, I love all. the way the live plays, especially when you have a huge uh, alert going. But I have to imagine this, this awesome. Match. I have to imagine this match was how Miller feels on pretty much a daily basis. Really? Pretty much. Miller plays the, as well. The ping is a lot higher. I Got have it. to say. Well, Miller the ping the, generally the ping sits at about average 200. eighty if you're lucky, up to five hundred. I was rarely under a thousand. And <laughs> okay, oh. I, I, I need like to play I, a Miller I feel like more. I should say Apparently, I just gotta play Miller. We had, we had. <laughs> We we had a set number that we that of accounts that we were pushing for and and we gave out, but you got nobody knows this I don't think but SOE was like in our ear being like yeah no put more people in yeah put more no we can do, we can totally the server can handle it yeah but, no put more yeah. put them all in do you have reserves we had, throw them throw them in and, and we I had about sort of an Araxium. I had about sixty <laughs> accounts of extra reserves and I spent about an hour you know getting people to get accounts I gave all of them yeah. out. Everybody was in. Yeah, so, Dude, so I, kudos off to you European guys who bothered to force command tonight because force commanding a group that big. Oh my god! You, oh my you for, you freaking force god! An entire the stress. The, the, the actually, thing I found funniest actually, was that we had a huge force that going down right at the end, and I have no idea where it came from. <laughs> to be fair, um, force commanding this was easier than force commanding a smaller. Yeah, that's a lot check, less stress. Easier? Yes. Easier. You thought it was easier? Easier. Any, 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 yeah. any, any there is any like leading, leading this group. Pick a date and a people. place, and I will come a and lot. buy you a drink in that place. Because oh my god, <laughs> no, 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 none of the none of the force commanders so wanted any easier. part of this because of how much stress. There's some discipline here. This is hold on. Um. Yeah, check for me. See, leading this is infinitely easier than leading just your average smash because you've got everyone on the same page going in the same direction there was not one moment on the vs force command where i did not have my entire force structure doing what i asked them to do they followed orders to a letter regardless of what that order was you try and get that to happen with pubs and the answer will be somewhere along go fuck yourself and or your mother <laughs> from Briggs. Um, by the way, uh, if you want to put it back up, uh, uh, Farah, we had a, a picture that was uh, sent to us by SOE of David Carey holding the official Guinness World Record uh, um, certificate. So it's official. Uh, I'm sure that's being tweeted out now and everything. But oh yeah, uh, do we have accurate numbers for? We do. Final total is one thousand one hundred and fifty-eight. So we'll too short of an Araxium. We 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 broke the record by two hundred and what two hundred and fifty eight. Isn't the old record nine hundred ninety nine? Here's what's funny: yeah, two, we all we all well, know the server can handle twelve hundred if we wanted to. No, it was crumbling. We we were <laughs> nice. It was crumbling. We yep. were nice. We we were nice. It's a shame it wasn't an Araxium number. That would it have been is. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I keep telling the stream that the observers count, so we're well over the Araxium. There you go. Seriously, they counted the observers? No, they didn't count the observers, but they should. I didn't. I, I, know, I, I know the observer. application I wrote for this did not count observer count. No, they didn't. All right, guys. Well, I mean, congratulations to everyone here. Uh, thank you very much for everyone's participation and the hours upon hours upon hours people have spent organizing this and setting it up. Congratulations, PlantSide2 and the community. Uh, you know, you now own a Guinness World Record for largest FPS battle. And uh, that Ever. is... Uh, Ever, ever. That is definitely, that is definitely, uh, you know, an awesome, awesome thing to have done today. All right. And one final thing. Any outfit for the NC that wants personal outfit stroking for doing a badass job, send me a tell on TeamSpeak and I will come in there and tell you. There you go. 
Oh, that's so sweet. Pop up with Farah. Um, we're done. Hey, so, um, that was that. That was our game. We got the record. It was all great. I guess uh, we got a couple of shout outs. Thanks to all the Plant Side Battles admin teams that are helping make this run. The the Then the infrastructure of the server reps, the people that got everyone together, all the teams together, Sony Online Entertainment for giving us Jaeger, the accounts, the assistance, all that kind of stuff. So this is all kind of a backslapping well done. We all knew we could do it and we've pulled it off. And uh, thank you guys for watching the stream. I hope you enjoyed it. It's time to go watch everybody else's stream because there's tons of footage and different kind of ways of looking at stuff. So go watch that and check it out. Post it on Reddit. See what you felt. All that kind of stuff. And I guess my last words are... As Planetside Battles as a group, we've got other things coming up. Maybe some Server Smash stuff, some Planetside League stuff, some Outfit, outfit stuff. So if you want to check that out, just go to planetsidebattles.org. Um, that's the one I'm not going to really hark on about it too much. If you want to find out some more interesting things about our things in the future that we're going to do. Uh, thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you again. <laughs>